Steel Toe Morning Show. Morning, everybody, and well, how do I look? Yeah, you know what? Look yeah. good. Yeah, could be worse. I'm gonna go with. Yeah, could be the guy sitting next to you. <laughs> is that what it is? Is yeah. I'm, I'm sitting next to you? Yeah, I look like an AIDS patient right like now. Like when I when I sit next to April, do I go? Ugh, yeah. Fuck. Well, I don't know if you do, but I think the world collectively. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sit next to you. I go. Eh, yeah. Yeah. You know. like, eh, could be worse. Masa menos. I sit next to April. Uh, formaldehyde face. Rowdy Rowdy Piper. They live. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to Zombie 13 as well, who does that cover of uh, Brett the Hitman Hearts theme music, Heart Attack. Uh, go follow Zombie 13 on YouTube. Welcome. The day after Easter. Aren't uh, shows after holidays fun? Yeah. When you do shows after holidays, you get done with the show and you look at who watched and you'll go... Oh, fuck. What have I done wrong yeah. with my life? <laughs> Every day after like a Memorial Day or a Labor Day or an Easter or a Christmas or a New Year's, you're just like, oh, yeah. You know what it always is? We have the same conversation every year. We go, didn't we say last year we were going to take this day off? Yeah. We, we always, always do that. We always go, yeah. Didn't we agree last year that this was more more work than, yeah. than this? And we could have just kind of, I don't know, let it go. Right. Yeah. You know what? Uh, we always do that for uh, the Super Bowl. And as a country, we always do that for fucking uh, the time switch. We're always like, hey, can we be done with uh, daylight savings? Can we yeah. be over? It's not. It doesn't serve a point. We always do right. it. I went into Easter. This was exciting. I was uh, scared to step on the scale this morning because I feel mm -hmm. rather chunky. And I think maybe my mu muscles are atrophying, which some people say is bad. Uh, but I stepped on the scale today, and I started the Easter weekend at like 218. Okay. 217 and a half today. So the kids got to eat their candy. Hot shit, right? I forgot they had it, too. I woke up this morning. I saw like a couple, like a little bit of evidence that I didn't pick up, like uh -oh. a couple of their wrappers. I, I did a couple of things. One, they didn't eat like a lot of the food I went grocery shopping for them for. Plus, uh, Charlotte had another uh, birthday party. She got a lot of birthday parties this year. And she, uh, there was pizza that didn't get eaten. So now there's groceries that I bought for this weekend. Uh -oh. There's pizza. So like today, I they can just clean out what's in the fridge. That's the best day of the week for a parent. Yeah, if you can just be like, yeah, you have at it. I don't got to yeah. do nothing. Then you just got to pay attention to the little ones, make sure they don't hurt themselves, and just uh, entertain everybody. That's always easy with kids. It's a good day. I have nothing to do today. I'm wow. gonna, I'm going to go see. Uh, I'm going to go see an old friend of the show. And then after that, I go pick up the children after school and then fuck all. And then we're in the home stretch of school, too, because spring break just ended. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, what, two months and change left in the school year? Yeah, and then you've got them all summer. Shit. Yeah, but in the summer, you can kind of just turn them on autopilot and let them go. Just turn them loose in the neighborhood. They're getting old enough now where you just go, ah, you and your friends, ah, you got strength in numbers, you're good. Yeah, just put a bungee cord on the little one. She'll come back eventually. Yeah. Oh, no. We got the little one. Uh, she's in preschool, but we got her a tablet uh -oh. for Christmas. I'm yeah. regretting that one. Yeah, I got mine to a switch, and there could have been better ideas. Yeah. 
they get hooked on that shit so fast and you got to like you don't you don't yell at them like they're in trouble you literally have to yell at them to get their attention yeah you have to go hey get you got to get off the tablet uh, huh uh, like that look alone is what makes you realize you made the mistake yeah is when you shake them out of it they go, uh, they're like a freaking zombie and you're just like oh my god you're comatose and they're like oh yeah no i'm here like oh it's terrible right uh, so welcome to the show this morning, guys. We're being very domestic this morning. It is the, the day after Easter. It's a day for domesticity. Uh, it is a full one today, so 350. Let's do that. Uh, everybody click that PayPal or click that Super Chat or Rumble Rant. Be generous. Uh, throw something in the offering plate, and uh, let's get that 350 taken care of. Let's go to 1030 today, and let's make sure that Steel Toe is still kicking. This program brought to you by viewers like you. Uh, so thank you, guys. Get an early start, and uh, we will be very happy. Uh, I did not like Mussolini diff. Uh, his first comment today, April's Fool will be appearing in a couple minutes. It's April Fool's Day. Yeah. It's not April. What he's saying, I think he's talking about uh, my wife <laughs> uh, saying that I am her fool, which is fine for me to say. Right. It's offensive when you say it. But are we allowed to notice? Yeah. Okay, so then, yeah, I'm good. Political correctness, they say, is a crime against noticing. You are allowed to notice. You're just not allowed to notice to me. You know? How notice hard is, amongst yourself. Yeah, how hard is that to understand? That's something the internet doesn't grasp. You know, they think that's hypocrisy or something else. Like, no, it's just a request. <laughs> go ahead and notice whatever you want. Just don't just go notice it somewhere else. Yeah. I don't need it to be noticed. Don't bring it to my desk. I'm yeah. done. I live it. So if you notice it, I probably already know. There's no reason for you to inform me. Uh, I didn't lose my ring, by the way. I just can't remember where I put it. There's a difference between losing it and not remembering where you put it. It's the fucking thing somewhere. Right. Well, I mean, technically, even when you lose it, it is always somewhere. Right. Just you don't know where it is. I know where my last one is. <laughs> Vaguely. Vaguely. Yeah. Yeah. You got, somewhere, a, you got like a, f uh, a five mile ballpark radius. Somewhere, somewhere in the June Grass Drive neighborhood of Big Lake, Minnesota, chucked into somebody's backyard. <laughs> Whoa! Just fucking chucked it. New girlfriend was there and everything. <laughs> well, bam! Got rid of that fucking thing. Anybody finds it, let me know. I'll shove it up your asshole. <laughs> Sorry, Somebody I, probably picked it up and we just went, oh, this must be one of those chastity ring things. <laughs> or, or it's just a really bad neighborhood and they went, ah, another divorce. <laughs> Put it in. Like in some neighborhoods, if it's really rich, they'll collect golf balls that land in their garden or their backyard. Mm -hmm. Where I used to live, it was, uh, oh, yep, another wedding ring got chucked. Yeah, that's how you know how bad the economy is when a bunch of middle-aged, just uh, middle-class Americans run around with... Metal detectors yeah. checking everybody's yard. Like, I'm just looking for whoever didn't make it. Right, exactly. And then they, they hear a, a faint, distant scream of freedom. That's another few hundred bucks. <laughs> Your guts just get ripped out. All right, guys. Anyway, welcome to the program. Great to have you. Let's catch up with you guys on a slow Easter Monday. Is this one... Is this like the Super Bowl? Like, do people fuck off the day after I Easter? I don't know, because who parties hard on Easter? Like, it's mostly for the kids. I had a, f I had a few beers at April's parents' house. I mean, yeah, but uh, again, parties... Uh, oh, that's right, it's you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, parties hard. Like, I didn't party that hard. I smoked some crack. Smoke crack with me, bro. <laughs> Smoke crack with me, bro. I uh, I had a, I, I did such a dumb fucking thing. I took a shower last night. I was feeling good. I was feeling ready. I was like, oh, that's productive. I'm ready for tomorrow already. Went and smoked a cigar afterwards. Yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose it really of the shower. Yeah, it defeated the purpose. It defeated the purpose of the, the whole shower thing. And then I got up this morning, and I got everything ready. I got up early. I got everything ready. And then... I wake up, I come down here, I get it set up, and I go, I look at my phone, it's like 5.15. I'm like, shit, I can go back to bed for like another 20, 25 minutes. So I, I, I feel like if anyone is even less motivated than me today, the day after Easter might be Might a be a little difficult, day. yeah. Especially if they smoked a little crack. Because <laughs> if you smoke a little crack and you, you come down. You be sleepy. You should be. 
If you're smoke, if you're out there listening to this show and you're smoking crack and you're not tired, you got you're smoking too much crack. I'll tell you that. All right, let's talk to the audience a little bit here, uh, both on Rumble and YouTube. Uh, Phantom X is right. Hit like. That would be nice. Uh, Phantom X says, was there a show last night? Nobody complained that there was no member show on Easter, and I'm so glad they didn't. Yeah, because why would there be? Right. I'm so glad the audience understood that, you it's know. It's Easter. We got families. We're doing things. I know? don't expect to get direct contact with anybody on Easter. Like, it's just, it'll happen eventually. Right. So, I, yeah, the, uh, I, nobody's saying, oh, I didn't see, because if we don't, if, if there's like one Sunday every few months where we just miss one, we're running around, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I'll get messages. Where's the members show? What the fuck is this shit? Blah, 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 blah. None of that yesterday. Which I was like, n not only good for like us, for people not bitching, but good for them for having shit to do. And realizing that, yeah, maybe not. You know? Right. I have children or friends or family. I could do other things. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the audience here. Uh, your tablet is broken. We need to get it fixed. I don't know what that means. Vince McMahon. I think he's saying what you tell that to the kid. Oh, your oh tablet yeah, your broken. tablet's broken. We need. It. That's not a bad idea. Holy shit, because they're dumb. They won't get it. I just stopped charging the the switch every once in a while. Like, oh, oh. battery's dead. Got to charge it quick. Yeah. And then we play with my guitar. Los Federales says all season versus all weather tires. What is the difference? I got to buy new ones. Oh shit. All season, I think, is the way to go. I don't know. All I don't know dick tires. about tires. I know that when you get new ones on there, it's good. Yeah. The car drives like a dream. Los Federales says, Riqueda has your cock ring, Aaron. I knew it. But how's he going to do with all that restricted blood flow? Get it? My penis is not. All right. uh, they're saying my wedding ring is in April. Oh, lucky me. Sorry, honey. You just swallowed that thing up. You mind squeezing it back out for me? Uh, Scarface says, I noticed that Juan Soto, Aaron Judge, and the Yankees will be butt-fucking the Twins this year after sweeping the Astros. Well, the Twins got off to a good start, 2-1, and one, to start the year out in Kansas City. Not bad. So, you look, you can talk your shit all you want. It's off to a decent start. Uh, NFL draft coming up this month. We're finally in draft month. This is, if you're a football fan, this is like, the, if you're a Viking fan, this is the most important draft ever. And I'm not doing that like they do with the elections. Right, right, where you hype it up. Yeah. No, but you have to literally rebuild your team. Bro, we, listen, you sons of bitches. We just need a quarterback. And you draft. Yeah, but you've got to build the team around him now. You're so you right. Change all the parts. Well, you're right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Well, you're right. So we have to draft a franchise quarterback, which could be on your team for 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we haven't been in this position where we've had. We've got two first-round picks, but we got one in the top 11. We'll probably trade up into the top five. We've never been in a position to draft the quarterback of the future since 2012 when we drafted Christian Ponder. How did that work out? Don't want to talk about it. Right. Don't want to talk about it. And, uh, yeah, that, that went uh, poorly. And then, Well, no, I'm sorry. Since we drafted Teddy Bridgewater in 2013. I believe it. No, Bridgewater we drafted in 12 or 13. Uh, Ponder, I think we drafted in 09. When was... When Teddy KGB we drafted. Last time I stick it in you. Yes. He said, you still owe me a rookie contract from this last time I stick it in you. Uh, when was Christian Ponder drafted? 2011. Okay, yeah. 12th overall pick in the 2011 draft. Then I think two years later, we drafted Teddy Bridgewater. But this is the first time it's been like top five pick. Let's see what we can do. Let's get our guy of the future. So this is this is the biggest one ever for a Viking fan. This is the one, guys. And we've never drafted in the top five in my lifetime. Okay, so that's at least some. That's a, Yeah, that's a big deal. Uh, NFL draft date. Oh, Thursday, April 25th. I was really hoping that was earlier in the month. Oh, well. You're going to have to wait. I don't want to wait. I just want to bang on the drum all day. Ugh, but all right. Uh, there's no such thing as smoking a little crack, says Mr. Q. Ask Hunter. Well, I mean, that, 
It's not really the representative for crack. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, no, I think it is. Upper the crusty white guy. Yeah. He might be the representative, representative for crack. crack. Chris Thompson with five bucks says, love this show. It's my favorite. And Aaron is the best. JK, April Fool's Day. Oh, I would hate it if everyone sent PayPals and Super Chats with lots of money in them. And, and then a, and then had April Fool's jokes in them. God, how I would hate making a lot of money today on people doing very funny April Fool's jokes, even if they were derogatory. I would despise that outcome for today's program. Chris Thompson, thank you for starting us off today. 345 is our number for overtime and survival. We appreciate it. Uh, Morgan Reeves says we crucified the children's pet rabbit to combine the religious religiosity of commercial and commercial aspects of Easter. It was a day of mixed emotions. Yeah, but the rabbit doesn't come back. And don't you kill the rabbit on Friday? You don't kill it on Easter. He, Jesus didn't die on Easter. Yeah, he died he on rose. Good Friday. Yeah, which is fucked up. Yeah, Good it Friday. Was a good day. Who? Who quoted that, or who who coined that phrase for the day? Who was probably it, a Jew? Nah, it was about it was a good day. We got what we wanted. Well, it was a good day. That filthy rebellious scumbag is finally dead. Now we don't li- need to listen to him. That the temple, the temple, the temple. Who cares? Uh, I forgot how orthodox of a Christian you were, Aaron. Fuck me for asking. <laughs> Sorry, Phantom X. Yeah, it was me and my uh, again my religiosity, but. There was also, uh, I got a new book called Pawverbs. Ah, yeah. Pawverbs. It's uh, inspirational uh, dog stories with godly advice and, and proverbs mixed in. Right. I've actually, I got it as a gift, as like a funny haha gift. Mm-hmm. I've actually been reading a fucking thing. Is it good? Like a cat lady. There's some interesting lessons in there. You know? Any pit bull stories? Not yet. Well, they haven't talked about Satan. Yeah, they haven't gotten to Thou Shalt Not Kill yet. <laughs> so there haven't been any uh, pit bull ones. Uh, they, they did have a pug one. What was the pug one? I don't know. Uh, the pug was, I uh, didn't want to eat. Oh, you got a face like that, I can imagine. Yeah, I hate pugs, man. They're so gross. They just look like they found a wall that they couldn't get through, but they kept trying over and over and over again. Well, and, and just, they... Yeah. They breathe like through their neck. It's just they have the weird. Uh, yeah, because their oh. nose, their nasal cavity is collapsed. They, They've been bred not to have a nostril. They, but they breathe as though like they still haven't figured it out yet. Like they, their living and dying is always hanging in the balance. Because that you hear them just normal and they go. <laughs> They're fighting their own face for air yeah. every minute of the day. They're horrible dogs. Uh, cynically insane says when the kid's teacher catches her trying to swipe at a page in a book, you will be labeled a bad parent. Yeah. You just, you take an actual physical book and you go, come on. Uh, by the way, I, uh, I got this dude. This made me so happy this weekend. Uh, you know what my 10 year old daughter, uh, allowed me to do. What's that? I get to say straight bussin in front of them. You get to say straight bussin. Yeah. Because I'll always use their slang. Right. You know, like your parents always used to do and humiliate them. I think my daughter finally learned how to, like, diffuse me using words. Is allow it? Just let me do it. And I'll be like, well, now it's no fun. Yeah, because the whole point was to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. Go, ew, stop being us. Doesn't work for all every word. Like, the gay F word, it, you let me say it all day. Doesn't matter. Uh, hope Vikings buy the JJ hype, says Hoffman. You can't, dude. I like JJ McCarthy. I want him. So if it's hype and you think, oh, it's terrible, whatever, good. We'll take him at four or five, wherever he's available. Love him. Love JJ McCarthy. Uh, Annoyed Wawa supervisor says, How can you call yourself a Vikings fan if you haven't sexually harassed St. Paul Fives in their DMs and had to come out as bisexual to try and cover it up? Guys, stop talking about my Vikings YouTube guy. I don't know if that's true. He seems like a decent enough bloke. Leave him alone. Leave FTW Weekly alone. He's a nice enough fella. Boston Bob says, I don't think any of these young quarterbacks will pan out. Dude, I like Jaden Daniels. I think he's a can't miss. I like J.J. McCarthy, too. Uh, Carlos says, I am here from the NFL. You and April are getting free tickets to the NFL draft. April Fool's. Hey, put, uh, put money behind your April Fool's Day jokes today. We need to make 345 bucks today. Otherwise, we're failures. So, you know, 
a little something for the effort. Uh, McCarthy, hell yeah, says Corey, good. Morgan Reeves says, we practice an ancient form of Celtic Christianity that combines ancient Irish mythology with slam poetry. The, crent- the central figure is the puka, who is a six-foot-tall rabbit. Thank you. Uh, Johnny Castile says, the real steel has arrived. Oh, Castile. And he says, fuck football sucks. Change the topic. Yeah, you know what? Fuck our small talk for the first 20 Yeah, who or gives minutes. a crap? We're just yeah. letting people kind of get in here. Yeah. Because who wants to just hear someone go, hey, wait a minute. You're talking about a thing and a story. What is, what's going on? Right. Yeah, if you just jump into your big things for the day, five, ten minutes in, people go, Ooh, could you start over? I just got here. Yeah. You fuck around for 20, 30 minutes. It lets people, you know, kind of get in the door. Get in the door a little bit. Uh, Egg Picker likes your shirt. That's a Gen 1 steel yes, toe shirt. This is a gift from Aaron, one of my favorite shirts. Just happened to be on top. I'm a, I was like, all righty. I'm a, I'm a, a, a giver. A guy. A giver, if you will. Redbird with 10 bucks says, good morning and go fuck yourself. Well, that gives me mixed emotions. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Redbird. But, or, but, yeah, but F you? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I get it. Whatever you need. I understand. It puts us at 335, which is great. Thank you, guys. Keep that going. We appreciate all your support monetarily of this program. Again, uh, let's make it a successful one and knock out that 335 today. And everybody is happy. Uh, Let me just make sure we don't owe any more thank yous. And then we can get started. There we go. All right. Give me some thank yous to make. Uh, Ian says, how dare you be accommodating accommodating to your listeners waking up? What an asshole. What a dick. Uh, Cynically Insane says, are you wearing purple parachute pants? No, I'm just, I'm wearing my Viking sweatpants. I just, look, guys, there's a lot of mornings where I get up and I go, I do a fucking show sitting down. Yeah, I mean. I'm going to wear some sweatpants and nobody will be the worse for wear unless... I mean, the only way this could really uh, become a thing is if some fucking dickhead brought it up in the chat. Yeah. That but would who be would it. do that? And nobody would do that. Right, cynically? Uh, Jameson's Repair says, thank you for letting us filter in. I don't want to miss a pit bull story. You know how many of those I skip? I mean. There's plenty of them out there. Oh, God. I could do a, a show about pit bulls murdering people. But I don't, because I'm gracious. I'm a gracious winner. I walk into them all the time. <laughs> yes. Uh, annoyed Wawa supervisor says, Aaron, just be a journalist and Google purple FTW sex, sex pest. I'm not nearly clever enough to make this up, but I can have one of my employees make you up a sausage sizzly. Now back at all locations. Thank you, Wawa supervisor. Uh, but no, I'm not going to look it up, and I'm not doubting you. It's just, uh, as the great Bo Burnham once said, I don't want to know. That's all. Uh, Hobo Chili says, I just got here. Can you end the show permanently? I mean, I'd like to not to. I enjoy doing it. And I enjoy that the fans support it. Um, I suppose technically if you just <laughs> bought out the goal with that request, I'd, it'd have sure. to be considered. Yeah, I'd fuck off. If you guys knock out the goal in the next five minutes, I'll quit. <laughs> How's that? Los Federales says, why does Aaron give me Subway guy vibes? Don't say that. People who hate this show say I look like Jared from Subway. Don't join them, Federales. Yeah, and that that kind of that's kind of switched. Now he's like Jared's evil twin because he's got the, the facial hair. And so if Jared wait a minute, if Jared's a piece of shit right. and you're his evil twin, does that right. make you a good guy? Because yeah. then like you're the opposite. Right. You're you're anti Jared. I fuck of age people. Jared fucks youngsters. Jared likes six inches. He has a four and a half. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. See, I, I that it's it, hurtful when it when it hit. It didn't feel necessary. Right. That's all. Bobby Baloney says, "Oh, great! Now I can't unsee it." Now, see that look. Now, look. Did that help? Nobody. No, it didn't help. It didn't help. Uh, annoyed quick trip supervisor says the bitches that complains about the football are the famous who never donate. I think he means gay F words. Uh, egg picker says, how dare you talk about what you want on your own show? It's not nice. Shouldn't, shouldn't talk about what I want on my own show. Hobo says Aaron from Scrubway. Oh, I get it. We're changing the words to things. So I look like a dick. 
All right, let's get started. Uh, hit like on YouTube. Hit like on Rumble. Get us under 300 bucks by the end of this hour, and I'm a happy guy. Use that PayPal. There's very minimal fees. Uh, YouTube, Rumble, Venmo, all of those are great. Thank you guys very much for putting the money into this program we need to make it go. Uh, I Dude, this is one of my favorite jokes that Los Federales just posted, but it's about me, so I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I like it when it's other people. Yep. Now that's just hurtful. Yeah. Because see what twenty eight year olds. Yeah. There's yeah, like, there's twenty of them. You're gonna be tired. I don't like it as much when other people do it to me. Dread Pennies with two bucks says, "Good morning, window lickers. Do your push ups today, or else yesterday's wrong holiday made you visible. Wrong holiday. Oh shit." Is it not really? Was it not Easter? Oh, Trans Visibility Day. You know, oh. the thing this whole fucking episode is titled after, Aaron, you dumb dick. Uh, you, you saw that yesterday that Biden had today as Trans Visibility Day, or yesterday as Trans Visibility Day. I mean, what's closer to a miracle, the resurrection of Jesus or the fact that that guy got his weenus chopped off and now he's a chick I, he didn't get it chopped off he had it turned inside out and made into a vagina yeah i mean when were penises balloon animals this is weird and they're not really because you have to keep self opening the hole because your body will keep trying to close it as though it's healing a wound you like it wasn't supposed to be wound. there yeah <sighs> like it wasn't supposed to be there because it's not a real thing your body will try to heal it Kind of like the same way when you uh, remove a limb, your body will kind of, you know, heal over the stump. So right. it's, it's kind of like your body thought, oh, you suffered some sort of horrible trauma. We better help you. Yeah, we better. Ha uh, I need to help you by closing this up. Well, no, this is who I really am. And your body's like, no, we aren't. We're, we're really not this. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is the, uh, are you just feeling rumble? No, no. Well, well yes. <laughs> but two, I'm just, now I'm thinking about horrible things just. Just because that can't be like because hygiene's a thing. I just oh right, that's uh oh. lest lest you not think about it. Yeah, with too late. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. That mental pathway is already open, so but, the horror has washed in. Yeah, it's uh. But yesterday it was Trans Visibility Day on Easter, and it's getting really hard to tell Christians that they're just paranoid and that nobody's trying to take away their traditions and. Minimize their beliefs and overthrow the country. Oh, I can't. I literally yeah. can't. Christians start, bit like, Muslims start bitching about shit. I'm like, dude, you guys get to threaten to kill everybody and people defend you for it. Like, well, they shouldn't have drawn a picture of their God. <laughs> like, what? Are you fucking high? Hey, hey, man, they issued a fatwa on that guy and they're threatened, threatening to kill him. That's not good. That's terrible. I'm like, well, you have to understand that person drew a picture of Muhammad. I'm like, right. Because doodles warrant death. Yeah, what the fuck? So, like, Christianity, it's like you can just sit there and celebrate Easter, and they go, you fucking bigot. You're like, God damn, guys. You know that holiday was co-opted by the church, and it was originally a pagan holiday, which is why we celebrate eggs and rabbits and all sorts of signs of fertility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, cool. A history lesson, that's what I wanted. Who do we steal Christmas from? The Celts? Uh, no, actually, I think Christmas, well, no, was Christmas the Celts, or is that, a, again, well, pagan is such a broad term. Yeah, I can't remember who we stole that one from. Nobody, nobody somebody will remember by the end here. Uh, Johnny Castile says, thanks for making me spit up in the shower from inside bag to vag to vag talk. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, no one is afraid of Christies, says Bobby Baloney. Right? Everybody just feels totally comfortable shitting all over them. Hey, it's Trans Visibility Day on Easter. Let me ask you another question. Were trans people trying to be invisible? Because they haven't mastered that skill at all. Yeah, you haven't done a good job. Well, you know, we blend in so well. I just look like a lady. No, you do not. You are the sore thumb of society. <laughs> like you, you stand out very, very well. Trust me. Oh, just imagine being that group of people and think you're thinking your voice wasn't heard. Like thinking society doesn't bend over backwards for you. We need a visibility day. Literally, if we just let you be a person, you jump in our face. And I'm trans. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't, trans visibility day is kind of one of those everyday things. Kind of like gay pride month. 
Yeah, I just I, like, I, when are you guys not proud? When are you not jumping in someone's face going, you need to acknowledge my pronouns? Yeah. Uh, Phantom X says, Aaron keeps saying we in reference to Christians. Is this the royal we or not? Well, I like the way I grew up and like the way I'm raised in the country I live in. I'm pretty culturally Christian, right? I, not in the religious aspect, but like the way our culture is comes from a lot of Christian. Yeah, shit. our culture is loosely based on Christian ideology. Holidays, all of that stuff, it's worked into the job schedule and things like Christian holidays or national holidays. Yeah. Other, I mean, if you have another religion, you have to apply. You're like, hey, I'm this religion, so my holidays count too. And they go, oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, sure. So Never. you're one of them. Phantom X says, I get it. Respect. Thank you, buddy. Plus, if I keep reading Proverbs, I might just convert. Well, with Christianity, what would what would the religion of Proverbs be? Right, exactly. Don't beat yourself up over it. I've been trying. <laughs> you're not going to get it in 10 seconds. And if you do, you're better than I am. Hey, I came up with some dog names for concentration camps. Do you want to hear them? What's that? Cool. Uh, Auschwitz. I believe Auf, we've... Auschwitz. I believe we've done Auschwitz. Oh. Barkin Belson. You like that one? That one's not bad. Dog cow. Dog cow? I, have we done this before? Oh, have we? I think so. I get really excited about. You get? Uh, yeah. No, I don't blame you. It's a good. It's a good one. I just. Uh, can you do concentration camps for cats? No, I'm asking. Can we start building them? We. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking if I'd get in trouble. Um, not for a while. Okay. Uh, I'd say until the Asian food market's affected, you'll probably be able to okay. go under the radar. I like that. So I can do it just like Hitler. <laughs> I can just kind of low key kill them for a while. Yeah, that too was uh, until the Chinese food market was like, "Hey, we're running out of Jews to you know yeah. sell and feed people." We're just selling diseased pangolins now from the lab down the street. Uh, Santa was a Nordic god who really killed kids. Holy shit! Well, I thought that was Krampus. Krampus. Because again, there's a whole bunch of that got melded together. If you think about it, Krampus is kind of the original Gestapo. You know, just rounding up all the really bad kids, beating the fuck out of them, like knowing what they're doing and shit. Uh, oh, here you go. Los Federale says Meowschwitz. Meowschwitz isn't Meowschwitz. bad. Yeah. That's what I used to, when I ran the place, that's what I called it. Meowschwitz. Meowschwitz. Yes. Ah, it's Meowschwitz. I love Meowschwitz. Ah, yes. Oh, Meowschwitz. It's a great place if you're looking for a steady paycheck working at Meowschwitz. I was celebrating Easter. I was on vacation from me tour in Meowschwitz. <laughs> and I told them there, I said, Oh, how dare you let all them Jews out to go celebrate. They don't even celebrate Easter at Meowschwitz. <laughs> See, he, he was an Irish convert to right. Nazi. I was trying to figure out how that made sense. <laughs> it's just weird. Mussolini Diff with five bucks says this is for nearly destroyed Roadcaster Visibility Day. Add a boy. Thank you. 330 away from uh, uh knocking out a goal and doing overtime. I appreciate it. Uh so what? Aaron is 20 minutes behind in chat again. No, I'm all caught up. We're good. You guys are nice and slow in the chat today. It's the day after Easter, so I think we're gonna have a little bit slower chat than usual. So I'll have uh, a little bit easier time keeping up. Diwana says, first time here. Well, then, shit, we better do a good show today. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, gonna be really disappointed and tell everybody I'm an asshole. I don't want that. Oh, I like this. Johnny Castile with uh, the uh, cat concentration camps. Okay. Uh, he may not have a concentration camp name, but the name of the regime. Okay. The Third Reich. Third Reich. Because they have fur. Oh, wait, somebody did do Meowschwitz. Did someone do Meowschwitz? Yeah, I remember, because that, that started the whole, Hi, laddie, would you like to kill some Jews? <laughs> would you like to kill some Jews, me laddie? I do it over at Meowschwitz. Fucking stupid. Oh, boy. Uh, good morning, uh, Devil Pup. Howl Wolf Schittler, says Tomcat. That's, you're trying to rename Adolf Hitler. That's. There's a little bit one. of a little bit of a shoehorn there. Papa Dan says our clocks went forward an hour yesterday, so we're all in sync like girls on their period. No, I don't. I don't think so. 
I thought that was a while ago. Mussolini Diff says Meowschwitz is part of kitty history. That's right. That's right. All right, let's go into our first thing, which is the Trans Visibility Day thing from yesterday. I, I'm going to officially make the announcement. It's time to leave Christians the fuck alone. You've dicked with them long enough. You've taken, think about the world, like in the 50s and 60s that a Christian lived in and how comfortable it was for them. And then think of like how much progressively shittier it's been for them over the course of the last 60 years. Like it's just been terrible. Like abortion becoming like a, a, a thing you vibe to. Like, uh, you know, trans visibility day on your Easter you literally have LGBT groups that are like, we're opening our LGBT church because you know that thing you said your religion's entirely against? Yeah. We're going to pretend to be your religion, but it's cool with that. You know how your God said that if you do this with this person, you shall both surely be put to death? Yeah, we're going to do that thing and say that God loves it. Loves it. So they did that on Easter, and uh, you know, obviously Biden got some uh, shit for it, especially... From Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump had a st uh, made a statement, official campaign statement on Joe Biden's blasphemous declaration of Trans Visibility Day <laughs> on, on Easter, Easter Sunday. Sunday. And did you know they did that Easter egg hunt at the White House and the Biden administration didn't let anyone put any religious symbolic or symbolism on any of the eggs or anything? So we're just picking eggs for the fuck of it. Okay, so uh, we're going to celebrate this holiday that ties closely with this religion, but we don't want any religious symbology there. Did you just make fun of me for saying... No, I was I was just... You just fucked up the word. Yeah, because the word you're looking for is symbolism. What is the symbolism? symbolism. Not the symbolatry. Could be idolatry, but certainly not the right. symbolatry. Although now it's the symbolatry. I just want to know if anyone caught the quote I just did. What was it? You didn't know the movie quote, did you? I love this, but What's you don't symbolic? like the movie. It's from, uh, it's from. well, we'll see if anyone gets it first. I don't want to say. But that was literally, that's a quote from a movie. He's like, oh, the, what's the symbology of that? He's like, no, the word you're looking for is symbolism. What is the symbolism? Boondock Saints. It's, oh, it's Boondock Saints? Yeah. I didn't, you know what? I got a couple movies that I've watched in the last year for the first time that I have to go against the grain on. Not a Boondock Saints guy. It's fine. It's, I mean, it just. It was really good for the first one. The second one ruined it for me. And then the other one I tried to watch the other day, Footloose. Am I not supposed to like Footloose? I don't know. I don't know why anyone likes Footloose except for the school obsessed with it. <laughs> like, I, I like Lithgow. Love Lithgow. I like Kevin Bacon. Right. So I think I'd like the movie. Yeah, Fucking but who's, retarded who's the person that he has to teach to dance? Some lady. Or I thought it was like his brother or something or cousin. I don't remember. Somebody, Somebody's learning to dance. I just remember I just didn't really care. I was like, oh, who yeah. cares? I, that's kind of, that was it. I was just watching it going, eh, all right. So on to the next thing. It is also the stupidest rule. We're not allowing anyone to dance. Okay, that's really it's, Yeah, it's very contrived, right? Hey, John Lithgow is a crazy pastor. What did he ban? Dancing. Dancing. It kind of seems like an odd MacGuffin, so you can have your movie, but okie dokie. Uh, Willem Dafoe is good in Boondock Saints. Let me correct you. Willem Dafoe is good in everything he does. Willem Dafoe is good. That's the statement. That's it. American Psycho, Willem Dafoe, fantastic. Even though I don't even know if he exists or not in that movie. Uh, Aaron was looking for the movie Food Loose, says Hobo Chili Recipe. Thank you. Uh, Trans Visibility Day plus Easter, a day where eggs are used to keep certain holes open as a hiding spot, says Mussolini Diff. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. That is, uh... That's the winner. You'd really, okay. you'd really think they would. You know? Uh... That doesn't sound... I, there might be a trans person watching the show today going, that's a great fucking idea. And then when it happens, if, if it falls out, you be like, oh no, one of my eggs. I lo yeah, I lost one of my... Yeah, see, now you can be a lady. I just menstruated. Oh no. It's perfect. 
Someone changed their name to Mersha's account. The bad luck boy says, I'm gay and can't sleep. You know that's not you. you. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. Maybe it is. Did Mersh just call himself gay? I'm gay and I can't sleep. That re- wow, that really is him. Okay. I wouldn't think he would call himself gay. Then again, if he's listening to us talking about shoving eggs in your fake cunt, then again, you are kind of a faggot. Speaking of uh, faggots, uh, Bill Schultz isn't going to be doing compound media. <laughs> I'm kidding. I like Bill. I've been on Gino's show with Bill. I... Yeah, they're not doing uh, a morning show over on compound anymore. You know how I know they're not doing a morning show anymore? How do you know? Because I texted E-Rock and said, you need a morning show? <laughs> I'd really like to stop doing these fucking evening shows, you know? You got a little something, you know, for the effort. I wouldn't mind. Because you know what I want? Now that Mersh is here, I can bring this up. Uh, I would really like to start doing a two-hour morning show four days a week on on Compound so Mersh could come in here because I know it would bring him great joy to try to fuck it up. Right. Just come in here and start sending in Super Chats. Anthony Cumia Amazon wish list. What do you think, you fuck? What do you think of self-cutting girl M. Holt, you fucking cock cleaning fat sorry oh i'm sorry that wasn't mersh that was my inner monologue and my father oh no that was the bad luck boy says i'll say the n-word to prove it or call kumi up here no i i'm I'm aware i'm well aware that's like you ever have somebody tell you something like they think you're daring them to do something like i'll fucking do this we're like yeah yeah we know we just we, we just pointed that out we know nobody's like they want you to tell them not to Right. Like, no, nobody here is thinks you're not going to do that. Uh, it, <laughs> see right there. Johnny Castile says, nice Bill Schultz jab. I'm not being an internet guy, Bill Schultz jab, though. I'm. It's friendly. What do the kids call it? Playful ribbing? Yeah. Yeah, they're buds. You know me. I do playful ribbing. Like Chad and all those guys. It's just a playful rib. That's all. Uh, Cynically Insane says, Mersh is here to see you and feel skinny. <laughs> I, you know you know how I said, uh, you know, these days after uh, holidays, maybe we just shouldn't do them? Right. Feeling that again? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, the good news is the Arctic vibe Barry Celsius. Kicking in. Enjoyable. Uh, Hobo Chill, I'm going to get to this Trump trans easter thing in a second and then we'll talk about some kind of illuminati conspiracy to kill christianity take away everything that's sacred so they can rebuild this country in their communist image we'll get to that in a, plenty of time for that i'm really liking you guys right now hobo says aaron with that stupid goatee <laughs> with that stupid goatee you look like some shady serbian guy that's trying to sell me black market little debbies I always think of the sniper in Behind Enemy Lines when I think of Serbians. Mm. I just think they all look, they all wear Adidas jumpsuits or sweatsuits and shoot it. Was he shooting at Muzzies? I know he was tracking down Owen Wilson because Owen Wilson found the mass graves or whatever. Yeah. But I always forget. What was he doing? Like Serbia, like, you know, the Serbia, or no, it was Bosnia, not Serbia. The Bosnia thing was that. Was that Bosnians murdering Muslims? Was that one of the rare times that Muslims were actually being genocided? Getting held down and fucked? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Mersh says uh, Jews, they murdered Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that controversial? <laughs> I, th- <laughs> I thought to, we all knew. To quote the great Norm MacDonald, I thought it was a matter of record. <laughs> now, that would have been great if Norm would have went on The View and instead of saying Bill Clinton murdered a guy, he went... The hey, Jews you know, killed Christ. Hey, you know how, like, uh, the Jews, you know, they killed my Savior, you know? And it was like, oh, my God, Norm. And he goes, all right, manslaughter. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah, uh, they could have killed, uh, uh, you know, a Barabbas guy, right? And uh, they murdered Christ instead because they found him to be a pain in the ass to the Jews. Yeah, but, Norm, didn't the Romans kill Jesus? Yeah, I mean, after the Jews bullied the shit out of him, man. Yeah. I love how Pilate, like, literally the term washing your hands of something has to do with what a chicken shit Pontius Pilate was. 
like he knew it was fucked up to kill this guy. Yeah. And he's like, all right, look, I can kick the bucket on this thing. It's an election year. I don't want to have to make the big decision. What do you guys think? I've got murderer guy. Ooh, bad, nasty, or troublesome Jew. Uh, what? Who do you guys want to kill? You only get one. The other one goes free. And all the Jews went, troublesome Jew. And he's like, fuck, that backfired. Really should have stacked the crowd today. My bad. Von Kaiser says, Serbians are like Haitians, I heard. Can we get one thing straight right off the bat? Nothing is like a Haitian. Yeah, I I don't know. That's a special climate you're raised That's, in there. Yeah, it's just it's just different. Uh yeah, so uh as far as yeah, them killing Jesus again to We quote, all knew. To quote Norm MacDonald. I thought it was a matter of record. All right, what did Trump say about Joe Biden making it trans visibility day? The most visible fucking people in the world. They're six foot four with an Adam's apple and a fake cunt. And they're going to be like, oh, are you sure you're not going to notice me? Oh, look at my giant watermelon boobs. That <laughs> totally makes sense with my five o'clock shadow. I, yeah, I mean, we got to have our visibility days. Like, you guys never shut the fuck up about where you are. Honestly, I'd feel better if I didn't notice you as much. Like that, the fact you stand out. All right? Like, I could get through my day easier if I just went by, not out of sight, out of We mind. maybe have trans fuck off for a minute day? Just a minute where you don't bitch about anything. Trans, tell me something else about yeah. you day. I mean, you obsess over it. You don't stop talking about it. If you don't quit doing that, I might start thinking you're mentally ill. Just a warning. As usual, some cats won't heed it. The hard-headed always got to feel it to believe it. A shame their jealous gaze is too short to see it, but when they face hit the cement, they nod in agreement. We can play nice and decent or dirty like the 7-1 precinct. Call it a day or make it a long evening. You keep on scheming to give me some more reasons to have the women in your mama's church screaming Lord Jesus. Someone should just pay this honky. I'm just... <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's the day after Easter. Mussolini diff with five bucks says, and God said to his son, all right, all right, you can restart from a save point this time. <laughs> one time. Oh, this one time. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, 325 is the number today. Thank you, boys and girls. Very nice of you to uh, treat this retarded kid so kindly. Uh, Aaron talking about trans while wearing that shirt is mighty suspicious. It's a Prince shirt. Dude, Prince was a Jehovah's Witness. You think he was all right with trans people? Yeah, no, Prince Ooh. was not... Uh... Prince didn't play that. Let's just say it that way. Dude, those people don't even like blood transfusions. You think you think they're going to go for splitting your cock like a hot dog in a microwave? Uh-uh. Which is weird. Didn't he do like a, a fair amount of like substances and stuff? Prince? Yeah. Or no? Am I wrong on that? Why did he die? Oh, yeah. He was fentanyl. Yeah. I think. Uh, but I thought it was prescription. I, either way, it just seems weird. Like you're against like blood transfusions. You're obviously not cool with certain other things. Society's all right, but they're like, yeah, but pharmaceuticals are fun. Yeah, I think when did he become? When did Prince? Because he said he wouldn't do like songs like Cream and Peach anymore after he became a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, when did Prince become a Jehovah's? Whoop, two thousand one. Mm. Yeah. Uh, was remarkably clean living. You were not permitted to drink or smoke at his Paisley Park shows. And musicians had to pay into a cuss bucket if they used foul language. Yeah, he didn't put up with that shit at all. Uh, who cares? It was Prince by Felicia, says myself. Well, dude, you can't say that to people from Minnesota. Dude, Prince has some solid bangers, man. I don't know why. Why are you hating on Prince for? I mean, for? Jesus Christ. I mean, I thought we were having fun today. I didn't know it was... Fucking shit on Prince. The day. original Michael Keaton Batman doesn't work without Prince. Yeah. Wasn't he in there? Oh, Bat Dance. Oh, I said Batman, but I... No, but wasn't that the song? Bat Dance? Was that the Prince song? I don't know if he did a song called Bat... Wasn't it? I don't know the name of it. I just Prince know Batman song. Yeah, Bat Dance. All right, so it's named Bat Dance. I, I didn't told know the you name. it was called Bat Dance. How dare you make me doubt myself. I'm sorry. We should have known by now I'm retarded and you're autistic. You were right. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So Trump's statement on Trans Visibility Day on Easter. Again, this is taking away something sacred from traditional America so you can tear it down, make it shitty, and then rebuild this whole thing in your image. Uh, ironically, probably also the same people who killed Jesus. Uh, then again, wouldn't you want that one off the books too? What, that you killed Jesus? Yeah, that one backfired on yeah, him I for a while. Like, uh, it would be kind of convenient. Like, well, we can cover up one with the other. It was, it was always trans day. On Friday, he was a man. On Sunday, he was a woman. He came out of the cave with a cave. <laughs> uh, you think, do you think during the Holocaust, the Germans ever went, ah, I wish you picked Barabbas now, didn't you? It's all... This all could have been avoided. <laughs> all right. So uh, Trump's campaign uh, sent out, it is appalling and insulting that Joe Biden's White House prohibited children from submitting religious egg designs. That's true for their Easter art event. So make Easter art. Right. But don't, don't actually put any religious idolatry in there. He goes, I, I, I was going to say about uh, Biden's Easter. It's incredible. I swear, it is the the joke, what, the joke of all time, the uh, the gag, the goof the, of all time, the goof of all time. He creates the religious holiday, and then he sets the rules in opposition. Have Easter, but don't draw crosses. Draw crosses, but have it be trans dicks. <laughs> have trans dicks. Don't tell anybody how they're made. Meanwhile, while you're jumping from one foot to the other, he's laughing his sick fucking ass off. Hey, you can't draw that cross on that egg. No, 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 that's a bifurcated penis. This is mid-trans. Yeah. This is what this is. It's totally fine. <laughs> but the Jews say we lose. <laughs> Consider the source. <laughs> Uh, Joshua with a good point. Anything to get a bunch of kids delivered to the White House for his sniffing contest. That's true. So anyway, you weren't allowed to put the religious egg designs on the Easter art and formally uh, proclaimed Easter Sunday as Trans Day of Visibility. Sadly, these are just two more examples of the Biden administration's years-long assault on the Christian faith. I do get a kick out of Trump calling on reinventing himself as like the savior of Christianity. I know. Does nobody remember his track record? He's I, a piece of monkey shit. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, look, folks, I paid a dirty porn whore a quarter of a million to shut her mouth about fucking me. We need to make sure we keep Christ sacred in the family. While I was cheating on, what, my third wife? Again, he just, yeah. he's routinely cheated on women. He's treated women like doormats. <laughs> he's not really the most Christian person in the world. And I, I love Trump and God. I'm like, those two don't get along. Yeah, he's Yeah, he's been a contradiction of faith his entire life. And now he's like, uh, well, which kind of tells you how much of a piece of shit Biden's got to be on Christianity that Donald Trump is going, oh, man, I think you're falling short in the eyes of God. And just my scooping man. those people up, too. Yeah. Just, yeah. We call on Joe Biden's failing campaign and White House to issue an apology to the millions of Catholics and Christians across America who believe tomorrow is for one celebration only, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So eat a chocolate bunny. <laughs> yes. So please, if you could get some Cadbury eggs. Oh, dude, I, that's what I forgot yesterday. I hear we've got a glut. So eat away. Uh, 325 is the number for today. If you'd like to contribute to our program, please do. What we'd like to do is get under 300 by 7, under 200 by 8, under 100 by 9. Just knock it out real nice and easy. So if you have a little something to contribute to today's program, please do. We do appreciate it. Uh, just throw a little something in the PayPal, the Venmo, Super Chats, Rumble Rants, memberships, gifted memberships, etc. Skeezy says, almost like Trump is like every other politician who will say anything to get uh, retards to vote for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that sounds good. I don't think you can, you need to be a good salesman to be president. You can't be a good salesman without being a little full of shit. You gotta be a little carpetbagger. Yeah, a little bit. 
Uh, so Transgender Day of Visibility was first made up in 2009 by a trans activist, and only 0.002% of the population even know it exists. I thought he just picked it as a day. I didn't even know it was a long-running thing. You so know. maybe he didn't pick it, but the trans community certainly did. Yeah. Like, oh, well, we got to take Easter and make it our day for visibility. Yeah. It's just, could you just fucking one thing? Like, you just want to look at the whole community and go, guys, can we have one thing that you just don't try to involve yourself in? Can you just, like, for a day, just fuck off? Like, I mean. That's why the whole world needs to be dudes. Okay, that sounded gay. <laughs> look. The whole world needs to be dudes. We can all wear tight pants and shirts that are open. <laughs> the whole, look, I'm I'm not going to say and the lube should be free. Like like fountains of lube. You could just like walk by, boom, there you go. Just in case you and another dude meet and you get a look cuz you know sometimes two dudes look at each other like, "Up, oh, time to fuck." I'm not saying that this weekend during my daughter's party that I jumped on trampolines with Nick Ricada. But th that doesn't necessarily mean gay. Two guys can jump on trampolines together. It's totally gay. And it's uh, it's gay? Uh, well, you know what? Honestly, I'm saying that, but I have to say maybe I'm just jealous because I know I can't jump on trampolines. That's true. Like my So maybe I'm just angry about it. And I'm my projecting. friend and neighbor was there, and he stood on the platform. He did not jump on the trampolines. Mm, okay. So, yeah, maybe that is gay. But joke's on you. Did you know I dunked? So they have, balls and they have a bad. They have a bad. That's probably not, not helping. That's nah, probably not. Did you know not. I dunked? Yeah, all the way to the base of the shaft, just I right in. Yeah, I didn't think Boom. that. One, I didn't. I didn't think that one through. Uh, but did you reach around? They have a, I mean, no. They have a basketball hoop at Air Max, and I I took one of the dodge balls and I jumped. I got up there and I dunked twice. See, white men can dunk with a whole lot of help. Dude, I was being white too. I kicked a couple Somalis out from underneath the basketball hoop. I said, scram, vermin. No. They were just kind of standing under there, not even jumping, wearing their full hippie jobby deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, hey, excuse me. And they kind of stared at me like a deer. And then finally they moved. I'm like, all right, now it's time to fucking give her. And then the Muslims laughed at me when I I went up for the uh, the second or third one. After I nailed the first, after I dunked the first time, I, I wanted to go up for more. And I did that thing where your socks slip on the trampoline when you go to jump and you just go straight back on your ass and lower back oh, area. Oh, no. Yeah, I did that. And the fucking Muslims laughed at me. I think that's the right response. Why wouldn't you laugh? That'd be hilarious. I wish I had seen it. <laughs> uh, Hobo says, oh, I would love to play one-on-one -on -one with you. Please try to go for a layup. I'd fake the layup, spin move, and just a little finger roll. Get you to overcommit. Your hatred of me and your wantonness to block my shot, I would use against you. I haven't played pickup basketball in so long. I just kind of dunk over Somali kids at trampoline parks now. That's about the extent of yeah. my basketball playing. I mean, it, you know, why not just live the highlights? It's the fun part. <laughs> exactly. All right, boys and girls, 325 away from today's goal as we continue. We're about an hour into the show and 325 away. Let's go ahead and knock that out. Thank you for your contributions. Um, I don't know if you saw this over the weekend, but I saw a bunch of memes about it. Mm -hmm. uh, a pair of conjoined... This is important because it's not the pair. But conjoined twins were at a wedding. Uh, I don't know if it was this weekend or recently. Because one of them was getting married. Right. Now... I know we're in the age of, like, whatever people identify as. That's what they are. Mm -hmm. But I think we got to start treating conjoined twins like two-headed monsters. What I, no, what I, no, I don't mean it to be insensitive. Like, like can't we just... I, I'm saying we got plenty of clips. Can't we just kick them off a few of them? Like, I mean... No, no, no. What I mean is... Like the Spartans. What I mean is, can't we just call them one? Like, I don't like it when they call it two because, like... So this guy's married to one conjoined twin, right? Yeah. If he accidentally comes on the other one's face, can you can't get mad at him. Like he's not being evil. He's not being a bad guy. What if the other one really doesn't like him? And so like when he's getting close, she does like weird fugly face shit to throw him <laughs> up. To, like, oh no. 
Yeah, like, and do you have? I I don't I don't mean to be crass, but do you have one? Are you a one vagina kind of a gal? Yep. Really? They only yeah, have one. They're they're joined at the waist. Yeah. So there's then that's one person with two heads. Sorry. Yeah. One controls the left arm and leg, and one controls the right arm and leg, yeah. and so everything they do is very, very coordinated. You know what they're going to do on their honeymoon? A threesome? Uh, g- <laughs> no, two some. I already established that these well, things 2. are Well, 2.5. Let's meet in the middle. Okay, f- <laughs> fair enough. Uh, no, they're actually just going to do a remake of Menomina. Oh, that's- no. Oh, that's not very nice. <laughs> now that song's in everyone's head. Uh, conjoined twins just got married. So, uh, conjoined twin Abby Hensel of TLC's Abby and Brittany is now married to an army veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope he's an army surgeon. They got married in 2021 and the news broke now. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, news just dropped that Abby was married in 2021. So now the other one ha- like isn't married. What if she meets the man of her dreams? Right. Do these two guys have to share the vagina? I guess. Tunnel buddies, bro. Oh, it's just weird. I'm not saying it should be illegal to marry conjoined twins. But we got to do something to keep these people away from mixing with regulars. <laughs> Look, you can marry somebody, but it has to be another conjoined twin. You're going to have to find somebody that you like and pair off. Right. Exa- yes. Thank you. I know you're saying that as a joke to seem unreasonable, but I don't hate the idea. They really do give a lot of different things leeway in this society. (laughs) That's all. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Danny Rebel says, does he give them oral? If he's a good boy, he does. Uh, Do they give him oral? Matt Melt with 499 says, dude, you have to do Jesse having a 2.5 sum. Oh, Oh, yeah, where he goes... I've had a 13 some. You know what my fr- yeah, I had a 2.5 some. I took a conjoined twin out behind the Norfolk scope after an episode uh, after SummerSlam. And I I slammed their summer hole. They only had one of them. Uh, 320 away from today's goal. Thank you very much, Matt Melt. I appreciate it. Here you go, guys. You can take a look. Let's watch them uh, have a nice dance at their wedding. (laughs) You know what dance you're always doing with conjoined twins? The two-step? Yay! There he is. There he is. Uh, You can lead the horse to water, but he has to decide he's drinking. And Johnny lapped up that shit water that I poured out for him. It's always a two-step. It's always a two-step. This guy only knows he's drunk when he's seeing quadruples. (laughs) Hey, man, you seeing double? Perpetually. (laughs) (laughs) She doesn't shut the fuck up. And somehow their periods won't sink up. She's always bleeding. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so now, like, what does the third wheel do? Yeah, you're perpetually just hanging on. He's smooching her. You're just sitting there staring. God, what do you do? Put in headphones and listen to a book on tape? Like, what the? <laughs> how the fuck? And you're feeling, it's like the Corsican brothers, right? Like, she can feel... All of the things he's doing. Oh, God, for her sake, I hope he's got a tiny dick. <laughs> or she really likes his dick. One or the other. I No, I feel bad for the non-wife. Because there's a chance she despises that man. There is a chance, but I feel like you couldn't keep that secret from your conjoined twin. Yeah, but there's, like, there's a lot of secrets. Or a lot of uh, mysteries, I guess I should say. Not really secrets. Uh, K. Fallen the Great says it's a threesome every night. Technically, but what if the other one's not willing? Uh, crack and slap and asking, can he only grab the left boob? These are right. these are fair questions. And I was so disappointed. We had a chance for a three boob, and we didn't get it. Right. <laughs> God, if there is a God, he makes uh, conjoined twins shitty. Yeah. He doesn't make them right. Not that I'm criticizing his work or anything, but... We could have done more. Yeah. 
Joshua uh, over on Rumble says, does one like watching the other getting choked? I mean, kind of have to, right? Kind of have to. Uh, myself says, just think of his dick smells horrible and she's got to smell that while the other is sucking him off. Jesus. I mean, you guys really went the other way on this one, didn't you? That really is the family guy bit. Who wants to suck it? Who wants to smell it? <laughs> This is the first guy to uh, this is this guy is the first person to consent to consent to commit consensual R word. Yeah, right? Cuz it's like half and half. Well, I feel like that that's not happening. I feel like there's there's got to be like the, there's no way it's like the two of them are like, "Oh, this is happening." And the third one is like, "Oh, this ain't." And then right. the other two are like, "Well, we're doing it." Uh Phantom X says, "Wasn't there a woman from your state on a TLC show that was conjoined?" Well, these women were on uh a TLC, TLC show. show. So, again, maybe it's them. Uh, she found the uh, man of her dreams, though, U.S. Army vet Josh Bowling, and they got married. And now the other one has to be present for all of their consummation. Was she the maid of honor, do you think? Had to do it if you're not. That's really shitty. But So then did she, like walk down the aisle with the groomsmen and then have to go back down and come back down with her dad or something. Yeah, like what do you, what do you do? You have to keep hitting the reset button on the ceremony. Oh no. Do you throw the bouquet or do you just hand it to your sister? Well, then that's a lie. Cause you know, you're not gonna, it's going to be really hard to like land a dude when you're hanging out with your sister all the time. And she's married. Yeah. Cause it's just going to be like, uh, you just hope that your sister marries someone hot so people will come over and talk to you. Oh. All right, guys, let's continue on with today's show. Uh, oh, Charm says they're from Maple Grove, I believe. Oh. They grow them fucking weird. <laughs> uh, maybe the other twin will take a sleeping pill. I would hope not. That would... Guys, throw us a couple of bucks, 320 away, and we're over an hour into today's show. Let's make sure we knock that out and get off to a good start uh, this week. You want to listen to Corinne Jean-Pierre uh, lose her shit at a radio interviewer? Oh, God, yes. Why? Well, she's the press secretary, you know? The really bad one. If And if you're press secretary, aren't you supposed to keep your shit together? Like, you're yeah. supposed to... That's your whole job. Yeah, you're not supposed to get rattled very easily. Unless, of course, they hire a Republican to work at your station. Then you can lose your shit. Well, she was on uh, a Charlotte news talk station, WBT. And one of the hosts asked her about Joe Biden possibly having dementia. Fair question, right? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Let's, let's see what her answer was. You could, I mean, even if you don't like the question, even if it seems a little shitty, which you could argue it is, you can still answer it. And I'm sure you've had this question before. Sure. Plenty absolutely. of us have asked it. Yeah. Like, hey, does Joe Biden have dementia? Uh, you know what makes it not, you know what doesn't make it look like he's free of dementia? When you lose your shit when people ask about it. Let's see what she does on WBT in Charlotte. When I told a number of people that I was talking to you today, it was interesting, though. They all said, would you please just ask her? Does the president have dementia? And so before I move on from that, does he? That Mark First off, kind of a chicken shit way to bring it up. Yeah, putting it on other people. Would you yeah. please ask her? And don't you want to own that question? Don't you want to be the guy who had the balls to ask the White House press secretary if Joe Biden has dementia? I would, but yeah. apparently he's using other people. What a dick. Mark, Mark, I can't even believe you're asking me this question. That have you watched him? He's falling off bikes, he's stumbling, he's mumbling, he's falling asleep at shit. You can't believe he's asking that question? That's where the biggest problem is for me. Isn't the fact that it's like, oh, he doesn't have dementia. How dare you ask? Like, <laughs> If you could at least understand where I'm coming from, it'd right. give me a little bit more faith in believing your answer. <laughs> right. That is a credibly offensive question to ask. But you know uh, people is, ask it. Uh, wait, oh, let me, no, 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 no. You, Mark, you, 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 you took, you're taking us down this rabbit hole. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me be very clear about this. Uh, for the past several years, the president's physician has laid out very, in a comprehensive way, uh, the president's health. Yeah, guys. 
End of story. There wasn't any sort of, you know, investigation or or report that came out that said Joe Biden is too much of an old doddering yeah. man to testify. The special prosecutor said he couldn't be charged with mishandling the documents because he's too retarded to know what they were. He said that Joe Biden is so dumb and his mind is so dull that he didn't know he was putting classified documents in like a Corvette trunk or whatever it was. So you can't, and, and also aren't these the same people who like, remember Trump's doctor would always say he wasn't obese. He wasn't obese. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is other people would be, oh, Trump's losing his mind. Oh, we got to question whether or not he's mentally competent to finish and stand office. It's like, okay, so we can ask that about Trump all day. I don't remember a huge pushback from that because most of us are like, yeah, have you heard him speak? He does right. seem kind of... <laughs> so we were all kind of on board with it. But now with Joe Biden, how dare you? What's wrong with you? And the doctors would never lie. I mean, Trump's doctor was a lying piece of shit. Right. But this one, this guy, he's the good one. Uh, this is a president, if you watch him every day, if you really pay attention to his record and what he has done, you, ask, you will see dementia? exactly how focused he's been on this, the American people, how historic his actions has been. And so I'm not even going to truly, truly... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, really. I, I can tell you this. I agree with her on one thing. His actions have been historic. Right, and he has focused on the American people, yeah, uh, fucking them over. Fucking them really hard, right in the old keister. But yeah, she's, I mean, she's trying to do her job. I get it. And, th and, and I'll give her one piece of credit. That's a tough job. It is a tough job, and she's not qualified for it, so I feel bad for her. But then I also don't because, hey, you're a DEI hire, so yeah, yeah, good for Please. you. You know, take take the premise of your question. I think it is uh, incredibly insulting, and uh, and so we can you know we can move on to the next question. Yes, um, yes, it is insulting. We're asking if he has dementia. It would be insulting that the president of the United States would be serving while he has dementia. We were just hoping you would answer the question. That's what I love when people try to shame you out of talking about something by going like, "That's an offensive question to ask," and you're like, "Yes, yes, I know." Yeah, that's why I'm asking it. It's, it's even more offensive to think that it's happening. Yeah. Prices and grocery prices then. Big topics here in North Carolina. How does uh, Mr. Biden win votes when people don't have as much disposable income? Do you think she's going to try to blame Trump? Oh, absolutely. Everything's Trump's fault. Okay. Biden, what, what could Biden? He's only been in office for three years, okay? Donald Trump had four whole years to set up his sabotage of the economy that would right. miraculously appear. Exactly. Journey. Look, the president understands. Uh, he grew up in, in a middle-class family, a working-class family in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He gets it. He Can we fucking start a Joe Biden bingo every time they mention fucking Scranton G or, or Amtrak or... Or middle-class America? Ugh. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't care where he started from. When he sold out the American economy to continually make money off of Ukraine, I really don't feel like he understands where I'm coming no. from. Gave away billions, still giving away billions of our dollars just so we can make, you know, what, uh, eight figures? Yeah, I guess. Because he's such a good businessman. Yeah understand how difficult it is for Americans who are sitting around their kitchen table every month trying to figure out what they're going to pay for. You have to remember when the president walked into this administration, there were multiple crises happening. There was COVID, there was, uh, the economy was in a tailspin because of the last administration, because of what the, the President Trump left us with. Oh, the there you go. Oh, there you. you go. Blaming the last guy four years later. What President Trump left us with. President Trump left you with a decent economy that you sandbagged to get him out of office. <laughs> I'm tired of this. We had uh, numerous problems that we were dealing with COVID. Yes, the problem you created. Right. I'd like to point out that it was not Donald Trump that went, and we're locking down all the buildings, and we're not letting people go to work, and we're going to just print money like there's no tomorrow. No, no, no. That was not Donald Trump or JFK. It was <laughs> literally... It was literally Kennedy! The, Re Kennedy! the Republicans fought it most of the time and the Democrats pushed it the whole time. For who? For Kennedy. Kennedy! Now you're asking me about gas prices. The president took action on gas prices. Let's not forget Russia's invasion on Ukraine 
skyrocketed prices of gas. A damn Jew boy. And because the president took action, we see we are in a different place than we were a year ago in gas prices. Oh, my lucky stars, a Negro. Uh, eggs, milk, uh, seafood products, uh, all the important uh, groceries, those costs have gone down because of what this president has been able to do. And they, and Dude, I get her rattled again. I like her so much better when she's off script and she's all bitchy and wild. I, yeah, because again, the, these prices have gone down because of what this president's been able to do. Yeah, and the prices all went up because of what this president did. Right, like the prices coming back down and them still being way higher than they used to be is not something to be proud of. Yeah. So what's the listen to the end thing? Because they say listen to the end. We got 40 seconds. All right, left. let's listen to the end. With that, thank you so much, Mark. Have an amazing, amazing day. Wow. Wow. Whoa. She hung up. Wow. <laughs> I mean, Mark, this, this, you, listen, I am nominating you to get a press corps badge and you need to go to the White House. I'm sorry, but you asked three, four incredibly salient, important questions that are all front of mind. Nothing out of bounds, no baba booing or anything like that, right? <laughs> and you did it exactly right on. And I don't understand, I don't understand the, the fragility of this person. She sucks at her job. She's not qualified. She's in over her head. She was hired because she checks certain boxes and they're not performance based. Right. Yeah, they didn't say, wow, this chick does a really good job. No, no, no. This chick happens to be a black lesbian. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tubbs McGurk says, what version of history is this? Yeah, it is amazing what you can do with numbers. You know, the old saying, there's three kinds of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Like, you can keep quoting shit and, you know, going like, oh, yeah, we're looking great if you only judge from, like, two years ago to now. And I love hanging up the minute you get done with the, the phone call because that doesn't look like you're willing to debate at all. So it's going to be it's gonna be great when people are like, oh, no, 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 this is the way it is. Here go. No, I'm leaving. No. Uh, guys, we are 320 bucks away from today's goal. Uh, if you'd like to uh, help us out, we would appreciate a little rally if we keep that moving in, positive, uh, in the positive direction. Uh, it helps me out a lot in terms of getting a show done and uh, in terms of keeping this, uh, this, this vehicle on the road. Uh, looking to break the PayPal cherry today if you'd like to do that or the Venmo cherry. Uh, there's the links in the chat. It's also pinned to the top of the page on YouTube. The links are also in Rumble. Thank you very much. Oh, and just as I speak, our PayPal cherry hath We've popped. got somebody to uh, to do some thanking here. Let's take a look. We've got uh, Nicholas, my golfing buddy. Thank with, you. With five bucks. Thank you very much. If everybody wants to do that. Yeah, we'll knock this out in no time. Yeah, we'll go you're not going to see me complain. 315 bucks away. Thank you for keeping this show on the air. It's what you do. We do run on your donations. So if you like what we do. Throw a couple of bucks at one of those links or a super chat. We're happy to get those as well. Oh, Johnny, do I have a story for you? I've got uh, I've got a young basketball player who dropped dead. Gang violence again? You would think. But uh, no, let's just say for this one, I would like to see a medical history. Chart. Oh, boy, I told you it was Friday. If I could. Uh, let me tell you something. I did tell Johnny this before the show. Yeah, go ahead. I am not urinating on the air near as much as I used to. I think whatever was wrong um, is, uh, is, has been fixed. Uh, oh, here we go. Ronald Buck. That was the guy I uh, fought first in my uh, first boxing match. Right. Uh, with 499 says, yo, word got back to me you were in boxing shape and now looking for a match. How about a rematch, brother? Maybe you'll get a hit in this time. I think it would look a lot different. I think that could be a lot of fun. In fact, you know what? This Saturday, uh, team sparring up at uh, St. Cloud Boxing and Wrestling Club where I train guys and, and work. Mm. That would be fun to get him up there. That would be very, very interesting, I think. 310 away. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I'm going to go fill that up. Okay. You take care with these folks here. We'll and, hang out for a minute. Yeah, and then you guys throw a couple of bucks our way. Let's knock out that 310 and call it a win. I'm also going to go to the P.O. box today and get that fucking sippy cup that Scarface sent us for me. So uh, you can finally not damage your roadcaster anymore. I didn't say that. Okay. I just said he's going to help. I just, 
I, there's a lot of splatter on that. I think I'm is just, there really? Well, like, I look like you can, Oh yeah, there is a lot. Can, oh, there's a lot of splatter marks. Yeah, I just I'm That's looking. A tough old bird. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed because, like I said, I spilled a little drop on mine, and I still have one li- weird little like null zone in my my primary slider. Scarface just says about fucking time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I'm going. Didn't that arrive it's like a count. month ago? Yes, I got it. I'm a fuck up. Perpetually. Uh, 310 away from today, guys. Go to PayPal and fill us up. We appreciate it. I'm going to go fill this thing up. I really thought about maybe getting a beer instead. You do you, homie. I'm going to pass. I'm going to fill this up. Well, if we knock out the goal, that could change. If we knock out the goal before 8 o'clock, I'll have a few beers today. Why the hell not? All right, Johnny's going to take over for about a minute and a half. I'll be right back with lubrication. (laughs) SC Motorsports saying, that ain't water, Johnny. Don't touch the splatter. Well, it's obviously dry. Um, so, uh, I mean, uh, who knows? I never said it was water. That's true. That Who knows what substance it is? All right, so we're going to be going uh, until hopefully 1030. If we can knock out a bunch of that coal before he gets back, that would be hilarious. It'll blow his mind. The Rusty Steel Toe Show. Go, John. Rusty Steel Toe Show. Why would it be rusty? I don't I don't get it. We haven't spilled anything. We're not even wearing shoes. So, very salty. Mm-mm. All right. So, I want to see Aaron get drunk. So, if we can get that goal quashed out and and then get him. Because it won't take much. I literally could watch him drink two beers and lose it. So, this will be fun for us. And it'll be very easy to get him over the line. So, we just have to. It isn't my show, LOL, says Rusty Grammar. Yeah, why are we calling it the Rusty Steel Toe Show? Rusty Grammar's... A mod. I didn't stop. All right. Um. So yes, uh, the trans thing. On one other thing on that uh, that I wanted to mention. Why are we? Why are we giving them a public day, as like a recognized holiday? We is the science out on whether or not it's. We haven't picked on whether or not the thing's okay. Too many people are changing their minds. Like France is saying, we're bar- we're barring this stuff from being legal under any certain. Oh, we do have two beers. See, look. I have to, if we knock it out by 9 o'clock today, meaning an hour, a little over an hour and a half, I'll have a couple to celebrate. There we go. If not, I'll weep into my soup. How's that? Uh, 310 is the number today. You know, honestly, if we get it around 200 by 8 o'clock, I think we're in good shape. So if you feel like contributing to the program, uh, we would appreciate it. Uh, Those are going to be some warm-ass beers, says Cynically Insane. Not if you guys, you know. Not if you crack it out. Not if you guys knock this thing out and you you feel like being uh, generous for us and keeping all of us uh, paid, as they say. Uh, It wasn't April at the post office. No, for April just sends that shit out from here. Gift certificates and stuff. That's not a, that doesn't need to be a post office trip. A lot of that, that's when we have a merch order. Then she she has to take that to the post office. But, like, prizes and shit, totally different. All right, so you guys uh, go ahead and throw some money at us, and then hopefully we can uh, relax on that front a little bit. You're not going to believe this. You're really not going to believe this. Um, A young athlete uh, dropped dead in the middle of one of his practices. From, uh, From asthma? Um, no, 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 they just fell. Cancer? Oh, no, his heart just stopped beating. Oh, he had one of those rare genetic conditions that magically no, just... No, he just... His heart gave out, you know, like they do when you're 18 years old and you're just playing basketball with your friends. You remember when you played sports with... Like, you were a hockey player. Yeah. You remember when you would just play sports with your friends and once in a while just one of them would fall down and die? Yeah, you know, when when someone hit the ice, we'd do like a three count before we'd be like, all right, get the corner. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, that's what. It... Well, that's still happening today. Oh, man. There's nothing new that came along that caused more young people to start having serious heart problems. That's why that destiny retard who was talking to Jordan Peterson really annoyed me. Because he's like, oh, seven in 100,000 people even experienced that. And it's like, first of all, that's too many. But second of all, now let's do that. In 18 to 25-year-olds, how many of those cases were there? And what's the normal rate of contracting myocarditis from COVID between the age of 18 and 25? I'd have a hard time believing that that that's a very big number. Yeah, I don't think so. 
10 friends, family and classmates gathered to remember the life of Cameron Ward. He was a senior on the basketball team at Rossview High School oh, yeah? in Clarksville who died last night after he reportedly collapsed while playing basketball. The game no way. 18 year old kid just playing basketball up and collapses. Strange. Must have been fat. Must have been in really terrible shape. Must have just, you know, gave out. And that he loved. Tonight, hundreds of fellow students and staff gathered for a candlelight vigil outside of that school. They shared memories and stories of Cam. We heard from his mom and basketball coach about the life Cam lived. When I want to start a war, my son would want peace. When I would want to hate, my son would show love. I have a question, ma'am. Why are you such a piece of shit? I, I love she's like, whenever I wanted to go to war, my son would want peace. Whenever I wanted to hate, he would show love. And I'm like, I'm sorry, was your son being parented by a psychopath? It sounds like he might have been spared a pretty, pretty horrible life here. What the heck, man? Every time I wanted to smack a bitch in a grocery store, he'd say, Ma, let's just go to the cereal aisle. Every time I wanted to punt kick a shih tzu, he would say, Ma, let's just keep walking. Every time I wanted to beat my new baby daddy because he's going to be my ex-baby daddy. Every time I'd show up to the house pregnant again, he would tell me he'd bring me birth control brochures. He was just a good boy. I should have listened. That's who my son was. Man, could he dunk? Could he play basketball? Could he... <laughs> Look, I don't want to say that I treat these people like a bunch of animals for a job, but that <laughs> animal did one hell of a job. Jesus Christ, fat white guy. Could you be more of a fat white guy? That boy could dunk a basketball, I tell you what. I know he couldn't read worth a lick, but boy, did he have a great mid-range jumper from the elbow. He was like a black Popeye. You give him fried chicken, there was no end to what he could accomplish. Listen, I've had a lot of boys run hard for me, but none of my boys ran harder and longer than this boy. He's a good hand. I told him last practice, run, run. Some folks say he can't basketball. Well, he played hard until he had to fall. Run, run. Depend. He go back. I gotta go back and listen to this guy. So a fucking eighteen-year-old kid's playing basketball. He drops dead, probably because he's. And uh, the coach, the first thing the coach can say is, "A black kid could dunk." I mean, uh, you know, he couldn't. He couldn't spell his own name, but I'll be, <laughs> I'll be God if he uh, if he couldn't. I'll be, God. I'll be God if he couldn't nail a three-pointer. Look, he may not have been able to. Uh, to read left to right. Boy, could he drive left to right, baseline to baseline. What a kid. Look, he might have had what some people call sticky fingers, but that ball always got where it was supposed to be, especially when he stole it from the other team. Yes. He always led the league in steals, on and off the court. He was a good kid. That's who my son was. Man, could he dunk? Could he play basketball? Could he defend? He could do all of that things. <laughs> All of that thing. He, he could do all of that things. No, no, uh, no offense, Johnny Jackson. You're a fucking retard. <laughs> Why the heck do I have a relative who's in charge of a basketball team? Jesus. <laughs> not only could he, I thought he was gonna say, not only could he dunk, not only could he, could he do this. They were. I thought he was gonna say something about him as a person. Not only could he dunk, not only could he play great basketball, but he was also actually one of the good ones. Um, Wow, buddy. Never blamed Whitey for all his problems. Man, could he dunk? Could he play basketball? Could he defend? He could do all of that things. And those will never be forgotten by the fans. But the friends and family who knew him, it was that heart. The high school principal said. No! No! Terrible way to end that! It was no, we're not, not his heart. Oh, by the way. Looks like he's in terrible shape. Right, right. This dude <laughs> this dude was one bottle of Mountain Dew away from a cardiac arrest. He was on death's door this whole time. Oh. I don't know why anyone's surprised or shocked. Yeah, I mean, this guy looks like he was just waiting for a call from the uh, Reaper. He was just looked like he was in such terrible shape. Did that coach really say after this kid's heart just gave out? 
that it was his heart. Oh, go back. I got to watch the whole speech from this white dunderhead. Play basketball. Could he defend? He could do all of that things. And those will never be forgotten by the fans. But the friends and family who knew him, it was that heart. That gave out. Yeah, that gave out and killed him. It was that heart that we filled full of experimental medicine and caused it to seize up and kill him in the middle of a basketball game. Whoopsie daisy. It wasn't even a game. It was a practice. And yes, as a public school, we did force him to get the shot. Otherwise, he wouldn't be allowed to play basketball. Right? The sweet goddamn irony of the whole thing. Well, you know, he was only trying to get, you know, a college... A college ride, so he could have just given up his career and his dreams and his hopes yeah. and stood his ground because, you know, this drug is here. Exactly. Want to take an experimental. The high school principal says they'll have counselors available at the school on Monday, ready to talk to any student or staff member who needs them as they mourn this loss. Cameron right now, this. Yeah, I. I'd be more worried with seeing a doctor and be like, all right. It's just, it's, it's hard to watch these anymore because it's just all the time. And eventually, like, they're softening up on even letting people bring up the coincidence. Yeah. Like, it's getting a little better on that front. But it's it still sucks. Like, it's still bad. Like, you can still get in a lot of trouble for saying, ah, you know, it does seem like there's a big correlation between, you know, people getting this shot and then people dropping dead on a basketball court. And it's all like like you said earlier. It's always the uh, the the fattest, most unhealthy people that this is taking out. Right? Yeah. Thank God it's never young, strapping lads in their physical prime. I'm almost worried that this is deliberate because it seems too perfect. I have yet to see one fat person who accidentally had you know like oh my God he got up from fifth period and he just dropped down dead and nobody knows why like we don't see any of that happening it's always like yeah these prime athletes in the peak of their lives were engaged in cardiovascular activities and kaput yeah you never hear hey that dork from the chess team dropped dead he picked up a pawn and then he passed out oh. Uh, guys, we are 310 away from today's goal. I would like to get going on that. We're an hour. Oh, Joshua with 20 bucks over on Rumble. Sorry, Joshua. So we are not 3 Appreciate that. We're 295 away. You're doing great, guys. From Come today's on. goal. Thank you very much. Get that down to 200 by the end of the hour, and we're going to be in great shape. Uh, also, if we get uh, in the next hour and a half, if that goal gets knocked out, I'm going to celebrate a little this morning. Kids are off spring break now, so they've got back to full school days. There you go. That's kind of nice. Uh, go ahead. Uh, oh, God. Coltrane says Margaret Sanger invented the vax. Oh, no. Might as well have, right? Might as well have. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and uh, throw in a couple of bucks. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much to Joshua for the 20 bucks on rumble now we're at a spot where we're under 300 we can make a move to 200 that would i'm be waiting good. for like the fat community to come out and be like no 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 we uh we we can't work out we can't lose weight it'll kill us <laughs> the only thing keeping me alive is the fact that i'm fat yeah i mean you guys you see what this exercise is doing to these in shape young 18 year olds it's fucking killing them. i'm amazed we haven't seen that yet actually just a whole bunch of, oh look healthy living healthy living you're effing dead uh, yeah, that's like when uh, when those fitness people die jogging. Yeah. People are like, oh, well, I see what I do is a lot better. No. No, you're both. Look, he was doing the right thing and a bad thing happened to him. Unfortunately, not rare in the world we live in. You're doing a bad thing and somehow survived. Again, unfortunately, not rare. I mean, just the music industry alone. Apparently, the more drugs you do, the longer you live. Well, speaking of the music industry... This is, I hope this makes everybody happy. Uh, Lizzo quit over the weekend. Like, music. Legit quit? She's done. I mean, no, she's just a, a fat, impulsive shithead who just said something, you know, just said something out of her ass and now is going to, like, try to milk it for a comeback album in a year or two. But four-time Grammy-winning musician Lizzo took to Instagram Friday to announce that she's getting out of the music industry. And we all cried. Tears of joy. We all wept. Come on, you're still going to go on tour and sing, you know, 
that song. Plus size? I don't know what the... I Again, I don't... Well, I don't know a Lizzo song. The four-time Grammy-winning musician Lizzo, Lizzo... Lizzo. Lizzo says she's getting out of the music industry. The body positivity artist claimed that she is tired of being criticized. Oh, fucking hell. Then don't go into art. I'm tired of standing in front of people and demanding you all pay attention to me, and then when you do, you have thoughts. Oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> right. I'm getting the fuck out of here. This is bullshit. I don't I don't deserve to be judged on my effort and work. This well, I think she's getting more upset that she's being judged on her being a heifer. Um just Well, there is that too. I mean she's probably But wait a minute, she's body positive, remember? That's yeah, sexy positive at any is side. In plus, there's a lot extra there. Uh yeah, just I mean uh She's beautiful at any size, and every everybody's uh, every fat person is just like beautiful and whatnot. Why why would you take it so personally? She wrote, "I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet." Well, then stop treating people like shit. I mean, that would that would be nice. Oh yeah, wasn't she the one who like her background dancers came out and said like she took us to a strip club and made us shove our faces in a stripper's pussy, which like not the worst with thing. bananas and things. Yeah. yeah. That, that was the claim, but then uh, the worst part is is because all of those people are sub, such upstanding individuals, she really didn't uh, she didn't make that claim when it happened so much as when she didn't have a job anymore. Yeah, I just, people who get into music and they become successful at it and then go, oh, I can't stand getting dragged. Oh, I can't stand being insulted or criticized. It's like, what the fuck did you do to yourself then? Don't read the comments. I don't yeah. know if you know this or not, but... You made the money, so who cares? Do what you're doing. Yeah. So she left. Yeah, I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit, she said. This is this is the whole message. I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies and being told about me for clout and views being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me, and disrespecting my name. Whoops. I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit. I don't know. See, Give this, back the money then. This is why I feel like some people have redemption or some people like have an easier time than others. Like... They either let it get to them or they don't. So, like, Lizzo lets it get to her. She's got to quit. She's out of here. Okay. Chad Kroger just, like, lets people talk shit about Nickelback, and they, like, they halfway kind of wink and nod at it. And it's just like, hey, man, we sold a shitload of albums. We really don't give a fuck what you say about it. Sold a shitload of albums. I think pretty sure still sells out, like, arenas and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, what are you, again, what are you complaining about? You have the, like, this is one of the things I don't understand about people. If I have a career like that, you can say whatever the fuck you want. I don't give a shit. I'm doing good. Yeah. It was August of last year, by the way, she got sued by her three ex-dancers. Okay. I, I just, um. So uh, that's dragging your name through the mud? Well, it's. Uh, again, it's just the sensitivity of it all. And here's my problem. She's not quitting. No, she's not. She had an emotional moment on Instagram, and everyone's like, oh, my God, Lizzo's gone. First of all, replaceable. You're a pop artist. They'll have somebody else come in and sing. You'll be fine. Um, but second of all, I hope she kind of gets punished when she comes back by people who are like, you told us you were done, so it turns out you just used us as an emotional tampon and then split. Right, you know. and then, then you came back and said, hey, I'd buy my new album. But I'm pretty sure the idiots that listen to Lizzo music are going to go, oh, no, no, she's a body positive person. I have to support her. Thank God she's back. Don't let the haters win. Right. Uh, make the world Lizzo free again, says Sean. Uh, K. Fall in the Great says, Aaron, hold on. I need to say something to you and Lizzo. Mm -hmm. Moo. 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 I mean, yeah, it was fine. Why? What are you doing? What's going on, homie? Yeah, just, uh, just trying to have a little conversation with my man over here since we're speaking the same language. Uh, Fallen the Great says, Aaron, hold on. 
I need to say something to you and Liz. Oh, and oh yeah, I we just, did that. I just did that one. Nobody doesn't like Nickelback. They just won't admit it in front of their friends trying to be cool. That's just it. Nickelback, like, people started making fun of Nickelback a bunch, even though they're really good, and people just kind of had to go with it. I will admit there are, like, they're not cringy, but there are just, there's, there's some songs with Nickelback where uh, something in your mouth and things like that are just like, okay, it's a little, eh, in terms of just, like, the sexualization of the song and stuff, but it's not like cringy, cringy. People are like, oh, I hate Nickelback. They didn't get where they were because they sucked. Right. And they, and again, they handled it very well. Because why would they give a shit? Right. If you're Chad Kroger, who gives a fuck what people think about your music? It'll be here after you and them are gone. Right. But Lizzo, Lizzo doesn't like being called a chunk ass, so she's going to be done. I got an idea. Put down the spoon. I didn't know she did heroin. I thought she'd be pretty. Oh, no, no. I was talking about tapioca. Oh, well, that's understandable. All right, guys. 295 away from today's goal. Let's please get a move in on that. We're uh, approaching the halfway point of today's program. I'd like to be at a, uh, a decent number. So if you want to click one of those links, especially the PayPal link, that would be great. Otherwise, leave a super chat, give some memberships, and uh, leave us a rumble rant. Uh, but just leave us a couple of bucks. We'd appreciate it. Uh, it uh, goes towards helping the show stay on. Uh, John Stewart criticized Donald Trump for exaggerating his property values. Yep. In that bank case in New York. Mm -hmm. Well, social media users accused John Stewart of hypocrisy after the New York Post reported that the comedian sold his Tribeca penthouse in 2014 for 829% above the estimated market value. Oh, huh. Interesting. 829%. So eight, almost eight and a half times what it's worth. Jeez. Stewart subsequently slammed the critics on X, formerly Twitter. All right, let's see what he has to say for himself. Because, again, much like Bill Maher, I like Jon Stewart. I used to, but I, that's fading. And I'm kind of on that fence with Bill Maher, with, too, with the way he's so determined to to back up. Uh, the California's governor that I'm just like, no, you can't, you can't sit here and insist that he's a good guy. And he does, I think he'll win. And I'm like, yeah, I think he'll ruin the country. And the people that live in your state think the same thing. Yeah. I don't know where the so Gavin Stewart. Newsom love is coming from, but um, yeah, John Stewart apparently did the, I love this shit. He did the same exact thing that Trump did, which by the way is fine. Yeah. You're allowed to tell a scuzzy schemey bank. Hey, by the way, my shit's worth this much. And if the bank buys it, that's on them. Right. Uh, by the way, thank you to Camel Toe for gifting five memberships. Death Proof, Egg Picker, Johnny Castile, Radio Victor, and Mad Joe. Thank you. All getting a membership. And that brings us down to 285 this morning. Continue to contribute to this program. We will knock that down. And like I said, in the next 20 minutes, hopefully we'll be under 200. So John Stewart said, OMG, I've been caught doing something not remotely similar to Trump. Wrong? I okay. mean, how? How is it not similar? It's comparable. Uh, I guess all I need to do now is start a fraud college, steal classified documents, bankrupt casinos, pay hush money, grab pussies, discriminate in housing, cheat at golf, and foment insurrection. And you'll revere me. Now, don't be a fucking baby. You got caught doing something that makes you look like a hypocritical douchebag. Own it and move on. Yeah, this is where, again, I'm losing... Respect for John. Like, okay, start a fraud college. That part I don't even want to. The steel classified docs thing. I'm sick and tired of the steel classified documents thing. Like, Donald Trump is the only fucking person who did it. Like, we literally don't know for a fact that the current sitting president stole documents when he was a senator, a vice president, and probably a president in the next couple of years. And he just kept them in a box in his garage. So, again, it's okay for one but not the other. Go fuck yourself with stolen documents. Stuart, uh, Stewart sold his Tribeca penthouse in 2014 for $17.5 million. At the time, an assessor valued the property at $847,000, a difference of 829%. In New York, tax rates are applied to the estimated value of a property with the penthouse judged to be worth $1.882 million. Stewart did not do anything legally wrong. Neither did Donald <laughs> Trump. There you go. 
It really is that fucking simple. All you have to do is look at Jon Stewart and he goes, well, I didn't do anything illegal. Neither did Donald Trump. Boom, there you go. Neither did Trump. He told the bank his property was worth a certain thing. They did their due diligence, found out he was wrong, and you go, ah, shucks, I tried. Whereas Jon Stewart actually succeeded. Yeah, he got his apartment valued at over 800% of its actual worth. So he got money out of them. It's really weird how it's okay for Donald Trump to, or it's not okay for Donald Trump to, you know, make a little money off of a business deal. But if Jon Stewart wants to maybe make a little for his apartment, I mean, why not? Well, they should allow it. He's such a, he's become, as you said, such a good little gatekeeper now. It's sad because he was so good before. He really was. Uh, 285 away from this morning. I'm going to open up these 7 o'clock hour stories. While I do that, let's talk about our friends at All Care Towing. 320-253-5203 for our friends at All Care. Also, Midland Armory in downtown Foley, Minnesota, if you're looking for firearms, uh, ammo, tactical gear, suppressors, and much more. Make it Midland Armory. MidlandArmory.com. And Stoney's Bar in downtown Rockville, Minnesota, Warm weather is coming back pretty soon, believe it or not. And Stoney's will be a great place to go for that outdoor patio. Otherwise, uh, live music every single weekend and the best Bloody Marys you can get. All right, Stoney's Bar in downtown Rockville. Uh, SC Motorsports says, wow, we almost lost Aaron there. Um, yeah, dude, the day after holidays are always tough. Yeah. They're always really, really tough. I... Like I said at the beginning of the show with Johnny, we always we always remember like, hey, didn't we agree we weren't going to do this anymore? Yeah. Like, aren't we tired from running around? Like, I had another birthday party for one of You've the kids. You've got a lot of birthday parties. Yeah, I've had a lot of birthday parties. And then we did uh, Easter at April's parents' house, and we did uh, Easter the day before that. And Easter, 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 Easter. That's one of the fun things when you got to... You got to bring the kids to multiple events held the same time with all that. Oh. I get lucky where I just have the one Easter with the kid. I make the scavenger hunt for her. I spend the whole night beforehand laying everything out, and then I just get to let her wa like do it and watch. It's fun. Very jealous of you. Yes. Scarface uh, says, here's some gas money so you can go and get that goddamn sippy cup. Enjoy the absolute childness of it, says Scarface. Thank you, buddy, for the 10 bucks. That's very much appreciated. I hope everybody throws in 10 bucks. And we can knock out that 275 that's left, have a successful start to the week, and do a half hour of overtime. Would be awesome. We got 15 minutes until the top of the hour. Would love to be at 200 bucks by then. Thank you, guys. Links are in the chat or pinned to the top of the page. Uh, would you like to see how Philadelphia is advertising itself? Okay. Uh, to the rest of the country. You know, this is interesting because a lot of big cities right now are getting kind of bad vibes from people like us, smaller town people, because we tend to think that all of Philadelphia is like Kensington. Yeah, like a shithole. Yeah, everybody's on trank and just kind of just kind of looking like this all the time. Nobody gives a shit to what they see happening around them, so if you're in trouble, nobody's going to help. Well, Philadelphia wants to let you know that's not who they are. They are a lot more than just these terrible rumors and everything else. Uh, they are a bustling metropolis. Would you like to see a an ad titled Visit Philadelphia in Pursuit of a More Perfect Union? Oh, dear Lord. That sounds dangerous. Let's go ahead and see what Philadelphia Make is Philly doing. Again. Yeah, is doing to... You know, encourage people to come out and visit their town. This is, uh, you guys can tell me if this is really good or if it's a swing and a miss. Oh, dear Lord. Hey, look oh, at no. clumsy Gerald. The animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Why do you need to be dressed like that to read this story? Right. like That's not how you look when you get up in the morning. Like You have to get your character on and the whole thing. Why can't you just go to read to the kids as yourself? 
why do you have to do again it's like it's like oh is this person this person came to the birthday party as spider-man yeah because they wanted to see spider-man so the person put on a costume but they're not telling them about lessons of life they're being spider-man right so if you're gonna be some sort of character be the character she looks like she's crying by the way right that looks like she's crying god i hope she's crying well and none of these kids asked for this right it's their like, parents did it. Right. Every one of these dumb white bitches, I'm an ally. Yeah. Fuck you. None of these kids are like, oh, I'd like a man with a chiseled jaw and some stubble to read me a book dressed as a lady. I don't think they would come up with that. Excuse me, coughs the cricket. Who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. So that's supposed to be Visit Philadelphia? You would have been better off advertising Kensington. <laughs> right, right. You could have showed guys doing trank and like crashing out and people would have been like oh, i think i might actually like to see that driving by at a fast pace it's not for the kids but if you're a morbid adult it's kind of entertaining yeah let's do this exactly let's give this a shot man it looks like a fucking shit show i mean this looks like a shit show but one i don't want to see plus if you're super lucky you'll take home a souvenir of somebody else's drugs oh hey. which is nice they leave them laying around was that a doorbell ring in the ad or was that in my house hold on no it's in the ad oh okay yeah it is Visit Philadelphia. Dudes will dress up as chicks and uncomfortably read to your kids. You know what, guy? You know what? I think I'm gonna hang out. <laughs> I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna wait for something else to come along. No offense. Uh, Hobo Chili Recipe says Philadelphia, the home of brotherly confusion. Yeah, I mean, is that still technically brotherly love? What? I just I I always worry when it's like oh we just want to read these books to the kids I'm like yeah that's not all you want to do right it's you know oh I want to dress like a chick and put fake tits in and read to kids I, I, like you said earlier reading to the kids is enough you can read to the kids read them a story about being different they don't need to see you dressed like a cartoon character to understand people can be different right just I mean just read the fucking book. That's all you got to do. All right, kids. We are still 275 away from doing overtime today. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in a couple of bucks and see if we can get this thing moving. Um, get, it, uh, get it down to zero so we can say that uh, this show is still going to stay on the air and do okay. Uh, Freaky Deaky says, so much history about Philadelphia, and they chose to spotlight trans... Yeah, I mean... And, and then Biden thought that we needed a trans visibility day. Again, they get to come in and do shit that 10 years ago we would have said is completely out of line and not okay. And we never enforced it. And the people who said, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. They're doing what they said. So it's a really, I feel like a hypocrite for all the times. I'm like, ah, you're just being a, you're being a sensationalist. They just want to get married and blah. It's not going to be a slippery slope that leads to all. And now I'm literally going, can you put some fucking clothes on? If you want to read to my daughter, you fucking fruit loop. Right. Like that's where I'm at. And I'm going, holy shit. They were right. Yeah, I mean, I, I've said this before. We kind of owe the Christian conservatives an apology. Yeah, a little bit. Because they said, ah, this gay marriage, it's going to be a slippery slope. We're going to be allowing every kind of depravity after this. And we're like, would you stop it, Lithgow and Footloose? Enough with your horse shit. And then all of a sudden, you fast forward 20 years later, you're like, sweet Jesus, when will it stop? Fuck. You feel, you feel like, you know when you were a kid and you thought you were right about everything, you grew up and you started noticing that some of the things your parents used to say that you used to fight them about? We're actually right. Well, she did call a broken bottle a knife. That was, I thought, uh, over the line. I'll be honest. I think my grandma was racist. Mad Joe says, who is blocking my funny comments? That is my job. I don't see your comments blocked. Yeah. I don't, I don't see. I think you're good. I'm seeing Mad them on Joe. the screen. I think you're good, buddy. All right. So let's knock out that 275. The links are posted to the top of the page. Thank you, guys. Uh, we have a Republican congressman who might be some of your guys' favorite new congressman now. Oh, Jesus. But a lot of people feel he's a bit of a problem. Let's, uh, let's talk about this guy. His name's Representative Tim Wahlberg. 
He's a GOP congressman from Southern Michigan. And he has his own take on how to solve this uh, Israel-Palestine thing. Okay, what's his uh, Israel-Palestine solution? Well, first of all, I'll say it's nice that people have ideas ideas, and want to help out. I do like that. Uh, Co- uh, by the way, Coltrane with two bucks says, I'm sure the founders would love these people. Oh, yeah, the salt of the earth. They're uh, all wearing wigs. <laughs> 275 away from today after that. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and uh, throw some money in and keep this going. So this Tim Wahlberg was asked about Israel and Palestine, and this is what he had to say. A congressman from Michigan is facing backlash for statements he made at a recent town hall meeting where he appeared to suggest that nuclear bombs should be dropped on Gaza. Republican Tim Wahlberg made the comment. <sighs> Nuclear bombs. So we're talking about like going full MacArthur in the Korean War. Nukes. Like you want to, you want Israel to drop nuclear weapons on Gaza. You thought that we were in a security crisis for backing these guys up before? Wait until after they nuke someone and the entire world is against them. Right. I don't know if you know this or not, but um, uh, the whole like Gaza thing is kind of taking a turn where those people at this point haven't the ability to fight back and they're continually getting battered. So yeah. I don't know that you should suggest bombing the shit out of them. Well, let's see. It's on Monday after being asked a question about U.S. plans to build a floating pier off the coast of Gaza to help deliver humanitarian aid into the war-torn territory. Well, the Michigan congressman isn't seen on the video, but can be heard saying the U.S. should not be spending any money on humanitarian aid and then <laughs> seemed to advocate for bombing Gaza with nuclear bombs, such as the ones the U.S. dropped on Japan during World War II. See, my only problem with this is if he was indifferent, like just let's bomb the whole region and be done with it, like, yeah. then I could understand it. I'd be like, all right, I get that. I'm frustrated to that point. But uh, let's just bomb Gaza with nuclear bombs. You don't even need them. You don't need nuclear bombs. What hey, is yeah. that going to do? Have you seen what they're doing in Gaza, like how they're fighting? The people are drowning because they're jumping into water to rescue food. Yeah. I don't think you need nukes, dude. We want to note the video appears to have been distributed online by a person affiliated with the Democratic Advocacy Group. Here are the congressman's comments. We shouldn't be spending a dime on humanitarian aid. It, it should be like Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Get it over quick. Jesus. Get it over quick. Dude, this guy really loves Israel. Boy, his checks are going to clear this month, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, we ought to just let Israel nuke them. I've been saying this for a long time. Nobody wants to listen to me. Thank God for this Tim Wahlberg. <laughs> Love him. Love him. Yeah, I'm not for the United States sticking its neck out to nuke somebody that's not even a direct I'd like threat us to us. not to be involved in it at all. Yeah, that would be real nice. You know what? You know what's really fun? Picking up Israel's fucking mess and taking responsibility for the things they do to piss people off. Yeah, continually getting the shit kicked out of us because of another country. Yeah. Congressman Wahlberg's office released the transcript of the video in reaction to the distribution of that video. And Wahlberg also issued a statement insisting he wasn't advocating for using nuclear weapons, saying in part, quote, I used a metaphor to convey the need for both Israel and Ukraine to win their wars as swiftly as possible. And so the thing that came to your mind on that was Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which those are two places that we nuked. Again, sir, you're not helping. Yeah. You know how um, you, you, you let you kind of let someone go because you think they're smart, you know, like they're a representative, and you're like, oh, you know what? Just let him speak. His people shouldn't do that anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's, and then once again, another old person. I'm getting tired of seeing people. I think we should nuke this shit. You won't be here in 10 years. Fuck you. Right. That stuff lasts. You're not going to be in the next skyscraper that they crash a plane into because we got a little too... Uh, fucking medley. Quote. Uh, oh, was that it? GOP that civil end. war that brought down. Oh, that was the end of the whole thing. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's stu It was a dumb thing to say. It's it's fucking idiotic. 
We should we should nuke them. And you know, thank God Gaza doesn't have nukes, otherwise we'd call that uh escalation. Right. And I'm sure when we say things like, Yeah, we should just nuke them, people in Gaza and stuff, if that ever gets back to them, won't be like, you know what, maybe we should nuke them. Why don't we try and do that? It's what's gonna happen to us anyway. Oh boy. Guys, I tell you what, we are uh it's about eight o'clock. We are two seventy five. Away from today's goal. If you'd like to contribute, we could sure use it. We'd appreciate it. I uh, want to knock that goal out so we can just have a nice, fun show. Uh, we are way behind. Uh, starting to get to that point where I think maybe we should have taken the day off. But uh, prove me wrong. Go ahead and throw us a couple of bucks on Streamlabs, PayPal, Super Chats, memberships, etc. Uh, and uh, let's get that thing going down. Uh, this This audience is what we use to keep this show on the air, so... We do appreciate anything you can send us. Johnny, I'm going to leave you with them. I'm going to uh, pee really quick. Okay. And then uh, hopefully you guys would uh, throw a couple in and uh, kind of like you did last hour and get that back to a little more uh, reasonable figure, if you will. More with Johnny now. And then we've got, oh, coming up next, we've got, oh, yeah, Ukraine. Oh, fucking Ukraine. Oh, boy. We went from Israel to Ukraine. Uh, then we got a Florida official robbing old ladies of their money and spending it on really lavish vacations. And then a crash, dash cam of a, cash, a crash between a group of people and a Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver. Okay. Oh, he's in a little bit of trouble now. Uh-oh. He's in a wee bit of trouble. Uh, T. Gunn says, you guys need catheters. This is my first P. I'm two hours yeah, into the show. he went to get water before. I went to get water. Now I want to make one P, and I think that's going to be the uh, the only one for the day. That's it. So I'll be back in just a moment. Please start knocking that down, guys. I'm getting a little nervous. We appreciate it. 275 is the number. All right. So, uh, yes, we have 275 to knock out, and then he'll drink. I'm not drinking because I have to drive, but he'll drink, and that'll be funny for all of us. Uh, Aaron is taking as many breaks as Princess. No, 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 no. Aaron is, uh, again, this is the first break. This is not, the other break doesn't count um, because he was getting water. So it's all right when he does that. He gets water. That's not, that's not the same as a bathroom break. See, now he's giving water. There's a difference. Uh, that's why I'm, uh, yeah. So again, the whole thing with just, Oh, fuck. Why did I just space out? Now I'm having trouble. Um, yeah, the the whole thing with the holiday today, getting the show going and everything is always always difficult. So it's great that you guys are all here. Thank you for being here. And hopefully we'll knock out that goal and go tell. Plug your channel, Johnny, says Turk February. I plug my channel all the time. It's Just Kidding LLC on Twitch, YouTube, and Rumble. If you want to come check it out and hang out, cool. If not, you know, that's what you do. I'm uh, My show's more about letting the audience have more control. It gets frustrating at times. And uh, so, yeah, we're going live today. I don't have big expectations about people uh, tuning in and showing up today because, again, it's Easter Sunday aftermath. So I'm just kind of, for me, it's the holiday of half-off candy, and that's what I'm doing. Oh, is that today? They all go on sale? Yeah, dude. And some places, they go on sale the day before. Oh. Uh, Sean asking if my fairy arrived. Yes, my weed fairy. Your weed fairy. What's your weed fairy? My weed fairy is me uh, deciding that I will pay money to go buy weed because I stopped smoking weed for, like, you know, three, four days. So. Is that a long time to stop smoking weed? Not really, but when you're someone like me who smokes as much and as often as I do, then yeah, it can suck. I don't know about drugs. I'm an innocent. I know T. Gunn thinks I'm going to do coke in the bathroom. I don't know where people who don't like me got this. I, I, I keep saying it. Uh, like, the first round of lies, I guess the first year or two we did this, uh, didn't pan out, so now they got to try a new line of attack. The new line of attack is that I'm the coolest fucking guy who ever lived. <laughs> it, it's, it's such a, like, he's, it's... He's it, swinging and he's doing coke <laughs> in the bathroom, man. First of all, I have, I've done coke once in my life at my buddy's wedding. I was not a big fan. But I'll also tell you this. If I were to do it again, I wouldn't waste it. On a show? Like, if I, like at what is it? Eight o'clock in the morning... Going in the bathroom and going, oh, yeah. 
Oh, let's fuck. Oh, let's fucking go. Now let's go talk about politics. <laughs> oh, man, I can't believe I got to do this effing story about Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, man, let's fuck. Yeah, Keysart tells us Aaron can't even handle caffeine. Right. These two beers will put him in the bag. What did, if he did a line, he'd explode. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm like the cool, like in your guys' eyes, like if you don't like me, I'm the coolest fucking guy in the world. And the worst part is, is they hate you more for it. It's like, you hate a thing you made up in your mind. I'm not that guy. Yeah. They create a thing. He's swinging and doing coke. And I'm like, I'm really not. Like, Fuck you, you piece of shit for doing all that. And I'm like, hey, I, because I'm pretty boring. I'm excited to go see my buddy who owns an e cig shop today. That's if gonna, I drink two beers, I might need to take a nap. Holy Lord. Yeah. I'm going to fill out some uh, paperwork for Johnny. And then I got to decide, do I go see my friend or do I go take a nap? I don't know <laughs> which, which way does the wind blow? I'm not really <laughs> sure. I got to find out how much we're going to miss our goal by today. I mean, if anyone you want to accuse of taking, like, you know, doing lines or stuff in the bathroom, it makes sense for me. I need the energy. It would help my body move, but I can't afford that shit. So, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know where they get the you're doing blow in the bathroom. Well, it's all the pussy I'm getting. Yeah, but then, what? like, so wait a minute. You're doing blow in the bathroom, but every time I go in the bathroom, I'm not. I wouldn't leave the bathroom. I'd be looking for blow. Be like, right. I know it's here somewhere. You'd be like, where does he hide this where shit? Where is he stashing this stuff? Unbelievable. It's in the ceiling tiles, um, isn't it? Yeah, like, Riketa was telling me, too, like, in his chat now, it's like, what are you and him all doing, just fucking all the time and doing drugs? And he's like, hey, no, we show each other John Carpenter movies we like. <laughs> I showed him Red State the other day. How did he like Red State? I don't know, I fell asleep in a chair. <laughs> it's because I was tired from all the blow and the All sex. the blow and the fucking, yeah. I just yeah. passed out in a pile of white powder and dried cum. <laughs> Hill of Bean says, Coke swinger, Aaron, I knew you were a gangster. Right, buddy? <laughs> God, I wish we could. I'm going to start, like, live streaming. I, I mean, I wouldn't because it's fucking gay to do that. But I'm going to live stream my hangouts with my streamer friend. And you guys can see just how fucking rad we are. Hey, man, you want to watch a movie today? Yeah, yeah. sure, dude. What do you... Uh... What do you want to watch? Oh, man, you can watch Big Trouble in Little China. That's a good one. All right, Nick, let's watch it. You're not going to fall asleep a quarter of the way in sitting in that chair, right? Nah, no, we'll be good. Definitely will. <laughs> fucking. Is I, the chair too comfy? What I, you? No, I, yes, I'm old. I'm the opposite of a guy fucking and doing coke all the time. I'm just an old guy who falls asleep watching a movie with my fucking gay friend. Oh, last time we were there, I bought him a, I bought him a cigar because I'm a cigar guy. And I'm like, here, you'll like this one. It's a little milder. And I bought my Rocky Patel. It was a rocky day. Uh. And we smoked them and we stopped smoking them about three quarters of the way through because, and I quote, ooh, these are really starting to hit me. <laughs> so yes, crazy Coke swinger us. We're like, I have to put out this tobacco cigar. I got to slow down. I've almost gotten all the way through this. I'm Ugh. starting to feel it. Starting to feel a little lightheaded with this uh, tobacco stick that we've got here. Now, if you'll excuse me, we've got to go do crank and fuck each other. <laughs> Again, I know you guys want me to be more exciting than I am. It's almost disappointing. I know I can't live up to your expectations. <laughs> I really... <laughs> I sometimes feel like I should buy a hooker or something. <laughs> I didn't want to, honey. I had to. I got to keep up appearances. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm disappointing so many people, and it's really starting to catch up to me. Uh, Coltrane with five bucks says, here's a few pennies. Thank you, Coltrane, for the five bucks. That is awesome. Thank you. That is very nice. Uh, we need everybody to start chipping in a little today. That would be awesome. Uh, we are 270 away from today's goal. We are a ways away. We're uh, halfway through the show. And uh, we've made about uh, 80 bucks so far today. Uh, Mad Joe says, remember when Nick was covering the Johnny Depp trial? Yeah, that... I wish I would have done that. That would have been a good idea. That would have been a great fucking idea. 
Yeah, I listened to him talk about like when he had the Rittenhouse trial and when he had the uh, Johnny Depp trial. I'm like, hey, that's cool. Um, you ever listen to morning radio in St. Cloud, Minnesota? <laughs> You ever just talk about the news and, like, fuck around and do weird impressions and shit? No. Yeah. I mean, you ever you ever do shit like that? I mean, that, that's kind of fun, right? It's like, yeah. Or I just watch a trial and have tens of thousands of people watch me and pay me ungodly amounts of money. And you're like, yeah, I mean, that's all well and good if you're a fag, but... <laughs> you ever make a bunch of jokes about, uh, like, turtle wax? <laughs> no. Uh, Coltrane says, it'd be my 40th birthday next Thursday. If I make it to then, I'll donate $40. Wow, that's very cool. Everyone donate their age so I don't feel like a failure today. Uh, off we go. Back again, talking about Ukraine. You know, I didn't know because I stopped giving a shit a long time ago. But Ukraine wants more money? Apparently they want more money. Apparently Ukraine is, uh, they're fighting that war. With Russia, that war where we see all the destruction, you know, we see mm -hmm. all the bombing, we see all the broken buildings, we see all the dead bodies everywhere. You ever see that war? I I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, what video source you want. I because I haven't I haven't seen that. I keep hearing that it's a tense battle and it's always. Well, I, I assume because it's a war, we've been seeing all kinds of war footage and you know the the humanitarian toll. It's weird, actually. Now that I think about it. No, like, I mean, I remember there was the thing with, like, the dam, like, the hydroelectric dam or whatever, and there was some flooding and stuff. Other than that, I, yeah. Huh. It's very strange. It's weird. It's almost like that Wag the Dog movie where it seems like the whole thing could be fucking fake, and we've been getting fooled this whole time. You're saying we're being gaslit by this Ukraine-Russia war. Feels like it. A little bit, because I've never seen a country need so much money for war that I never see any evidence of or receipts from or anything else. It's uh, incredible. But let's listen to this guy. GOP Representative Mike Lawler says, we're going to get a vote soon on Ukraine funding. Now, the only good thing about the Republicans is that they're actually fighting each other on whether or not they want to fund this thing. There's a lot of, like, America First Republicans who are like, fuck this, it's retarded. You know, we didn't come here to fight for them. You know, we, di we, we didn't want to keep throwing our taxpayer money after basically a bribe that Joe Biden made. Yeah. But, alas, they're going to have a vote in the Senate, in the House. They're going to try and get more Ukraine funding passed, which, you know. Once uh, again, like Israel, can we just back the fuck out of it and leave? Right, just be done with it for good. Here's the... Uh, uh, let's start with Ukraine. The Thank speaker you. says he is determined to find a path forward. Uh, he is under intense pressure from the far right. You have been calling for him to allow a vote for weeks now. Has he given you any commitment that this vote will happen when the House returns from recess? Uh, I believe there will be a vote when we get back uh, from the Easter recess. Uh, certainly, uh, this is critically important uh, for our allies. Uh, we oh, are the no, it is fuck with our allies. Jesus Christ. If you have allies, then fight the fucking war with them. Send troops. Do your thing. You know, be an ally. I'm tired of us sending money. Why isn't our military going over? Right. Why are we sending only financial aid? We can't send anything like people or, or actual forces to do something. Why don't we just take possession of Ukraine and do like we did with Afghanistan and Iraq and everything? Well, more importantly, Iraq. We'll just kind of take possession of it and kind of run it while we wage our war. Uh, and then when we're done, we'll go. Here's a novel concept. You want to try this one? How about we say, who gives a fuck? It's fucking Ukraine, and we just let the chips fall where they may. We started the war anyway. We're the ones who pushed... And pushed and pushed and went to Russia. Ah, fuck you. We're going to keep moving NATO closer to your borders. And like, hey, that's remarkably unnecessary. We're not the Soviet Union anymore. Oh, yeah, suck my dick, bitch. Here we are. We're coming to Ukraine. And they're like, you do that. I'm going to invade them. Ah, fuck you. What are you going to do? All right, we're invading Ukraine. Hey, why is Russia being such an aggressor? All we did was instigate a war and dare them to attack. And then they attacked. That's like waving a toddler in front of a pit bull and covering him in another toddler's blood and going, don't eat it. 
don't eat it. And then bopping him on the nose with the baby once or twice. Once he gets that blood in his nose, he can't turn back. Yeah. Once he gets the scent in his nostrils, he's off to the races. All right, let's see what this... Fuck, I think he's a pro-Ukraine guy. Like, all the establishment Republicans are like, yeah, we love giving money to people to fight wars for us because those Republicans are paid off by the contractors and everybody else. But now you got some of these radical Republicans who are like, no, fuck that. No more money for the contractors. In fact, bring all our troops home. And we're like, whoa, whoa, bro, bro, one at a time. Let's let's try to not spend any more money in Ukraine. Then we can work on all the I'd literally like to not spend any more money on the military for a little bit. They've gotten a lot. Can we kind of slow it down? I mean, it's not like our military's hurting. And they seem to lose a lot of the money they get anyway. Oh, boy, do they. So, I mean, I feel like maybe we just shouldn't be trusting them with it. Isn't there something like a Pentagon audit showed they haven't like they haven't had balanced books in like six years? Something like that. God bless. Leader of the free world. And we cannot uh, shirk on our responsibility uh, to to uphold uh, and defend democracies across the globe. It's why. I How about here? How about we practice democracy here? How about, as George Carlin said, even in a fake democracy, the people ought to get what they want once in a while. Right? How about we fix a few things at home? We don't want to fight for Israel. We don't want to fight for Ukraine. We don't want you giving them our money. We don't want to be $34 trillion in debt. We don't want our gas prices to be over 3 bucks. We don't want our groceries to go insane. Uh, we should def But we should definitely get a vote on Ukraine because, you know... These kind of things deserve an up or down vote. You know, we should have priorities in this country. I agree. And you fucking globalist, cuntbag, military industrial complex shilling dick fucks you should rearrange your fucking priorities. Because if you're sitting there telling me that we need a vote on giving Ukraine more fucking money and people are filling up for three thirty a gallon, you can suck my dick. Broker a peace between these two countries where Russia gets a little territory because we overstepped and Russia got it. And then, uh, you know, Ukraine gets told, hey, how about we clean up the corruption, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They'll have enough of our money sitting in their pockets if we stop them right now. Yeah. It, it, and by the way, if you think that all of our aid money has gone to buy weapons, you're a fucking idiot. These guys are lining their wretched little pockets with it. And none of us want this stuff going on. Plenty of us, like myself included, having trouble paying bills or getting stuff done. I'm tired of hearing how we have to help Ukraine. Like, a lot of people here are suffering. Can we, again, I, I fucking hate, I don't like Donald Trump. I, can we make America great again, please? Yeah. For fuck's sake. Dude, our southern border just crawling with people we can't keep track of. Oh, God, did you see how they turned the uh, the Baltimore Bridge thing into a sad story about American immigrants and how they're mistreated? Really? Yeah, because um, six, uh, you know how there's like six people that died or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, apparently uh, those six people were uh, were day laborers and uh, uh, three or four, or all of them were immigrants. I don't know if they were illegal immigrants. That's the part we don't talk about is where their immigration status was. Well, then they're was. probably illegal. Well, they've been here talking. for like 10 years and stuff. Well, either way... The point is, uh, what is it? Mexico's president said the Baltimore situation showed the uh, the disparity and the mistreatment that oh, migrants get in America. That's the other fucking thing. Is fucking Mexico sends these people to us and then shits on us for how we treat them. Then keep them. Yeah. Oh, they don't want that. Too many mouths to feed. And also, uh, if these if these uh, immigrants were such great people, that's awesome. But uh, that doesn't mean that every single immigrant that comes here is just a good person looking for a job. We shouldn't have right. an open border. It's just, oh, God, you're right. Now I'm getting mad. Yeah, and he's like, oh, this needs to be a priority. He said that. He goes, this needs to be a priority, voting on more money for Ukraine. No, no money to Ukraine. Yeah, suck my dick. It doesn't need to be a priority at all. Put it on the back burner until your fucking ass falls off. I don't care. Enough already. I uh, introduced, along with Brian Fitzpatrick and Jared Golden, uh, the Defending Borders, Defending Democracies Act, which would Ugh. provide lethal aid to Ukraine, to Israel, uh, to aid. Taiwan, uh, as well as uh, enact uh, serious border provisions, including... So they just want to just keep loading these places up with money. First of all, Israel's the aggressor in their war. Israel, they did get it. There was a terrorist attack, but they're on the offensive now. Like, they're getting after that. Ukraine, yes, they're fighting a defensive war. 
But Taiwan, there's not even a war yet. And I got news for you. No matter how much money we sink into defending Taiwan, if China decides they want it one day, they're going to get it. It's literally on their doorstep. Yeah. So please, spare me what's a priority. Spare me what we need to do. And fuck Ukraine. I don't care. You've given them enough. Let them live with what they have. Including remain in Mexico in Title 42. Uh, and we are pushing for a vote. I have signed a discharge petition uh, to allow for that vote. Uh, but I am hopeful that the Speaker will put the bill on the floor uh, or an amended version of the bill on the floor uh, so that we can once and for all uh, ensure that our allies have the aid and support that they need. By the way, this guy's a charisma vacuum. He's putting me to sleep. Yeah. You, Holy dude, shit. Warmth of a snow pea. But also uh, the aid that they need. No, they don't need aid. We don't need to aid them. Like this is again the some. I hate how people state this. Like, oh, this is an empirical fact. We all know that they need this aid. No, no, no. You're saying that, right? We didn't say that. Uh, Yule Gibbons with ten bucks says, "Shout out Derek from Midland Armory for helping me with my order and following up with me on when it will be shipped. They're great to work with. Absolutely, Derek from Midland Armory is great. Uh, T Gun with five bucks. Los Federales with two says we should consolidate wars and call it Jew Crane." <laughs> Uh, Shay says, Aaron, when are you going to react to wrestling otaku again? I don't know. It's not something I plan on doing. When does wrestling otaku do something interesting? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't mind. I, it's not, not a priority. How about that? Uh, 255 away from today's goal. Uh, keep knocking away at it, guys. We'd really like to get to zero today and start off the, uh, the week after the holiday on a high note, but we are bone dry over on, uh, PayPal, Venmo, all of that stuff. And we are still 255 away from knocking it out today. Uh, Coltrane says it's the same fucking bill they declined a few weeks back. Yeah, right. and a few weeks back, they pushed it as a uh, American defense bill. I hate how we can put names on bills and just stick stuff in them. Right. Like, I feel like that should not be allowed. Like, no, no, no. This is what the bill's about. So if it's not about that, it's not in the bill. That's That should be very, very simple. Yeah, I, I mean, it, yeah, Scarface has a great point. He says, uh, we don't have any signed treaties with Israel and Ukraine. Well, Israel doesn't want to want to be on contract. They wouldn't. They understand how, how damning those contracts can be and how people could use them to, you know, take advantage of people. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a terrible thing. I would never recommend that. But if you want to join the movie industry, just. <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. Uh, Mad Joe says, just remember, Aaron, you may be broke, but you're still great. Thanks, buddy. That makes me feel really good. 255 away. Let's knock that out. Uh, Roots Calhoun says, maybe you'd get some dough if you shaved that shit off your face. I'm about to. Are you having trouble with the with the facial fuzz? No, I don't mind it. It's oh. just that. If it, if it gets the money in. Yeah. People aren't giving money because my face looks like shit. I'm drinking a beer, by the way. I'm just, you don't. Yeah, you have my permission. Thank you for asking. Appreciate it. Would you like one? Shit, fuck, why not? It's a McGolden. I don't have any golds. I thought I had golds in the fridge. So I have to drink April's shit. It's not bad. I don't mind McGolden. I didn't uh, realize I was drinking April's beer before I took it. Now I feel bad. I, just, <laughs> I don't want fop. God damn it. I'm a, a dapper, dapper Dan, Dan man. man. Every time I don't have my Minnesota gold. All right, so there you go, guys. 255 is the number. If you could help out, make it a little bit more fun show uh, the day after a holiday and whatnot. Uh, thank you, guys. PayPal, Venmo, best ways to do it. Otherwise, Super Chats, memberships, etc. Let's get it done. <laughs> I want to talk about this Regina Hill. I keep... I keep uh, not being able to keep straight my corrupt black local politicians. <laughs> I know this sounds terrible, and I'm not saying they all look alike, but they all tend to be women of a certain age, and they all just tend to be ruthlessly corrupt. Like uh, that woman in, what is it, Illinois? Yeah. That mayor in Illinois who just gets paid like three different salaries from jobs she shows up at once a week, and then... Takes a bunch of trips and charges it to the city and uses the police force as their own private entourage and escort. Right. Put a uh, put a poison pill into the job so that way if they put someone else in other than her, the person takes like a 90% pay cut. 
That is that is the worst, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is that she goes, all right, if somebody beats me, they have to do the job for like 40 grand a year. If I win, I get to do it for 225,000. <laughs> and she, you know what I like about her? Is that she just does it openly. I like that she's openly a piece of shit. But she won't admit she's a piece of shit. When they call her out on it, she's like, oh, you're coming at me because I'm black and I'm a woman and haters and whatever. Yeah. Like, I would have a little bit more appreciation. Yeah, these white people are crooked as hell. I'm going to get mine. Like, then I'll be like, all right, you know what? Fuck it. You got a point. Does anyone know the Illinois woman I'm talking about? Oh, fuck no, but I can look it up. Uh, oh, it drops to 25000 a year if she's voted out. Okay, thank you, King Yeti. I can't remember her name. I'd like to give people a refresher on her before we get to this Florida politician. Apparently, there's a politician in Florida. She just took money from a 96-year-old and spent it on shit. And I'm talking like a hundred grand. Uh, Tiffany Hayner. I think that's it. That's her name. Here we go. Tiffany. Tiffany yep. Henyard. Tiffany Henyard. Dalton Tiffany Mayor Henyard Tiffany Henyard. Uh, so yeah, throw in a couple of bucks. Let's knock it out. Let's call it a win. Corrupt mayor's goons back at it again. Cops claim journalist is creating a disturbance. Tiffany Haynard and henchman Keith Price. I want to find some of the, uh, uh, oh, supervisor Tiffany Henyard accuses Zacharelli. White is right. Oh, we got some. Racial shit going on. Here we go. This is from a month ago. The mayor of Dalton, Illinois. Tiffany Henry. Oh, God, she's got... Holy shit, there's been a lot of news about her in just the last month. Yeah, she's been... She's been kind of, like... People are coming at... This is the problem with um, what... Um, I remember I told... Go ahead. I, I don't want to say... Uh, Fox 32... I don't want to say it's because of Breaking. her gender or any other personal attribute, but this is what happens when we'll just say certain people decide to start doing the whole, I'm going to be a corrupt politician like all the other people. Like, you forget how they do it subtly, and then they slide it under the wire. Like, I'm just going to take everything. Ain't nothing yeah. going to happen. And it's like, um, 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 no, when you do it out in the open, they, they come get you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be consequences. I'm sorry. Uh, by the way, somebody in the chat... Uh, Hobo Chili says, is her name Ooga Booga Jones? No, that would be wrong. Oh, my. where would you get that? Hobo, it is incorrect to call her Ooga Booga Jones. That as that is sound like Tiffany. It's No, it doesn't. And I think he was probably thinking of somebody else. As her name is not, indeed, Ooga Booga Jones. I don't know who you could be thinking of that you screwed that up so badly. Uh, Aaron, question, why do black people talk like they do, says Don Lemon's AIDS. How long you got? <laughs> well, you see, back in the slave days, they used to take the big black and breed them with their big woman, oh, and then you would have a big black kid. <laughs> Jerry Lahane says, cigars killing your voice? Doesn't seem like it. Your voice sounds fine. No, I think, uh... Yeah, <laughs> Jerry Lahane in the chat says, Don, glad you asked. There's a lot of people very happy to answer Don Lemon's AIDS question. <sighs> Except Don Lemon. Yeah. Especially Don Lemon's question of, when am I going to work next? Well, he screwed that up. Yeah. 255 away from today's goal. Please throw us some money, guys. We would appreciate it. We're having a tough start to the week here. Uh, let's do these Tiffany Henyard stories and see where our girl from Illinois has, uh, has been ending How's she up. doing? Yeah. I told everybody when I first became supervisor here that the previous administration and some of them sitting in the crowd was still. Did they want to write that story? No, they did not. Because white is right. Y'all wanted to keep that on hush, but uh -huh. nobody would say nothing. But I did. But nobody in the media would say anything. And I hope you're recording this uh, last journal. Put it in your paper. <laughs> I like her. She's like, ah, oh, but white is right. So she's being kind of shitty. She's being racist, yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, but white is right. And then she points right at the camera and she goes, and I hope you're filming this, yeah, filming this Lansing Journal so I see this in the paper. Tiffany doesn't give a shit if she says anything offensive. She just wants to see your name quoted. That's all. I'm still telling that story. So now that I created a um, Tiffany on the Move podcast to tell my story, since don't nobody want to pick it up, and I'm being attacked by the media left or right, I am telling y'all my story. And truth will be heard on the podcast because no one wants the truth to come out of what they did before me. 
But while I took office, when I took office, we done a great job. We have got allocated over $15 million, but nobody wrote about that, right? No. I love that this white guy is just staring down at his papers the whole time she's talking, and he's just like, don't say anything mean about the black woman. Just let the black woman keep talking. She'll be fine. We'll, um, I'll just doodle and look busy. Um, FBI, please hurry up. <laughs> Investigate this fucking bitch. Because have you ever been, like, to a small town city council meeting or, like, a a county commissioner's meeting, they're just trying to rip through that shit as quick as possible and they get done. They don't want to be there. No. And so when this woman's like, let me, and let me tell y'all something else about white people, they're like, oh, shit. Could we just approve, like, rezoning that thing that's going to be that kid's splash pad from residential to commercial so that... No? Okay, fuck. Nobody else went and got that more, more money than me. Let me tell you something about the racial supremacy of splash pads. Black folk hair don't... Oh, shit. Here we go. In the board here, we well, got $1 million to, to help pets. the at-risk youth. If we put them all pool. back to work. We also gave out 80 scholarships. I was I playing. I was playing why that. Splash pads exist so much in parks and inner cities. I was. I was playing that so only I could hear what you said. But would you like to repeat the joke? I. I, I of course, they need to use splash pads, because what? otherwise they'd have to use a pool. I don't understand what he means by that. Well, you know. Oh, bodies are long. Ships up to twenty five hundred dollars. People have graduated and got jobs, and we'll be working here at the township when they get out of school. But no one's telling you all the good things we do. Everybody want to make it like we're bad when they were bad. They were the one that had it before me and did nothing with. It. Why was the number so low? Why wasn't they feeding people in the food pantry? But they were spending the money out of the food pantry, but wasn't feeding the people, right? But these all the facts and things that I'm gonna put out there just to lay the groundwork so people can know what to look for. Do not follow people because they so negative. Because misery need company. That's what they need. So don't have. Hey, Kevin Wait, Brennan, plug. Nice job. There you go. I, I don't. I don't get it. So what you're saying is. You're not saying you're not being corrupt and you're not stealing. You're saying Whitey did it first, so it's okay for you. That does seem to be what she's saying. Like, oh, they spent money out the pantry. They didn't. Yeah, that's bad. Again, this just because is... what they did was wrong doesn't make it right for you. Right. What you did, I, I don't know if you know this, also really shitty and bad. <laughs> she just goes, she goes, she goes, Hey, uh, you know, back before I got here, they were stealing money and they were putting it here, here, and here. It's like, yeah, yeah, that was bad. They got criticized for that. Uh, you're doing that times a million and getting investigated by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Also, wasn't that one of the reasons we were supposed to vote for you is because they were doing that stuff and you were going to be better? Um, isn't that the, how that works? That's true. That is why... Oh, man, that is why they put her in there. And boy, did she help herself a whole big bunch. All right, so now, uh, about a month ago, we found out that... Do so that was her as a county supervisor. Right. This is her in her role as mayor of Dalton, Illinois, where, like Johnny said, she brings the cops as, like, her posse wherever she goes. And they're paid overtime to do this. Yes. She which is paid by the people of the city. Yes. Two has information indicating the FBI has launched an investigation into controversial Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. Dane Placco has been following allegations of her misspending and joins us now with an update. Dane. Wait, wait, wait. Misspending is where you went, oh, I meant to spend this money on X and I spent it on Y. Oh, I misspent. I only meant to spend $125, <laughs> not $150. I misspend. She she doesn't misspend. She just doesn't give a fuck. It's called stealing. Yeah, she just steals from the city and steals from the county. I wanted my nails to look on fleek, yo, for the officer man who's going to be walking me around. Mm? I need to travel everywhere with a posse so I look badass, yo. Reporting for nearly two years on allegations of corruption surrounding Henyard in her capacity as Dalton Mayor and Thornton Township uh, Supervisor. And now we've learned from multiple sources that federal agents are in fact interviewing witnesses as part of a possible investigation that may or may not result in charges. Well, you can kind of tell by the way they're reporting that they want charges. They want charges, but they know that they're probably not going to get them.
I love that her defense. It is kind of a cool defense, though. She's like, white is right, y'all. The white folk come in here and start taking money out of here. Nobody give a shit, but I do it. Yeah, it's not necessarily white or black. It's that you won't shut the fuck up about how you're doing it. Like, you do it out in the open. Nobody gives a shit about the pantry funds at their local county level. So if you just take a little out and don't tell anybody, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to care. But if you do shit like parade around in the street with cops and, you know, talk about how much money you make and shit like that, you're going to draw attention to yourself. Look, look. All right. All right. We made it. We made a school. Now, just don't spend any of it. Nothing flash. Nothing fly. No new cars. None of that shit. Like nobody told her the rules. Did you not hear what I said? I said, don't buy anything. You take that back right now. Did the FBI agents you talked to seem serious about yes, your, very serious. your concerns? Very, very serious. Very. Uh, Lawrence Gardner owns a U-Haul rental and trucking business in South... Quit bragging. ...suburban Dalton and says he went to the FBI several months ago, frustrated that the village of Dalton would not renew his business license. Gardner says he's been harassed in his... Oh, no. So he has a business, he needs to renew his license, and she's being a bitch because he doesn't like her. And he doesn't support her. Oh, that's highly no-no. Oh, that is a big-time problem. So she's fucking with his business and holding up his business extension license because he's critical of her. Wow, what a bitch. His business raided and shut down by Dalton police, he believes because he refused to make a donation to a civic event sponsored by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. And I talked to... Oh my God. Do you guys not get it? It's not like the white people do this stuff all like covert and subtle and, and you know, talk to you with a smile and stuff because they like to. It's because that's the only way it works. You can't just come in and go, no, nah, fuck you. You don't support me. I'm a radio ass. Like it doesn't, it doesn't right. work that way. Not only will they not renew this guy's business license, but they shut him down and raided his business. You know, for all the wow. drugs that you haul handles. <laughs> yeah. Um, a couple of ages, and I explained them what was going on. I gave them all my paperwork to show them what was happening in court and what was happening in Dalton. And they told me they was investigating and they would be in touch with me. Gardner is one of six people who confirmed to Fox 32 that they've been... They actually say they're investigating. They say they're investigating. But, but you, know what I, you know what I heard from Tiffany Henyard? What's that? She feels they're simply play-a-hating. They're play-a-hating? Yeah, and not investigating. And she says that's the point she's illustrating. Is that their player hating? That's, yeah, the player hating. You guys can say, decide if there's any hateration or holleration in this dancery. Hey, if they're not going to hit the fucking goal, I'll, yeah, do Mary J. Fun with I'll do Mary J. Blige jokes all fucking day. I'll do shitty puns. I gave, I gave a shit for the first two and a half hours. I tried really hard to give you content. Now you're getting this been interviewed by the FBI, ranging from Dalton business owners to a former village employee and at least one public official. And we've learned the FBI has been using electronic surveillance as part of its investigation. Agents are asking questions. Look at her. So these, look at this. She walks around with bottles of water and goes to people's houses and just hands them out and talks to them. Not as like an honorable, like, look at me, I'm a woman of the people. She takes city funds and buys all this shit. Then you see all those guys walking with her? Police officers. You can notice the badge yeah. on one of them back there. Yeah, off-duty police officers who walk with her as basically her bodyguards, claiming overtime and costing the uh, city a fortune. And she just walks around like that with a giant entourage. And those police really have a problem with getting that money to just walk around in a biggie shirt and go, hey, we're holding it out water because Tiffany's a good person. Right. Yeah, an elected official is not, it doesn't look good when you come in and you give shit to people door to door and then say, oh, by the way, I'm running for re-election. That's kind of shitty. Oh, and if you didn't know for it, the water I'm giving you is totally free. You already paid for it. <laughs> ...about Henyard's alleged use of taxpayer dollars and resources, including massive spending on out-of-town trips, hundreds of thousands of dollars in police overtime for her personal oh. security detail, using public employees and tax dollars for personal benefit, and holding up licenses to certain businesses like this Dalton restaurant. 
I've heard rumors that say, hey, I'm on the wrong team. Dwayne Wood has been trying to renew the business license for his restaurant for nearly a year. While he has oh. not talked to the FBI, he believes he can't get approved because he's provided catering to several Dalton trustees who are engaged in a political fight with Henyard. I so he catered, he took work with people who don't like Tiffany Henyard, so she's holding up his business this license. This is all, like, no offense, um, uh, Whitey ain't stupid enough to pull this shit. No, she is way out over her skis. Dude, this chick needs to go to jail. No, she needs to be punished more than that, man. <laughs> It's time to bring back tar and feathering. Let's bring back town square punishment. Ride her, her out of town stocks. on a rail. Oh, don't. I'm sure some people would like to ride her out of town. But my point is, I'm saying let's just, you know, throw her in the stockades, pelt her with all, uh, with rotten tomatoes. <laughs> I think I've been just targeted because of my association affiliation with a certain group of people. You know, I had oh, the trustees. I've, I, I've cooked for the trustees. And you know what's really funny fight. about this? Yeah, but it's got to feel good that it's not because you're black this time. Right? I was just about to say, oh, it's got to really suck that you can't just go right to that old chestnut of, I really feel like they're just doing this to me because I'm black and they hate black people. Uh, the lady in the questions, about, oh, I forgot. That's right. That's, uh, you know, when you are when you lean on something a lot. Yeah. Uh, Von Kaiser says, we've earned Mary J. Blige jokes. Yeah, I think so. I think you got you guys have earned Mary J. Blige jokes today. That's for sure. Uh, anything coming in so we can knock down that two fifty? Oh, hold on. We'll see if we got any thank yous coming. Maybe, maybe not, guys. If you'd like to uh, contribute to the show, please do. We're two fifty five away from today. Uh, hey, thank you very much, Eric. Twenty bucks. That is awesome. Thank coming you coming in for Eric. Thank you for breaking the dry spell, buddy. Two thirty five. Breathing life into this thing. Let's do it, guys. We can hit that goal. Let's knock it out. We'll do 30 minutes of overtime. Uh, the show will be, you know, uh, in the black. It would be nice. Johnny Castile says, hey, I'm mailing $20 in quarters. I'm at the post office right now. Shut up, bitch. Quit acting like we won't take them. It doesn't count till they get here, motherfucker. That's right. Uh I'm 57 years old, recently retired, binge-watching all your videos, old to new, digging the show. We'll see if I stick around. Keep up the great work listening to you two. Aaron and Johnny makes me think of Ron and Fez. Well, wow. that's a compliment. Oh, my God. Thank you, Ken. That's very nice. Uh, 57 bucks. That is incredibly generous. Thank you. That is really nice, buddy. Thank you. So we'll knock, uh, we'll knock 55 off of there. Now I have to do math oh there he is there's ken right there in the chat saying the same thing now i have to do math that's 180 hey there we go now we're right in the middle of it guys now we're right there let's get to 100 by nine o'clock just uh wow thank you roots calhoun says that guy is lying to you uh thank you roots it's always nice to uh <laughs> it's always nice to get that reality check Hey, man, there's a little late rally. Appreciate it. Everybody start rallying now and get us to 100 by 9 o'clock. That would be really cool. Uh, let's continue. Are you? I love this woman. Yeah. I, I want to continue. She's hilarious. With Tiffany Henyard. So now in this story, she's being investigated by the FBI because she's basically taking people who, like, don't even hate her. The guy who owns the barbecue place just made food. He just wanted to fucking sell some goddamn food. I don't know if you know this or not, Tiffany, but he has a job to do. He's a barbecue guy. He made barbecue for the trustees, and she's like, fuck this guy. I will bury him. <laughs> Democrats eat wings too, bitch. God damn this woman. Filed by a Dalton towing company, the owner alleges their business license has been held up because, quote, George's towing's refusal to support or contribute to Henyard's political campaign. <laughs> You're literally Dude. blackmailing people oh, yeah, I mean, with easy, their business easy. license. Easy on blackmail. I mean, well, okay, you're blackmailing black males. <laughs> you are blackmailing black, black males. males. Jeez, poor George, poor the guy with the barbecue business, the guy with the U Haul business. Holy fuck. And, hey, dude. Like, these aren't even people who are actively trying to stop her. They don't even hate her. They're just like, oh, yeah, I didn't want to support her campaign. Maybe they didn't have any fucking money. It'd be right. one thing if they were, like, actively funding your uh, your your political rivals right. and they were fiercely, staunchly. These are literally people like, oh, no, sorry, man, I don't got five bucks. Oh, well, you ain't opening your business anymore. 
Hey, I made burnt ends for a group of people who think you're corrupt. Hey, whoa. hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Burnt ends. Oh, sorry. Whoa. <laughs> of all the barbecue things I could have picked. Yeah. I went with burnt ends. Yeah. Weird. I went with wings. That's, that's what they're going to call her career when this is all over. A burnt end. Oh, boy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. So she went, hey, will you give me like 50 bucks for my campaign? He's like, no. She's like, oh, cool. You fuck your business then. Yeah, I guess you're not towing anybody's car Jesus anymore. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, it's so petty. So best of all, not only is this lady doing this, because again, as she said earlier, whitey, it's okay when it's white people. White is right. But when I do it, it's a problem. Dude, at least white people hide it. Yeah. And again, white people aren't going to appreciate that you're supplying their uh, political adversaries with food, but they're not going to hold up your business license. Right. They'll pass it, and then they'll be like, hey, how about you supply me with food? I get you on my team. Right. And if that doesn't happen, then they'll start fucking with you. In a statement, Dalton trustee Jason House reacted to the news of the FBI's involvement. We welcome any investigation that will bring transparency on how taxpayer dollars are being spent. Our residents deserve this level of financial transparency. In other words, he really would like to see this bitch taken care of. <laughs> but he doesn't want to say anything because she's got a vindictive side. Yeah, he's got a business license coming up for renewal, so he's going to shut the fuck up. Uh, Ms. Hain, uh, uh, Ms. Hain Henyard, uh, we found that 97% of your contributions were from business owners who had license renewals that year. Turns out that every time a business is getting up for renewal, you get a new supporter. Weird. <laughs> we reached out to the FBI, which said it is policy for the agency not to comment on the nature, existence, or non-existence of any investigation that may be occurring. A public relations firm responded on behalf of the mayor saying... Ah, she hired a PR firm. God, this woman is shameless. Dalton's got to love that. You guys paid yeah. for that, too. I'm sure that was... Yeah, I was just going to say, who do you think paid for that one? Oh, my God, she is the worst. She makes Al Sharpton look like Mother Teresa. This woman is fucking evil. Neither Henyard or the village of Dalton have received any subpoenas or been contacted by the FBI or any other law enforcement agency. Oh, wow. We ha Hold on. I have another one. Oh, this is interesting. But you want to tell you about the Illinois Attorney General's office now ordering a charity run uh, by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard to stop soliciting donations. <laughs> started a charity and you've been pilfering that too so now they're telling you to stop asking people for money for your charity this woman i think i love her she is so shamelessly evil and corrupt she's just actively just stealing money and fucking with people sorry april apparently uh apparently he's he's developed a taste for chocolate it's over oh my god you know the you know they say the blacker the berry the sweeter the juice. Oh Jesus! The blacker the berry. She's <laughs> no no. Please continue. The blacker the berry. She acts like the juice. Oh. oh, I'm weirded out that she kind of like from the nose up looks like my sister Jennifer, and I'm just like, oh, this is weird. If she had a tan. <laughs> the charity called Tiffany Henry Cares failed to register with the. Of course her charity has her own fucking name in the title. Jesus Christ. That would be like if a guy named Frank Wilson started um, uh, Make-A-Wish, and it was, it was called Frank Wilson Helps Dying Kids Get Stuff. Tiffany Henyard cares about her bank account, and she's yes. loading the fuck out of it through this thing. Hey, look, it's an outstretched hand. It's just her asking for money. <laughs> The Attorney General's office will disclose how much money it raised and how the money is being spent. Fox 32 first raised questions about her charity. She's fucking ridiculous. Again, she's one of these people that believes the, I don't know, the stereotype or the, the bullshit that certain people sling all the time. Why people just take everything and they just steal everything and nobody cares. It's just like, okay, that certainly does happen with corrupt people all the time. But uh, uh, but how are they doing? Oh, they just take stuff. If I get in charge, I'm just going to take stuff. Jesus Christ. I wrote a message for Johnny while he was in the middle of his rant. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was talking about. But look about. at the way she's dancing, the way her lips are in that You're not frame. wrong, but still. <laughs> 
I didn't need to put that thought together. Do you think she's on the last train to Clarksville? Oh, God. This whole video was sponsored Cheer by Tequila Cheer up, Banana. Sleepy Jean. Oh, what can it mean to a daydream believer? Oh, I thought you were going to say daywalker. Home. I'm a bit of a daywalker myself. <laughs> Have you watched Shane Gillis's Netflix special? No, but I think I need to now. Holy fucking shit, is it good? God, is it funny? <laughs> my, my uncle Danny has Down syndrome. He'll bring grilled cheese into restaurants in case they don't serve grilled cheese. Oh God, yeah, no, I heard. I remember. Yeah. I've either seen this bit or heard you talk about <laughs> some about his his brother Danny makes the grilled cheese. His uncle night. Dan, his uncle Danny, and then he, he'll take bites of grilled cheese under the table, and Shane will go, "Where'd you get that grilled cheese, Danny?" <laughs> Shut up. And then his dad will go, fucker's been making them at night. I swear to God, he is. I'm not making them at night, dad. He looks over at Shane. I'm making them at night. <laughs> but I love how Shane Gillis goes. He goes, I have a lot of people with Down syndrome in my family. It came for me, but I dodged it. It nicked me a little. I'm a bit of a day walker myself. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I still can't get that thought out of my head now. Hold on. Can I just look something up real quick so oh, I don't geez. have to end this bit where it is? Uh-oh. I only know Last Train to Clarksville and uh, the one and Daydream Believer. Give me a second. And then I saw her face. Now, now I'm, I'm a believer. believer. Not a train. Hey, hey, Johnny. I think that uh, all of these scams she's running on these guys is really just a stepping stone. The stepping stone to what? Oh, I'm just reading songs by that group. Uh, you know, I bet you yesterday uh, she was having a Pleasant Valley Sunday. Look, I, I don't know why people are pissed about this. I mean, I understand. It feels like when you see her spending this money, she's taking a little bit of me, a little bit of you. But uh... <laughs> Hey, hey, we're the Tiffany Henyards. Some people say we Tiffany around, but we're too busy stealing. To put anybody down. Let's see if the chat knows what we're doing. You know, we're the kings of subtlety. Right. On this program. Uh, we learned it from her. <laughs> we learned it from watching you. Uh, how gangsta is this shit? Oh, dude. She, yeah. My God says this is straight mafia shit. 100%. 100%. Uh, Coltrane with five bucks says he probably towed her. Buy here, pay here, 25% interest, 84 month, 1998 Mercedes C class. She looks like the type. That's for sure. Uh, Rupert with 999 says that's like the third most corrupt thing she's done. She gets paid 100K plus and made sure the next mayor makes 10K. Oh, yeah, we, we talked about that. By the way, you guys are only 170 away. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm not your, I'm not your stepping stone, says Jerry Lahaney. Mr. Q says, how do you go from the Beatles to the monkeys? Did we do the Beatles? No, I didn't do any Beatles songs. I think you guys are confusing. I'm a believer with the Beatles. That's a yeah. monkey song. That is a monkey song. I'm just saying that the monkeys had a lot of great hits. They had a lot of great songs. That was me starting a new topic. I wasn't saying anything about Tiffany Henyard whatsoever at all. Uh, by the way, we are, uh, what are we? We're 170 away from today. Fucking get after it, guys. We're almost there. Thank you very much. We're over halfway there, and we got an hour and 10 minutes left. Let's get to 100 by 9 o'clock and really fuck this thing up. Thank yeah. you, boys and girls. Uh, let's go ahead and finish this. Uh, we got two more Tiffany Henyard stories as we catch up with the and most. And we have that other lady to get to. Yeah, and then we got the Florida lady who stole a hundred grand from a ninety-six year old. Holy shit, are black female politicians really bypassing black politicians in trying to be white politicians? <laughs> black they, guys gotta get dude, between um uh Fanny Willis, this Florida chick, and Tiffany Henyard, black guys gotta start getting more corrupt. Yeah, dude, you guys are getting passed by. The closest you have is George Santos. And that's Yeah, that's only because he well, no, remember, he's Jewish. Yeah. So, I mean, does, does he count? No. Probably not. As a person? <laughs> not if he's going to talk like that, he doesn't. 
Oh, I thought we were talking about something else. Oh, sorry. All right, never mind. Sorry, I was talking about the thing I always talk about. <laughs> All right, let's continue with uh, Black Princess. Last year, our investigation with the Illinois Answers Project found... <laughs> that, even that guy's next to her grabbing her arm like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. Slow down, bitch. You're going to get us caught. She was using public employees and taxpayer dollars to support the charity, including a $10,000 donation from Thornton Township, where she is supervisor. The so AG's she made the township give her 10 grand to her charity that she's fleece. Oh, my God. Did you take two seconds to realize There's that no. if everyone did this this way, they would get caught? The, the answer to your question is no. And the uh, the addendum I have to your question is, does she know she's the coolest motherfucker who ever lived? I don't know about coolest. Definitely dumbest. I mean, you could try to hide it a little bit. Dude, she's awesome. This kind of corruption we call slash and burn. It doesn't last very long, but boy, do you get some results in the short term. Yeah, and then the government's going to take all of those and put her in jail. Yeah, I mean, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> His office says it is evaluating further action against the charity to protect donors and enforce <laughs> state laws about charitable giving. Jesus. <laughs> Again, so do the people get their money back after the FBI rolls in and seizes her accounts and everything? I don't feel like that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't... Uh... Warden Gordon said brazen. Brazen is the word you're looking for. Oh, yeah. For sure. Cynically Insane says uh, this bitch bringing in thousands, you can't get 300. This bitch. Oh, I think he's talking about us. Uh, is he talking about us? Ah. This bitch bringing in thousands, you can't get 300. Oh, that woman? Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm doing a great show, but then again, I'm not holding up your business license. Yeah, she's kind of stealing it in yeah, a lot right, of ways. Exactly. I don't know if you know this or not, but forcibly making the county donate to her charity because she's in charge of the damn thing. That's not really like, oh, this bitch getting thousands. Yeah, she is kind of committing a crime. Yeah. They're, they're, she's doing something wrong. <laughs> Cynically insane says, you guys are dumb. Have you not been listening to this segment? 170 away from doing overtime today. You guys are the absolute best. Let's do another rally like we just did a few minutes ago. And just kick this thing under And I think we've got this thing knocked out. 170 away from hitting, if you will. Uh, so let's do one more. T oh, God, there's another one. Oh, God, Tiffany Henyard, three lawsuits. This morning, three lawsuits just announced against controversial suburban mayor Tiffany Henyard. You see, guys, usually you get a lawsuit at a time. Mm -hmm. You don't get three at a time. But sometimes you find a gem like Tiffany Henyard. The plaintiffs, they are all former employees of Thornton Township and the village of Dalton. They are all alleging wrongful termination. They include a former HR manager, a public works administrative assistant, <laughs> and the buildings department director. They're out. <laughs> I'm guessing what they did. You know what I think they did? They told her to cool it with all the, you know, stealing money shit? Well, yeah, I think they blew the whistle on her. I think they told somebody, like, yeah, the mayor's fucking stealing. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, you're fired. Again, just brazen lashing out. Like, she doesn't do any... Like, if it... She's not exactly a house of cards type of player. Right. You know? She's not like, okay, I'm going to plan this, I'm going to plan that. Somebody goes, hey, the mayor's corrupt. She goes, you're fucking fired! She's uh, Harlan Williams in... Uh, there's something about Mary. Oh, no. Step into my office. Why? Because you're fucking fired. The building's department director. Their allegations include retaliation and firings over things that they refuse to do for Henyard. Like I, I don't believe you. I mean, come on. She doesn't look like the kind of person who'd be vindictive or hold a grudge. Yeah. You run a tow truck company by chance? Hey, hey, look, she doesn't hold any sort of grudge unless you serve food to her enemies. Then she has a problem. <laughs> you fed people who think I'm a cunt. You're dead to me. <laughs> You're not getting your business license renewed. Like punishing business owners who did not support her, suppressing FOIA requests, and also the requests they say to dig up dirt on other employees. An attorney for the women says... <laughs> so she was asking city employees to dig up dirt on other employees. This is what happened. This is what would happen if Regina George became a mayor. 
Regina Georgetta. I, oh. I love the people that are just like, oh, no, 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 no. It's all the racial inequality that causes these. <laughs> it's not like. Never mind. I, I'm oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Cynically Insane says maybe you should start stealing. Maybe. Maybe that's the play. That's how you get it. It's just start stealing from uh, our audience. Hey, guys, we're not going to renew your business licenses in the chat. Let's go and donate to the show. <laughs> uh, Cole with uh, 37. Thank you very much, Cole. That's very cool. So that's 35. Oh, shit, guys. Only 135 away from today. No, just keep the zero in there. It's 1350. Why not? Guys, 135 away from today. Let's do it. We've got overtime on the line. Let's make it happen. Overtime on the line, and we are getting tantalizingly close at 135 away. Thank you very, very much. Uh, finish it off, guys. Just keep doing what Cole just did, and we will be off and running with 30 minutes of overtime. All right, so. Tiffany we, Henyard to we, this. We got to Tiffany Henyard so that we could get to Regina Hill, <laughs> who is an Orlando City commissioner. She's been accused by investigators, this is really fucked up, of securing a power of attorney over an unnamed elderly woman. So she got signed over to, like, control all her finances. Okay. Aside from using the money to get a facelift and purchase a home, she also purchased clothing, car insurance, dental surgery, and a New Year's Eve stay at a hotel in Miami. Oh, it's so fucking brazen. It is just, I don't know how these people do this and expect to get away with it. Or are they not thinking about it? Are they? No, they're not because they're assuming that if they get caught, it's because they're, you know, an ethnicity. Are you saying this woman's black? I'm saying I'm betting she's not white. She's black. Yeah. Just thought I would let you know. Set your mind at ease. It really seemed like it was bothering you. Yeah, I was really worried. <laughs> Is this just having a fucking lizard brain and just seeing like experiences one after the other and not thinking about consequences or anything else? Yeah, because I don't know how you think, oh, I can just take this person's money. Uh, by the way, when you buy things like a car and a home and get a facelift, those things have receipts and are traceable. What? Unless you do them, like, out of the country. So unless she went to, like, New Mexico for some crazy, like, south of the border, possibly botched face job, you you really are going to leave a lot of paperwork for them to just go, oh, look, no, she gave them that money. Where yeah. Where did it come from? Uh, Scarface says, I returned to the American History X dinner scene I sent on Rumble Friday. <laughs> Oh, God. D. Gulag says people shit on white women a lot, but <laughs> that's where this show has always been fair. We make uh, we uh, hate women of all colors. Oh, God, yeah. On this program. Last week I revealed that I've done math while I drive. It turns out that, you know, 99% of all bad drivers are women. Uh, someone's saying about uh, Tiffany Henyard, if there are no charges, give yourself another raise. <laughs> Might have... Might as well, huh? Fucking give it a shot. Fucking hell. Uh, Regina Hill, an Orlando City commissioner, has also been accused of raking in more than 10 grand worth of debt under the elderly woman's name. However, Hill has not yet been arrested or charged in the case, but she has been the subject of a state investigation that was kicked off in February 2023. The authorities reportedly received a tip from one of Hill's staffers who had been fired. Yeah, you can't fire people if you're going to be stealing. Like yeah, that. if you're going to do that kind of crap, you really got to let a lot of other shit slide. Yeah, you got to you got to keep people around. Yeah, I, I said New Mexico when I meant Mexico. I'm sorry, Scooby Jooby Joo. Scooby Jooby Joo's pissed at you for yeah, fucking dude, up. Yeah, dude, fucking Jesus! It's not New Mexico. They gotta go south to the border. You we card. don't, we don't do geography jokes on this program for that I reason. I didn't realize. I'm sorry, I forgot that was a no go. Uh, the authorities reportedly received a tip from one of Hill's staffers who had been fired. An affidavit indicated that Hill first met the elderly woman in 2021 
after li- uh, learning about her poor living conditions. Have those changed? Because so far we only know the house that she bought was for Tiffany. <laughs> or not Tiffany, for H- Regina Hill. Regina Hill. Hill. <laughs> no, don't worry. Same broad. <laughs> Same broad. An affidavit indicated that Hill first met the elderly woman in 2021 after learning about her poor living conditions. So she basically found a diamond in the rough. She found a woman who had money. But, but lived, lived in, in squalor. Shit. Yeah. Within just a month, Hill had become the woman's power of attorney, free need guardian, and healthcare surrogate. At the time, the woman had 164 grand in her savings account. And while the woman told authorities that she remembered signing some, some sort, sort of, of document. document. Fuck the woman. I don't feel bad for her now. Fuck you, grandma. She admitted that she did not fully understand the details of the legal papers. This is, again, why I don't like elderly people just being trusted to be in charge of themselves. Right. Right. She got taken by a scammer because, again, grandma's too dumb to know what she signed. Now, the uh, the independent reported that the elderly woman did not give Hill her consent to use her savings to secure a mortgage for a home. Well, if she gave her power of attorney, then she kind of did. Yeah, if you signed the papers, again, this is one of those things where I feel bad because this Regina Hill is obviously a piece of shit, but you shouldn't have signed something if you don't know what it was. Why did you sign paperwork you don't understand? I don't get that. Why do people just go, oh, I'll just sign this? Oh, okay. Because they're old and stupid and they trust people too easily. You would think after being alive long enough, you would You'd stop- realize they're all pieces of shit and they're <laughs> after your money. They're all trying to fuck you. Uh, However, Hill insists that she did nothing wrong. Okay. Are you ready for her statement? Yes. It's unfortunate that I have been thrust into these circumstances with these allegations. Unfortunate not just for me, but for the 96-year-old woman whom I've loved and cared for like my own family. I trust in God above all things, and I trust in the process. After 10 years of service for the city of Orlando, I've illustrated my love and compassion for my constituents, my city, and my family. I know the truth. I know I'm entitled to due process. Dude, innocent people don't say that. Yeah. Guilty people talk about due process. In which I trust, and I will await my day in court to prove my innocence. Okay. Do you want to uh, see video of her walking out of jail after her arrest? Yeah, let's see this um, this upstanding citizen. Oh, dear Lord. Anything? Do we have? No, she's not going to say a damn thing. You don't think so? I don't think so. She's got nothing to say. Up, oh, had someone pick her up. Cool. Wouldn't it be funny if it was a 96-year-old woman? How is she still allowed to drive? <laughs> uh shit. Ken Decker says, love your real world point of view, uh, point of the stories you cover. Nice commentary, laughing my balls off. I love that Ken's a new Steel Toe super fan. And he's having a great time. He's having We're a, glad you're having here. a good time. That's awesome. And uh, was very generous with his contribution today. Thank you, Ken. 135 away from adding another half hour onto this show at the end of this hour. Uh, go ahead and throw in. Uh, we got the Streamlabs, PayPal, and Venmo links in the chat. Otherwise, Super Chats, memberships, and gifted memberships. Uh, King Yeti says Aaron is as funny as a flashbang in a baby crib. That uh, seems horrific. That's 100% one of the most hilarious things I've you've thought of today. Uh, Sean says, viewers all get cake, Ken. We need your address. Cynically Insane says, Ken is April's sock account. Damn it, April, I told you to stop pumping up my ego, you bastard. Damn it. All right, let's check this uh, dash cam footage. Of this uh, Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver, Ra- Rashi Rice, uh, apparently involved in a bit of a crash. Okay. Um, the uh, video, which captures the moment two black cars previously identified as a Lamborghini and a Corvette collide with a gray car on the left side. Okay. 
you know how shitty the third car involved in this is when the first two are called a Lamborghini, Lamborghini and, a and a Corvette. Corvette. And the third one is a gray car. Is a gray car. I don't know. Some kind of fucking slop. Who it knows? looked like some sort of sedan a chud would buy. Yeah, some some working class assholes vehicle. Uh, by the way, guys, 135 away from today's goal. Everybody contribute, man. Let's hammer this thing out right now. Uh, 135, not very far away uh, for this program. Thank you very much for being an incredibly supportive audience. Let's take a look at the Rishi Rice thing. No sound? Oh, no sound on the dash cam. Oh, whoa, oh. whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, did you think the gray car was the one on the right? Because that's what I thought when we first started the video. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's the gray car up there, isn't it? It looks like it. Up against the wall. Oof. That was a rough one. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. How many people did you put in that car? All their boys are piling out of the vehicle. Let's see. Okay, wait. What the fuck were they doing? Why were you trying to pass on the left? There, there was no more space. Yeah, were they in the, the farthest left lane? Yeah, they were in the farthest left lane. The only thing you had is like the breakdown space, but I don't think there are those in the middle of the road like that. Well, then, yeah, you two fucking deserve The guys who came up behind the gray car fucking deserved it. I'm guessing that, that was Rishi Rice and his boys. Yeah, I'm guessing they were racing, judging from how fast yeah. they were driving. The alleged culprits first spotted in crash picks obtained by TMZ are seen exiting one of the vehicles before making their way to the side of the road where other stalled out cars sat. The dash cam footage then ends as the driver who recorded all this continues on his way. Good. This footage further highlights the extent of Saturday's wreck, which affected several vehicles. Eyewitnesses claim five men popped out of the Corvette and the Lambo and left the scene of the accident without providing their info. Unclear if Reishi himself was among them. So wait a minute. You're telling me after they got into a, cr uh, into a crash, they just walked away from the scene? Like, like there was no big deal? Yeah. Weird. Just just took off. I mean, you, you're driving a Corvette and a Lamborghini. You're just like, ah, leave it here. Yeah. Uh. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Rishi Rice commits multiple felonies by racing on the highway and then fleeing the scene. I mean, yeah. I mean, you guys, I don't know how the fuck you got your cars in that position to be on to either. To sandwich them? Yeah. You're driving way too fast. You passed someone in the middle lane thinking you could just shoot up the left, and there was a car there, and you thought, oh, I'll squeak by it even further on the left. There's no more road, asshole. God damn, man. Probably should. Uh, Scarface, it wasn't five people in a Corvette. It was three and one, two in the other. Yeah, five people in a Corvette would be fucking ridiculous. Are you kidding? Getting five people in there? Fucking Rishi Rice, man. I don't know. Is he any good? I've never heard of him. Rishi, I've never heard of him either. Rishi Rice stats. What did he do? Wow, really? 938 yards and seven touchdowns. All right, so he's pretty good, and I think this was his rookie year. Yeah, he was just, Wow. All right, so this could really fuck him up big time. Yeah, especially the whole leaving the scene of the crime thing. Yeah, they don't like that. Doesn't look good. They're not, they're not big fans of you just leaving like that. When there's a, when there's a bit of an issue that they've got with you. All right, boys and girls, only one thirty-five away from today's goal. That's it. One thirty-five. Shane RR says, "Aaron, adjust your mic again. Your voice sounds weird." Shut up. I adjust my mic a lot. Leave me alone, Shane. Fucking twat. <laughs> Uh, you ain't getting my money, says, imagine the NFL having standards. The NFL will sweep it under the rug. It depends on how bad it is, you know? If nobody was seriously hurt, maybe. They might, yeah. You might get, like, the four-game personal conduct suspension or whatever it is. Yeah. But nothing too terrible. Uh, Fanatical Bucks fan says, just say oops. Oh, wow, they're saying the Chiefs released him. Did they? That would be surprising. Let's see. Uh, this says suspended. I don't see anything about him. Oh, no, suspected, not suspended. 
Okay, so suspected of the car crash. There were six cars involved, but again, if if there were no major injuries, I don't know how they would. I don't see anything about him being cut by the Chiefs. Dallas police say two drivers in a Corvette and Lamborghini were racing when they both lost control of their vehicles and crashed, causing a six-vehicle accident. The suspected Corvette driver is wide receiver Ray She Rice. What's going on here? So weird. You just pick up a, a, a high-end performance car without any idea how to drive and just race it around like you're... Like, oh, weird. Aren't you worried about consequences or things like that? Right. That's about, yeah. God, these guys, they, they get money. They go and buy cars that they have no business driving. Uh, Cynically Insane says Henry Ruggs getting plowed in prison right now. That's true. Yeah, he killed somebody, though, with his car. Uh, SC Motorsports says Aaron's chin dirt keeps making scratching noises into the mic. This? I don't think so. There you go. Is that what we're calling it? Chin dirt? It feels... I'll be honest with you. It feels mildly disrespectful, if I may. Uh, 45 minutes away from uh, trying to knock out this last 135 today. We have gotten there. We have gotten close enough uh, to be within striking distance. So if you guys want to contribute to the show, please help. A little bit at a time is going to knock this whole thing out and get us 30, second, or 30 minutes of overtime. 30 seconds of overtime. Yes. Go. And then uh, also guarantee that this show stays properly funded. I think I'm going to uh, go for one more last right. one, and then uh, and then that's it. Do you want another one? Yeah, sure. I'll drink another beer. We're going to grab another beer. You guys knock out that goal with PayPal and Super Chats and all that shit, and uh, I'm going to go grab us another beer. Uh, people coming up with new names for Aaron's facial hair, someone calling it butt mud. I don't know why. It's on his face. Why would it be butt mud? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Uh, he does not sound like he's a fan of the butt mud nickname. Flavor Saver 2.0. Why would it be 2.0? What was one? Was it 1.0 because he had one before? Uh, fucking girl beer running right through. <laughs> yeah, but then then explain that to me because I just drank one and I'm fine. So, in fact, I'm gonna have another and still feel totally fine uh, when the show's over. So uh, that's not chin dirt. That is the result of Aaron kissing. Oh, E rocks. No, 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 no. That's so disparaging, John Jamingo, because that's implying that E rock does not have the hygiene and the wherewithal to properly clean his rectum before allowing someone to tongue butter it. That's not cool. You can't make that dispersion about somebody. That's not nice, man. I'm sure E rock has a great hygiene routine, and before anyone, Aaron in particular, eats his, eats his ass. He gets he gets it all all ship shape and ready for showtime. <laughs> all right, let's a lot of muff mouth. Okay, a uh, John Jamenko saying I just did right, right. You just did, and I'm saying that's wrong to disparage somebody in that way. You have to choose which kind you want. Oh, wait, what are we going There's through? Modelo and um, McGolden Light. All right, I'm going Modelo. Mexican. Mexican. Fucking girl beer running right through his vag, says Cynically. Cynically Insane's being a meanie head today. Yeah, he is not happy. Aaron looks like he wants to put on a mask and go right fuck with Scooby in the gang, <laughs> says Landers. No. I don't know. I, I don't think I do. All right. 135 away from getting it today. Thank you very much for your support and for the support to come from the rest of you. Oh, I hate these two. God, do I hate fucking farm oh, kids. sweet Jesus Christ. Why? This is so gay. So gay. You know, like, uh, like prom season... Yeah. Is here now. Like, yep. So you're going to have kids asking each other to prom, and sometimes they'll do it like very publicly, and they'll involve the public for no reason. Right, because like, we all care whether or not you dance. Yeah, we have to be a party to you trying to like get the cum to stop shooting out of your eyeballs so you can shoot it into a girl on prom night, get her knocked up, and have to marry her and stay in that fucking town the rest of your life. I get it. You're looking to finger bang. Leave me out of it. I mean, look, man, it feels nice. I get it. I understand. 
but could we be a little less gay? This is the problem with social media and Twitter and TikTok and all that shit. Everybody had to start sharing what they do for their lives. It's like, oh, look, I had a meal. Yeah, I don't care. And then, oh, look, I'm going to ask someone to go to this dance with me. I'm going to make it a big production and I have to share it. And then a whole bunch of stupid chuds came along and they said, you know what we'll do? We'll sit there and say, that's so super awesome. I'm a fan of you doing this. And everybody started just jerking themselves off. And now we have to feel like, hey, I asked this chick if she wants to come to the dance because I'm hoping she'll tug my pecker. That's not respectable and I don't care. And then we discourage the really good ones. Like... If I were a slave, I'd be picking cotton. But I'm white, so I'm picking you. Will you go to prom with me? And that one always gets on the news. They're like, oh, a racist promposal and blah, blah, blah. Well, here, okay. Look, I know you're black, but I'd love to hang with you at the fucking dance. See, those are good ones. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> I put the whole note in the tree so she could see it when she got out in the morning. To my Mexican girlfriend, I'd like to taco to you about going to prom. Oh. See? Uh, here, we'll go to, we'll just pick a random Let's one. Let's run for the border of the dance hall. Here, we'll pick a random one. How about Big Lake? We'll do one in Minnesota. Okay. Here. You guys tell me which one you'd rather have. You guys decide if you'd rather have kids making. Do we start with the fun one? or No, the... let's start right, with the good. shitty one. All right, one. good. You guys knock out the 135 while we're doing this, by the way. I'm very excited about that. So I'll play the really shitty one, the gay one, that the news is celebrating and thinks is oh so cute and great. And then I'll play a really funny one that everyone shit on uh, the people for doing. You know why the cow's tail's up like that? Why is that? Because he wrote prom with jizz. He had to work it out somehow. <laughs> oh, no. Well, prom season in this. Right Does that mean the cow's just airing out his anus because it's been perforated? No, the cow won't even feel it, man. You can go, like, elbow deep in those things, man. I mean, honestly, unless you're hauling something like this around, you ain't. the cow's just kind of like, oh, is there a bug back there? They're very docile creatures. All right, here we go. Right around the corner, and you know what that means? Promposals are in full swing. Shut up! Oh, and these bring a smile to your face. To <laughs> yeah, no, they only, don't. Only when you guys are mad about them. It's only because menopause is burning yeah. you up right now, and it's the only thing that gives you joy. <laughs> only when it's ching chong, ding dong, uh, prom time, you come along. That's a good promposal. Take a look. Wyatt sent us this picture. He says his girlfriend, Emma, brought a cow to ask him to her prom. Emma attends Bondurant. He goes, she asked you, fucking bitch. Beta. Beta. So wait a minute. Not only did she ask you, she brought the cow for her dowry. What the fuck okay, kind of man are you? What's next? You know, I hate gay people. Oh, my goodness. So you uh, went to the prom and your girlfriend asked you to do the prom? Yes, Jesse. Beta! <laughs> you saw she, and she did it with a cow? Beta male! And, you, and she made you take pictures with all of the signs? What a bitch. <laughs> you see, she spray painted a cow's body or put chalk on it or whatever and said prom. And then the sign said, I'd have a cow if you, you said, said yes. yes. I mean, she's going to have a cow whether he says yes or not, well, technically, so she's lying. All right, so, like, you birthed that cow? Hold on. Wait a minute. You're going to have it. So you got plowed by a bull before this started. That's really a weird way to start. Hey, would you take me to prom? I just got ravaged by a bovine. <laughs> I'd have a cow if you said yes. She has a cow now. Okay. That would be great if he said no and she literally, out of spite, just blew the cow's head off and left it there. Just shot him right in the head and went, you deal with it, you fucking it's piece It's fucking of yours shit. now. I said I'd take it with me if you said yes. <laughs> All right, so there's that one. Goes right. to West Des Moines Dowling Catholic. She also made a sign that says, I'd have a cow if you said yes. <laughs> Wyatt says, of course he says yes. Cool, so she has to have a cow now. Okay, so there's that one. There's that way to ask somebody to prom. And then there's this. Uh, Jose Pantalone says, was that Tim Hardaway? Fuck yeah, that was Tim Hardaway. You know, I hate gay people. Act like I don't have a Tim Hardaway drop, motherfucker. I also have Jake Hudson drops. Oh, wait, no, I don't think I can play them, though. 
And if I let go too soon, that's where the scissoring happens. Exactly. <laughs> Homeless people are fucking assholes. The guy Aaron looks like a really thin, strung out Peter Griffin. I'm actually about 14 pounds lighter. So yeah, a really, really thin. That. Now I'm a really strung out Peter Griffin. Oh my God. All right, let's uh, let's watch a different proposal, and you tell me which one you think is. I mean, better. honestly, I feel like you should just show up with a sign and an arrow pointing out saying, "This dick won't suck itself." Prom? <laughs> like, I mean, come on. I don't even think you should have to write prom on that one. Yeah, it's just it's just to be understood. All right, one thirty-five away from knocking out today's goal. We got about forty minutes left in the show, so if you feel like contributing, please do. We're so close to knocking this out and doing 30 minutes of overtime. Help us out. We appreciate it. Here we go. This one's from Minnesota, where I used to live, Big Lake. Thanks for watching WCCO and CBSN Minnesota. A racist sign asking someone to prom in Big Lake is getting a lot of attention. It's prompted black students in the district to share their experiences of prejudice. David Schumann spoke to them. Oh, great. So now you ask one girl to prom, and now all the black people are bitching about everything that's ever happened to them. Oh, my God about how they feel that their classmates with the sign should be punished. The blatant racism of the... If I was black... See, that, yeah, this is the one. If I was black, I'd be picking cotton. But I'm white, so I'm picking you. Prom. This is, like, really offensive to slaves because black people now do not have the work ethic of picking cotton. Well, remember... <laughs> Remember, they weren't high. We didn't bring the slaves over to pick cotton. We brought them over here to build America. That whole picking cotton is just a horrible rumor that we used to make yeah. it sound inadequate. You, we built the country. No, that's called the Chinese, bro. <laughs> yeah, they had a lot more to do with it. <laughs> so called promposal sign is unnerving. The two Big Lake High School students smiling as they hold it, maybe more so. That was outrage. Right, because they're white. They don't care. And, and more importantly, I'd like to know. Um, who thought the picture was a good idea? Yeah, that's my thing about these racist promposals. They're adorable. They're cute. Everybody loves them. We all have to pretend that we're outraged by them. Quit taking the fucking pictures so we don't know. Yeah, I'm tired of hearing about these horribly offensive racist stories that literally none of us would know about if you assholes would keep it off the internet. Right. It's, um, I just felt this the whole time my kids were going to school so for it to finally come to light. Can't believe this fat white lady is surrounded by a bunch of black kids. It's just weird to me. It's almost like there's a type. It was very shocking. Jennifer Allery's kids are biracial and have shared the halls with... Are they? Can we get a little juxtaposition? Uh, dad at work, he's not home yet. Um, uh, I'm going to say this, uh, they're awfully light skinned. So, I mean, they might be biracial, but I feel like, uh, with the exception of the hair, you could probably slide by and say white and get through. Like, <laughs> I'll be honest. I'd let that pass. They probably all hate her. <laughs> but the students, she in drove the picture, their father away. She's not sure what the school can do, but says there needs well, sorry, to be father. accountability. Her daughter, Janea, a senior has her idea. If those kids are going to be allowed at prom, then it's not going to be a welcome place for everyone. She doesn't even. What? Why? He said if. If those kids are allowed it. He didn't uh, say he was going to make you pick cotton. He just thought if he was black, he'd want to pick some cotton. But he's not. So he's picking you. Should we see if the next racist promposal is another, is the same thing? I, I'm curious. How bad are these? All right, here's another one. Yeah, Rick. I hope these the kids are creative tonight, and they're not doing Bowers the same thing. Bowers Museum here in Santa Ana. The school involved is Aliso Niguel High School. And as you said, there may be one dark cloud floating over this milestone for well, some. Well, that is racist. Yeah. I mean, Especially just... since there's no reason to bring black into it. I mean, yeah. the guy's sign was, I'm not Chinese, but I can't see myself at the dance without you. Me Chinese, me play joke, me take you to prom on my cock, you will choke. Oh, oh, that's so nice. So many young people. That's because controversy is swirling around a teenager's invitation to a young lady. Better not. Take a look at this. We have blurred the face. If you won't, if you won't to prom, I think, if you want to, if you won't go to prom with me, it. Oh, if you want to take my, if you want to. Bro, this is fucking retarded. Yeah, I think the most offensive part of this is the fact that that sign worked. If you won't go to prom with me, 
it take me oh this guy fucking sucks pieces of those involved a social media posting shows a smiling young couple the boy holding a banner that reads quote if you went to prom with me oh. it would take my breath away and it's a picture of george floyd at the bottom oh that's again quit fucking taking pictures of these and that's that's sign COVID, man i don't want to go back to that that sign could have been funnier I can't joke! George, what did you think of that one? I can't joke! Oh, well, I mean, I'm, as long as you're not upset. Uh, and I just had COVID, man. I don't want to go back to that. Well, you don't have to. Don't worry. You'll never... I can promise you something, George. You will never have COVID again. Rest in power, King. If you won't go to prom... No, if you me. went to prom. It's, if you went to prom with me, it would literally take my breath away. If you went to prom with me, I'd die of a fentanyl overdose. Yeah, right. How can they be offended by this? It has nothing to do with George Floyd. His picture is just on there. Yeah. Yeah, they would have said, if you went to prom, I would pistol whip a pregnant lady. <laughs> and pass fake 20s. Yeah. If you went to prom with me, I'd buy fucking coconut snack cakes with fake 20s. Fucking asshole. The words are next to a Black Lives Matter fist and a picture of George Floyd. Reaction was... A, the fist is not going into an asshole. B, it almost looks more like the Howard Stern fist. And C, it's a very respectful picture of George. Swift and the mother of a biracial daughter who goes to the high school went on social media to blast... It's always the moms with black kids whose black fathers ran out on them. And they need to talk about the racial injustice that they don't suffer from, but is so prevalent, I have to get oh. it out there everywhere. Jesus. Again, though, these kids have to stop taking pictures of their racist fucking promposals. Yeah, this is called an inside joke, folks. You right. keep it to yourselves. The invitation and the young man who wrote it. She writes... It is offensive, appalling, and just plain disrespectful. Hey, the way he we reacted to that whole it. event. Offensive, appalling, and just plain disrespectful. I would say the rioting to me was also very offensive. disrespectful and offensive. Um, definitely troubled me greatly. Attending and should be held accountable for his poor behavior. The high school principal issued a statement to parents and students saying, quote, the sign is extremely disappointing, lacks cultural sensitivity, is deeply offensive, and does not reflect the values we strive for here at Aliso Niguel High School. Well, that is why the school has decided as of today to sentence this young man to two weeks in the hot box. And uh, we should be able to get this all straightened out in no time. They insisted he couldn't go to the dance, but he continues to, uh, to affirm that if they just let him go to the ground, <laughs> okay. After he was banned from prom, he started yelling, Mama! Mama! <laughs> he started foaming at the mouth. Yeah, it was the officer's knee. That's what it That's was. That's what it was. Yeah. Do you remember that part of the body cam video? Yeah. Where the cop literally looks and he goes, uh, Are you okay? Because you're foaming at the mouth. And George Floyd is completely incoherent. This is when he's still in his car, his van or whatever, by the way. Right. And he's like, bro, you okay? Like, you're foaming at the mouth. Then he had him up against that wall, like, sitting down, and George Floyd couldn't, like, remember his address or anything. And he's like, Ugh. okay, yes. Why don't we take you to the car? And then he starts doing the thing your dog does when it doesn't want to go in the tub. Or doesn't want to go to the vet, just fucking yeah. freaking out. Just starts losing his shit and, like, like but yeah, it was definitely the knee that killed him. Yeah, it was. It was all it. Was nothing it was else. the knee put at the top of his back that murdered him. Well, it prevented his lungs from inflating. You know, with his knee there. That's funny. I thought fentanyl did that. Apparently, it doesn't. Oh, okay. Well, I'm wrong. School administrators say they plan to use this incident as a teaching tool for students moving forward. Some parents, though, are still very upset. She was. Why are we just getting a shot of this chick's past their prime tits? Yeah, they're not even impressive boobs. Yeah. God. What are your kids in high school? 18. Uh, you're 43, I guess. Nike that's called back. They said, take the swoosh off. It's disappointing. It's distraught. It's and hanging look on too both low. of their faces. They just look kind of defeated, which is really crazy because the night before they were so excited about going to prom. And then for that to change 
was very disheartening. Basically an outrage just because, you know, for him to have that kind of message showing the Black Lives Matter fist and George Floyd on it, it really just hit home because, you know, we're going through so much as a, a people. And to see that is where you You know what? I can understand, like, if you're black, feeling that way about the Black Lives Matter fist and the George Floyd thing. I, I'm not, so I right. don't. And Again, I'm, the only thing I come back to is the uh, the kids in question were assholes simply for putting the picture up. Right. Because, again, if nobody ever knew that that happened except you and your date, then who gives a shit? Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, nothing to do with you. Mind your business and parent your kids, says SH. Exactly. All these moms who want to make this about them, they just want to go, oh, well, my ch I'm a child. I am a mother of a mixed race child and i as as one as a mother of one i was ugh. we get it you don't have a personality but a decent credit score so you made it work <laughs> uh oh man where did i i lost the chat here uh john jamingo is outraged over the outrage that's the attitude to have right. for sure uh danger bear wolf turtle says if i get down on one knee would you stay with me until you run out of breath <laughs> Leprechaun Blood says nobody would have complained if it was Derek's picture on there. Oh, yeah, they would have. Oh, yes, they would have. SH says take all the pictures you want. Just don't post them online, dummies. Yeah. Again, it's exactly. the sharing it online is the only only ground that anyone is like, I'm offended, I'm appalled. Only room anyone has for that is because nobody needed to know. Nobody needed to know. Ken says, would you guys go to Compound Media if asked or Aaron in April with Johnny? Yes, of course, but... We've done six shows on Compound. I've I've guest hosted Anthony's show. Anthony's been here. I've been on his show. Uh, I've done In Hot Water. I've, I've met Gino twice. Yeah, we've been. We're we're very and we're uh, April and I are well and Johnny are uh, good friends with Gino and Keanu. They're wonderful people. And uh, yeah, I mean, of course I would, but uh, you know the the deal would have to be right. See, he's just, he won't admit it. He's too much of an upstanding guy. Like, A-Rock is always like, man, we could bring you on board if you just drop the tard. And he's like, come on, I can't do that to the guy. I can't, and I always say, I can't drop the tard. And I go, hey, wait a minute. You made me call him a tard. Damn it. It's accurate. I fucked that one up. Okay, so which promposals do you like better? The racist ones or the cow ones? The racist ones are more fun. Those kids are Because funny. the cow one is dumb. I have the same thought about all three of them, though. Don't fucking share your stupid promposal pictures. I don't give a fuck. Move on. Like, get on with your life. It's bothersome. The way they just make themselves part of the fucking story. All right, guys. Let's uh, throw some money in. We got about 25 minutes until we run out of time. We're 135 away from today's goal. That is a doable number for this program. Go ahead and throw in some money. Uh, click that link to uh, PayPal. Go with Streamlabs. Go with Venmo. Go with God, Castle. <laughs> uh, Super Chats, memberships, gifted memberships. God's going to have to sit this one out. Rumble rants. Absolutely. And we'll do overtime if we can knock this thing out. So uh, as far as uh, knocking this goal out, look, it keeps this show on the air. We are a listener-supported program. And we really appreciate your guys' time and effort and uh, your cash, if you will. So, Streamlabs, PayPal, Venmo, again, appreciate it. Let's get that in now. Let's not worry about uh, a goal today, and let's call it a W. All right, so we're out of uh, racist promposal stories. I mean, That's not, a shame. We're not out of them, but, I mean, it's probably time to stop now. Is Mac? it time to stop now? I was telling, uh, at Easter dinner last night, I was telling April's family about the scene in Super Troopers 2 where they tell them about the secret to life. Yeah. Is a penis in your asshole. And uh, fucking killed. I was worried because you tell a penis in the asshole joke at a table. You never know how it's going to go. All right, some people get weird. Like, they get way too into it. That's the one that they get. Ooh, penises and buttholes. I love this topic. Like, oh, hold on. I knew I should have kept my keys. I knew I should have. Uh, Kyle says the guy who witnessed George Floyd's death is getting, like, $50,000. Oh, yeah. There's people who are getting money for emotional distress. Right. Because they watched it happen. Because they sat there and watched it. 
You know, because, you know, they were forced. At no point could they have gotten up and walked away. Or at no point could they have stopped filming the whole thing and left. <laughs> no, 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 I've got emotional distress. Record, upload. Yeah. I'm really upset. I can't really handle any more of this. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, 135, guys, let's get after it. We need everybody to jump in. Let's do this story, and then let's beg you guys to knock out the uh, last of today's goal. So we get off to a good start this week. Um, an, un an unhinged woman went on a drunk tirade at Dallas Airport after being barred from her flight. I'm good with this. I am, too. I want to, ooh, do we have, ooh, we do. We have eight minutes and 33 seconds of this chick. I'm excited. Dude, she could take us to overtime. Yeah, we could hit that. Eight minutes and 33 seconds. Then we've got uh, another Nickelodeon kid coming forward. Oh, no. After that. That documentary that came That documentary in. came out. Yeah. Uh, Foul Mouth says, my understanding is if you are white and you ask a person of color to prom, then it's okay. There we go, then. That's exactly it. Uh, Tiffany Gomez is at it again. No, it's not her. She's fine. The This motherfucker is not real lady, is not the culprit here. Uh, everybody throw us some money. Let's get that goal, and then let's watch this lady. Here we go. Come on. Oh, we got an ad. Yeah, but play the fucking thing. I think it just sits up here for it. Oh, oh there we go. It's weirdly paused. <laughs> All right. No, no, oh, homie. Man. You're the big. We're going to play the what? ad on the air. We're going to help out. Jesus, this better be a fucking good video. Streamlabs, PayPal, Super Chats, memberships, Rumble Rants, gifted memberships. Help us hit that 135. You made a logo that says big on it. This is going to be huge. No, the only thing that's huge is you. Keep Fuck. this little ship afloat. We appreciate it. Okay, September 23rd, officers responded to a highly intoxicated woman who had been kicked off of her flight. So she got hammered before. She went to the bar, had a few. Didn't have any problems at baggage or security or anything, so she could just, you know. Okay. Get a few drinks before the plane. But then somewhere, like, like during boarding, she just started losing her shit? Somewhere somebody got white girl wasted. Uh-oh. Move that! Move that! Move that! 100%! 100%! 100%! Hey, that's racist. That man's... 100% is anti-Semitic. That woman is a Jew hater. That's true. That is a white supremacist symbol. That blonde-haired, blue-eyed, nice tits, by the way, woman, yeah. is, again, anti-Semitic. Good tits, sweetheart. Good tits. Great, great. I'm standing over here. I want you to go deal with that man saying get feet. Go, then deal with that him. Great, go. Deal with him. No, I'm going to deal with you first, okay? So you can go stand over here so we can talk. I can go what? Come on, Tim. Stay, stay. We're going to walk out. She said you can go. That's... You know what the cops love when you just walk away from them with no regard. Yeah, right. When when the cops come to you and they say, hey, stop for a minute. We need to ask you some questions. And you start walking away as though you're entitled to leave. Yeah, they don't typically stay nice for very long. What is going on? I heard you from all the way down there. Did she Did she assault somebody? She, when I ran up, she was in the corner. She had her camera in the face of one of them, and they were all grouped together. Where's your driver's license ID? Holy Justin. Jesus. Oh, boy, she is fucked up. God, what do you... You get nervous before a flight, and you start having a few, and what, you didn't eat that day? It gets away from you? I guess. I don't know. I've never gotten... I've never gone on a flight, so I don't know what, like... I don't know what drugs or, or things you need to oh, that's or a good do to point. get through yeah. that, but... She might have taken a sleeping pill and had a little booze. Oh, no. That's a rough one. One to handcuffs. Chest to chest. Or she chest to chest. She chest to chest. Her, me, and him. Okay. And like, tried, and to, like, tried to push? Yeah. She, 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 she slapped. Phone. Yeah. She's like, tried the, to slap me. Did she, did she actually hit anybody? That's yeah. what I'm asking. She, she did make contact. Yeah. Contact with, was made. With her. Mm -hmm. Contact okay. with me. But she starts screaming directly in my face. Okay. And I said, you're not going to scream at me. 
You're going to calm down. This is the very behavior that our captain has denied boarding for. At which point she starts. This, this, <laughs> this woman wants this cop to know, look, I did everything right. I went, but she's like quoting every piece of it. She's like, I told her, I said, you are being disrespectful, ma'am. I always get nervous when there's like a high pressure, high energy confrontation situation. And one person talks as though they were an elder statesman. I'm like, I think you're lying. I, I think you were probably the good guy in this whole thing, but I think you're trying to make yourself look a little better. I don't know that you were that put together the whole yeah. time. Starts slapping at me with the phone, and she hit me here. You called her a bitch or a cunt once or twice. Look, I get it. I understand. You're She's allowed. She's being to. a cunt. She's being a cunt. But let's come on. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to tell me anything. Nope. Okay. I'm really just trying to figure out what's happening. <laughs> 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 I'm done. I don't even know what's going on. That's what I'm trying yep, to figure out. Yep, you don't. Right. I am not walking my way into this. You can fuck off. This is not what you think. I have flown for 30 years. It'll be a flown for 30 years. She looks pretty good if she's been flying for 30 years. So you started when you were eight? Yeah, what the fuck? I don't care. I just, okay. I'm supposed to be in Columbia for a business trip, and I'm actually a... I've been flying for 14 years. Okay. Wait a minute. 30, now 14. Hold on. Can we pick a speed? How long have you been flying for? I need to know how upset I'm supposed to be with you. I've never had a single encounter, and I don't know how this happened. And I'm so sad. And okay. I'm just, please, please let me go home. Oh, okay. there we is go. This, is this just booze? This is just booze. Yeah. This is just booze. This happens every time with these people where they're like, I'm going to get fucked up. I'm going to tell the cops, go fuck off. And then when I realize, oh, at the point at which authority is brought in is the wrong time to resist. Yeah. Can I just go home? You turn on the woman card at that point and then you're the victim. Yeah. yeah. I'm not as that? drunk as you think I am. I <laughs> oh, I've heard and said that before. <laughs> Hey, every time I've said I'm not as drunk as you think I am, you know what? You were as drunk as I'm they usually as drunk as they thought I was. Oh, no. Usually more. What do you mean you're not drunk? You took your shirt off and you started saying, oh, no, never mind. Yeah, I do that sober. I am just super traumatized that I am here. Okay. <laughs> How much did you have to drink? I had two drinks. Everyone always has two drinks. Yeah, but to be fair, you have like a two drink minimum. Fair. Beer number two is going down real nice. <laughs> we get to overtime. It's going to get awful interesting. But everyone gets asked, they're like, how much did you have to drink? They're like, two drinks. I wish one time someone would go, uh, how, many, how many drinks do you have? And they're like, 46. And they went, how many what? drinks do you have? You don't know where I'm coming from. How many drinks have you had? Look, man, if you can't tell from the current condition of mine, I stopped keeping count a long yeah. time ago. <laughs> How many drinks have you had? Five or six. Not Just enough. I could use another. Yeah. Okay. Full drinks. Very full drinks. Okay. But not any more than I normally drink when I travel. Okay. I've done this a million times. Okay. 30 years, 14 years, a million times. Uh, these are I some can't, squiffy yeah, numbers. I can't gauge this woman's travel experience. What kind of drinks were they? They were... Um, Say long on vodka island. tonics. Okay. Oh, the good same things God. I always have. Okay. I swear, I cannot okay. overstate. Two vodka tonics and you're this fucked up. Yeah, I'm I don't, sorry. I don't believe you. And I personally vodka tonic. Like, oh, that's what I drink. Vodka tonic. Now I've got questions. <laughs> like, you don't you don't drink a vodka tonic because you're like, I want something that I like the taste of that I can enjoy. No, you want something that's going to get you completely fucked yeah. up. So and you just don't want to drink vodka straight because then your friends are like, "Hey, let's talk about that alcohol abuse." Yeah, crime. right. Okay. I'm not innocent, but okay. Jesus. So do you think they didn't let you on because you were? No, they didn't let me on because I got on at the wrong time. I got on late. My my friends are so bad. Okay, well, I'm usually on, on so okay. early, and they were just. Robin Wright Penn is not doing well with the end of House of Cards. Yeah, she, she has really, not taken it well. Claire Underwood really is not dealing with uh, flying commercial well at all. I, I mean, I recorded okay. something. I don't even know where to record. I wasn't trying to record to be an. I just. Okay. I just 
You were recording to be an asshole. You wanted to show how mean and nasty they were to you. I mean, let's be honest. Do you understand why it escalated to the situation? No, I don't. Actually, I don't. I actually don't. It doesn't mean that I won't do something different. Like, but I don't actually understand. Okay. Would you like me to explain why? No, I don't. I just, <laughs> no. Would you like me to try and help you figure out why you're such a fucking falling down drunk? No, I'm fine. Don't tell me what I'm doing wrong. That won't change anything. Just let me go. Oh, I'm definitely not completely sober, but I'm not. <laughs> Says who? You being honest. Yeah, quit being so hard on yourself, sweetheart. You're fine. This is where a guy should pick her up and be like, honey, don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing just fine. Let's just take you home and get you laying down. You'll feel yeah. a lot better. First guy in the airport who tells her she's going to be okay and that she's all right right now, she's sucking his dick. For sure. Just about that, because it is. With no hair in the way. Helping. She scans on, goes to the door, and she's just sorry yelling. F this, F this, and now. So she walked, walked yeah. down here. Okay. So ma'am. And she had already scanned. Yeah. In? Okay. She yeah. had did the biometric. Okay. I said, ma'am, you can't have that language. What's going on? Kidding me? I said, okay. Just come out, talk. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. This is a professional area, and we finna launch this plane. Look, I need to ask you what you be doing. <laughs> Before we got up in this bitch. Who you even is? To a manager. So I would call for the manager. She called me on the phone and said she'll be down. At that time, the captain comes up because he didn't have all his paperwork for the international. So I called the manager back. I said, hey, the captain needs his paperwork. He only got two. He need captain need his paperwork. Did you hear that? The captain. Need his paperwork. Need his paperwork. Good. Well, I hope the captain get, be getting his paperwork. Uh, John with 35 bucks says just a tease. Oh, so close. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we are 100 bucks away from today's goal. All right. We got 10 minutes to hit that overtime mark. We got Let's 10 see, uh, minutes to hit overtime. A hundred bucks plus away. in here to knock that into the overtime. Round. Let's do a quick check of the chat and then we'll get uh, back to drunky here. We'll see what she's got. Uh, all right. There we go. A hundred bucks away. Thank you, John. Boom. Thank you. Done. Uh, let's go to Mr. Approachable. It says, Aaron, the last time you told me you're not as drunk as I think you are, five minutes later, you're on stage in front of a bunch of people drawing on a Hitler mustache with a permanent marker. Stop talking about comedy shows. They're not filmed for a reason. <laughs> okay. Ten minutes before overtime, and Aaron will get shit faced right now, says Mr. St. Caesar. We got ten minutes uh left, and we're only a hundred bucks away from today's goal. So if you guys want to knock that out, we are right there, knocking on the door. As it were. Let's knock out that last hundred and call it a victory for the first day of the week. The uh day after Easter, if you will. Streamlabs, PayPal, super chats, memberships. Let's get in there. And finish this thing up. What did you say the captain said? What did you say the captain said? So, in fairness, black women do reiterate stories better than any other race of people. Well, they act them out so much. It's yeah. just, it's, you re like, he covered his camera in defense. Like, oh, she's coming for me. Like, no, no, no. She's just a thespian. Something see, something do. <laughs> oh, no. I can't remember. Ostrich? Huh. Ostrich see. Ostrich do. Again, 100 bucks, folks. Let's get that overtime <laughs> happening. The captain standing right there. And she's like, what did you captain say? Mind you, I'm speaking about He said, kick this honky off the plane. Kick this white bitch off this plane before I knock her up and leave her. Let me guess. She came out saying, a quince orchard, a quince orchard. White devil, white devil. <laughs> captain talked to her. You're not going on the flight. This is why you're not. Get out of my face. You will not be talking to my five or something like that. If you're up here talking like this, you will not be talking to me like that. Oh, my God. She's yelling. Oh, so she's screaming from all the way across the room. Oh, no. She's on the other side of everything from this, and you just hear her say, you will not detain me. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. So it looked like she was calming down from being so shit-faced, and yeah. now she's escalating She again. She had the waterworks, but we seemed like overall it was, it was coming down. What yeah. happened now? So at that point, the captain said she's not going at all. When did you start pulling your phone out to record? As soon as they said you. I don't know when my phone recording is an issue unless you have an issue. 
Okay, I guess we're done with the waterworks and the niceness. So I don't think my cord re- recording and you and I have oh, a conversation. Oh, ho, 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 ho. how are those two fucking vodka tonics doing? I don't think my cooker corner. All right, I'm going to say you had more than two. Ma'am, I'm going to say you might be more drunk than you let on. So I don't think my cord recording and you and I have a conversation. If you want to let me off and I let you off, we're good. Otherwise, If I let you off. (laughs) Listen, officer, if I give you a fucking break here, maybe you and I can, you know, just go our separate ways. Look, you write me a pass, I write you a pass. Fair (laughs) is fair. I (laughs) off. My plane has already left off either arrest me now detain me you are detained (laughs) what do you think those fucking handcuffs are retard either arrest me now detain me ma'am we've done the detaining part ma'am ma'am you are detained what are you gonna do run off with the handcuffs on you'll fall and break your face open and we are potty trotting right towards that arrest already so you better you know calm it down jesus then give me a detain and then i would like to contact my lawyer okay great then let's contact my lawyer okay then let's do that now because i'm done i am trying to be nice and now i'm done so let's call i mean these assholes don't want to cut her she's trying to be so nice this woman is trying so hard just to be reasonable with these officers and find a resolution to this whole thing and they they kept pushing sir they kept pushing wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for that king shit airline. Look, I do you really think that uh, they're going to drop what they're doing to call your lawyer right now? I don't know if you know this, but contacting the lawyer happens after they bring you downtown. <laughs> She's trying to be nice. My lawyer. Okay, we can do that. In a Great. Moment. No, now, now. I have a lawyer now. I have a lawyer. No, I have a lawyer now. Do I have a lawyer now? It's my do arrest I- and I need my lawyer now. Do I have a lawyer now? One eight hundred. Do I have a lawyer now? Right do I have now? a legal right to lawyer now? Oh, then, do I have a legal lawyer to de- de- desire now? <laughs> yes. Again, she explained to you very clearly. No, <laughs> she's. They're trying to tell you that this is not the way this goes. By the way, guys, uh, that's going to be the last of her. Until we can knock this thing out, a hundred bucks away at overtime. We'll uh, we'll grab another drink. I think I'll go to Apple Pie Moonshine. That's not a bad call. After this one, if we hit overtime, and we'll finish up. That woman's still got like three minutes of yelling at airport cops left. And there's a possible chance of losing. Oh, um, there's Sid with fifty bucks. Thank you very much, Thank buddy. You, Appreciate Sid. that. Uh, Scarface with four ninety nine. Thank you, buddy. We're fifty away from today's goal. You guys can do it. Scarface with four ninety nine from weepy white woman to full blown demon in the snap of a finger. They're good at that, man. I know it's freaky. You guys knock out that last fifty bucks, and we're gonna call today a win, and we're gonna finish up with that drunk ass lady. And I'm gonna go get the apple pie moonshine because I think we're out of beers. All right. I think I got to make a run, as it were. Uh, so five minutes left. Let's go ahead and rally up and knock out that last 50 and call it a W. Um, oh, I'm getting so... I, I got to... Trying to figure out. I know that you and I got to do a paperwork thing after the show. And if you got a lot of stuff going on, it can wait. No, it can't. It oh. literally can't wait. Oh, yeah, I know. I have to get that I don't want to be a dick. I have to, you know, I have to mail it to people as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you've got shit to do too. But then also, you- I have very little to do. The kids are back in school. I have oh. all day to do one thing. Okay, well, I've got shit to I'm, do. I'm, oh. No, we're going to do your thing right okay, after. Okay, fine. But what I'm saying is, I want to knock out this last 50 and I want to fucking see what this woman's I got. I still going don't for know us. what you mean by Eiffel Tower, so. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was self- self-explanatory. Self-explanatory. I'm not a fan of the French. I play a game with a French Canadian, and I hate the guy. Uh, <laughs> Mostly because he's Canadian. Fifty bucks away. Uh, Seventh Dimension says, "I bet she likes to get choked, dude." I was think I was actually thinking that. Really? Yeah. She looks like the type. She, I again, I don't know that I haven't. Uh, I haven't dabbled in that. Like, I've met some interesting ladies, but uh, I, I haven't met enough where I'm like, yeah, that's the choking type. Yeah. You can see him. I can't. You can see him. She likes to be tough in the outside world. Right. And then she wants to be submissive. 
everywhere else. Uh, by the way, Zen Rhino says, don't you do overtime on credit if you reach 50? We have to get, we get inside of 50. Right. So you get inside of 50, we do it right on credit. Right on the door. But then we still keep begging during overtime, which is kind of gay. Which so. is why it would be awesome to knock out the 50 and just do the overtime. This gigger nets it. <laughs> I've oh, used- guys, forget it. It's over. Eric with 50 bucks. Thank you, buddy. I've used that phrase before. After you and Gino did it yeah. so much around me, like I, I did that to a group of people in a voice chat thing, and they were not ready for it. Oh my god, did that just silence a room full of people? Like, wait a minute, whoa! Like, what, you you can actually hear people thinking in real time yeah. with the whole like blah blah blah, blah and you can hear when the thought of this gigger nets it, and they put it together. <laughs> whoa! Uh, Nova Kane with five bucks says, "When I was in jail, they brought in a drunk guy." Saying, how can I get a DUI? I wasn't even driving. I was in the ditch. Even the dispatch started laughing. <laughs> uh, thank you guys very much. To uh, uh, Thank you to 383 Novocaine. We've knocked out today's goal. Anything you guys feel like contributing for this story or whatever uh, goes to tonight's show. Uh, April and I on the evening show. So knock out that goal. Yeah, you guys want to knock out that one. I'm not going to fucking... We're you know going to have no. fun with Blonde Lady. Fuck that. Anything that comes in right now is going half to Johnny, half to the goal. There. Mm. Anything that comes in during overtime, half to Johnny, half to the goal tonight. Boom. Eric Decker, or Ken Decker. Eric Decker. Becoming a, a baby boot. Man, that guy is a fan. Thank you for being I here. I like this Ken Decker guy. He's all right. He's a good dude. He likes, <laughs> he likes to have a little bit of fun with the boys. I don't mean that in a gay way. <laughs> Not today, anyway. That made it sound like I meant gay sex. Uh, do you want me to... Uh, would you like a little apple pie sure, moonshine? Sure, if you don't mind. I don't, if you want to share, I won't say no. I love that stuff. We're going to do some apple pie moonshine. We're going to watch the rest of this crazy white bitch for overtime. And if you guys throw in any money on any of the links, uh, we're going to give half to Johnny and half to uh, the evening show. Let me uh, type this up. Uh, half to Johnny... Half to tonight. There we go. Copy. Boom. All right. I'm going to go get us a couple of drinks. It was Apple Pie Moonshine, by the way, that led to my uh, having to leave radio. Oh, yeah, that's right. You and Adrian had a fun time with that. And look where it landed. It was Adrian's birthday. So I'm going to go get that. I love how how guilty he feels about the whole thing and all the responsibility. Yeah, he really felt uh, he really felt really, really felt bothered by the whole thing. All right. All right. I'll be right back. Okay, I don't know if he was aiming to make that more gay because the goal was knocked out, but either way, that's what we have. I don't understand breath play, says Dub. I think that literally that's more of a control thing. That's literally you not having control. It's a control issue. The whole thing is a control issue. Even as the way he was explaining it, it becomes a control issue. This woman has control in all of her life, so when she doesn't have control, it's incredibly exhilarating. I've only known one lady like that, though. I've only met one. They're weird. Johnny be calling an Uber. Not a bad idea, but how are they going to use the hand controls? Johnny, next movie night, can we watch Robot Jocks 2? Yeah, um, no, no. Let me. uh, We did a a movie night last Saturday. Um, Because it was Easter, I didn't want to do a Sunday show, and I've been saying I'm going to do like a watch along once a month. That movie was messed up and weird and funny, but I am not doing the sequel. I am not doing the sequel. I'm sure we can find something else to watch that is not Robot Jocks 2 Robot Wars. It is so bad. I can't do it. I can't do it. I did the first one. The first one was funny. It had a racist Texan. And that, for that reason alone, is the best reason to watch that movie. Just for the racist Texan. But, um, yeah, I don't... Oh. Robot Cox will be next. Sp- uh, SC Motorsports, you clearly didn't st- uh, watch the first movie. The first movie had Robot Cox. There was a giant chainsaw penis at the end of the film. Ryan the Garbage Man made this. And it is goddamn You know what he did? Brilliant. He put butter in it? Mm-hmm. Oh, you have some of this, don't you? You drank Not it. anymore. I drank it all. <laughs> this is the first time I've cracked this one. Yeah, mine did not last a week. Like I he, Well, I mean, it oh, lasted. Oh, that shit is a problem. The, the thing is, like, that stuff lasted, like, a couple of, uh, I don't know, a week and a half or whatever. But once I cracked it open, it was gone. Like, a no. Oh, boy. I got to send off a text. Uh, Kyle's warning me, Johnny, stop drinking. Aaron's just trying to get you drunk before you sign paperwork. Ah, what's the worst that could happen? I don't need to read things. 
I, I have to ask a quick question about times and when I can meet someone. Uh oh. Because I, I don't know what the situation is going to be like after this. I mean, it shouldn't be that bad. Or should. I've been flying for 30 years. I've been flying for 30 years. And the first time. To, so we're going to go back to this white woman who's yelling. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the thing about this one is we've we've seen her try to like butter up the cops and be nice. It didn't work. Did not go well. And then we saw her just, and now she's in the middle of lashing out and being a total cunt. And for some reason, that's turning me on. I have no idea why. You're liking her? Yeah, I'm like, oh, I can, I can, I can wrangle this filly in. I would. I'd fuck her. <laughs> I'd, f I'd fuck her. Uh, don't, uh, it sounds like my meeting today, time is flexible. Oh, okay, good. So if I don't want to drive immediately after the show, I don't have to. Well, you know, I have to drive home after this. I can just drive you. What's the worst that could happen? I blow an opportunity. <laughs> Lucky opportunity. That's my middle name. Uh, oh, I didn't mean it. All right. All right. Let's. Can we watch the rest of this, please? I mean, if you're done goofing can we, around. Can, can you please stop fucking around so we can watch this white lady lose her shit? God, and then, right, I, and then if we get done with her in the it, it, before overtime's over, I'll watch this trailer that they want me to watch. What is it? Oh, Robot Jocks 2. God, no. Okay, I'll watch it's it. It's a... Oh, I watched... Is it I, worse I, than Alita Battle Angel? Technically, yes. Some of you guys hate, like that movie. I, I haven't seen that movie, but um, I'm going to say yes because it was in the early 90s. It's from 93. It's a sequel to a late 80s movie that's incredibly bad. Ugh, it's just I don't I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be cheesy stop motion animation. All right, here we go. Yes or no? No, you're being detained. Right now. I do not have an option to a lawyer right now. You're telling me I do not. They've said it nine times now. No, that's what happens after you get processed. They you fucking don't weirdo. call the lawyer in yet, ma'am. You have to go downtown first. <laughs> So I do not have an option to a lawyer right now. You're not an arrest. Dude, do you think that kind of looks like what Michaeline, uh, Michaeline uh, Keanu's mom looked like when she was younger? I mean, it looks pretty close to her now. So, yeah. Yeah. I bet you if we saw, like... Michaeline was hot, man. Yeah, I bet you she was. She get it. Have you seen younger pictures of Michaeline? I haven't. No, I have not. But she's like 68 now, and she's I've only seen her on cute. Keanu's show, and she looks adorable. So yeah. yeah, I'd say, no, I'd totally believe that's that's a younger version. Yeah, she's 68 and cute. And she's still getting it now. Dude, when I heard she was 68, I about shit. Well, that's just a dietary issue. Because, like, if there were no women uh, uh -oh. in the picture, and I was out hanging out with Gene and Keanu, whatever, and uh, Michaeline was uh, charmed uh, by me mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it, things happen. Uh -uh. I don't think I would say no. So so does April got to be careful at this wedding thing? Got to make sure Aaron no, doesn't no, no, I have, get too loose? No, you know, I have April. He might be like, hey, Grandma. Let's no, make no, no. I have April. Right. So that would keep me away from Michaeline. Okay. But I'm saying if I were a single man... And, if know, I was just out on the poon, I'd be like, yeah, yeah I'm going to get this one and take it home. What I'm trying to say is I went for I went to work for her that summer. A teenage kid so far from home. She was a lonely widowed woman, hell-bent to make it on her own. <laughs> she had a need to feel the thunder to chase the lightning from the sky. And to watch a storm with all its wonder raging in her lover's eyes. It turns out the storm she wanted was coming from her lover's thighs. See, that's just a better line. Huh? I'm trying. To, I like Gino and Keanu a lot, so I'm gonna not make the jokes I was gonna make. Why? No, go for it. What's what's holding you back now? I just think I, you know, we were talking about the things this woman probably likes because of the way right? she looks. Right. <laughs> right. Oh no, no, we aren't. Oh, I have dude. theories. Just uh, I have theories. If anyone has anything to say, speak now or forever hold your peace. Keanu's mom likes to get choked.
Sorry, I couldn't hold oh, it in. Good, you said it. As long as you and I are simpatico, I don't I'm have gonna, to say the horrible thing. I'm going to go to the bathroom because I feel bad for myself. Can I keep doing this? Absolutely. All right. Not then far. I get to go on my own. You are being detained. detained. So I'm being detained. <laughs> yes! For the 90th time, yes! <laughs> And I want a lawyer. Yeah. Okay. You're under arrest for PI. Okay. For what? For PR for being Puerto Rican? I didn't even know that was a charge. I thought you had to stab someone first. Then you get charged with being Puerto Rican. PR do they say PI or PR? Police interference, probably. PI. Pass interference. So that's probably a spot foul. Automatic first down. <laughs> Fucking retard. <laughs> oh, what did I do this. exactly? You're under arrest for public intoxication. Oh, public intoxication. Uh, how retarded do you have to be to do that, huh? What did I do? Stop! All right. Stop! I'm, you're, I'm, we're charging with resistance. I have a recording. <laughs> Pieces of mediocre <laughs> your life. Mediocre shit? They're pieces of mediocre shit? Jesus. You make yourself look good making 60 grand a year. You f***ing <laughs> tiny piece of <laughs> You feel good <laughs> your wife with your <laughs> five inch <laughs> You know what? If they're going to arrest you for public intoxication anyway, fuck it. Get your cuts in. Do you feel good fucking your wife with your five-inch cock? I mean, I'm sure he feels good. I don't know how she feels about the whole thing. I don't know how he swings the damn thing. I mean, it's kind of up to them. Some women can make do with certain shit. Some can't. And we make fun of those whores. But I'm sure he's like... She's going, do you feel good fucking your wife with your five-inch dick? Yes, I'm sure he does. No matter what size your dick is, it's going to feel good when you fuck somebody. It might not feel good for them. That's all. Come on, guys. Let's figure out the fucking game here. You can me. Are you done yet? Yeah. Down goes Frasia. Nope. Down goes Frasia. Nope. Down goes Frasia. Not you. I meant her. Why, did you almost fall? No, my foot hit, hit, hooks the door. I thought that's why you were falling. No, I'm going to back this up a little bit because she talks a little shit to the cop. <laughs> and then she uh, she hits the floor. Well, the timing was so convenient. Yeah. Talking about me. It's like, no, I'm good. Your life. You make yourself feel good making 60 grand a year. You f***ing <laughs> tiny piece of <laughs> You feel so good <laughs> your wife with your <laughs> five inch you <laughs> Again, yes, he probably does. He's the, having a great time. Yeah. He came, didn't he? The size of his penis has nothing to do with how much he's enjoying it. Yeah, he's going to have good time no matter yeah. what. She's probably having a horrible time if his five-inch dick isn't, you know, giving it. But maybe she likes him tiny. Right. You know? Different ladies. Maybe not she's a tiny, a size slight queen. woman with a, a snug puss. And now we know she likes him big. You can uh -oh. Down, Down she went. <laughs> How's those two vodka? What were they? Vodka tonics? Yeah, vodka tonics too. Those two vodka tonics are really kicking right now, aren't they? Yeah. Stand up. Okay, stand up. Nope. Can we get a wheelchair? Can we get a wheelchair? Oh. Oh my God, what? Did he just ask if she pissed herself? I think so. Go back. How are those two vodka sodas hitting? I think he did. I think he yeah. said, did you piss yourself? Did she piss herself? You got to have the female officer check that. He can't reach down to feel if it's wet. That would go bad. So you better. Uh... And anytime that officer touches a woman down there, she's wet anyway. So how would he know? Yeah, because she's excited for that five inch cock. <laughs> yep, she did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. No. Ma'am, you're laying in a puddle. You can't say, no, I didn't. Where did the water come from? You pissed my pants, you fucking bitch. Who pissed my pants? Who? And who shit in them? 
This day is getting away from me. I can smell it. I can Ooh, smell it. Oh, oh, that's a bad sign. Oh, that's not good when you can smell the piss. That's clearly someone who's underhydrated. <laughs> yeah. That's probably your f***ing wife. The guy that f***ed her before. Um, ma'am? The piss in her pants is the cock of the guy who fucked your... Ma'am, you're terrible at drunk shit talking. And I also like to point out, while you're making this argument... If I'm not mistaken, did I see a growing puddle under your hips? <laughs> did oh, the, really? the floor looked wet. Um, oh, oh, but your f***ing wife. Oh, you're right. The yeah, guy dude. that her before. Oh, she is. She's currently She's pissing. She's fucking unloading on that floor, and she has no idea. That's that why she said it wasn't her, because they asked if she pissed her pants, past tense. Ah. She was in the business of pissing her pants. Oh, now she's done. <laughs> Do you feel good about yourself? You and six, five, eight, and stack and short time. I don't even know what the fuck she said. Yeah, we blurred out all of it. I can't even figure out what the fuck that meant. Why are we bleeping this gold? I want to know what these burns are. <laughs> American executive platinum person. <laughs> She's an executive platinum person. Well. You're also uh, wet from the waist down, so that's how we like them. <laughs> oh my god! We certainly don't like them not wet from the waist down. <laughs> I want them to be dry as a savanna desert. Yeah, or not? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is your problem? I apparently am. Uh, the apple moonshine is better than I thought. It is good. It just tastes so good. I like it doesn't drinking. have any burn. I like drinking and then feeling superior to people like her. <laughs> right? Because this dumbass only yeah. went on a plane. We're sitting in your basement. Nobody's going to arrest us for any of the gay shit we get up to. That's right. Whole lot of gay shit. This is not a normal situation. This is not a normal situation. You are right there. That yes. is correct. That is accurate. Oh, she's resisting. Oh, we're hog tying. Stop, lady Jesus. <laughs> He's finally had it. <laughs> He's been patient this whole time, but one too many five inch dick cracks, and he's like, you know what? I'm letting this bitch. Look, you it. drunk bitch. Just enough already. This is my job. I don't enjoy this. Anything. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. I'm literally laying down the way that you want. What's the problem, buddy? <laughs> Don't you have two people on one? What is the issue? Attica. Attica. Oh, God. Are you willing to walk now? Yes. The more you get arrested, you are arrested. I have not done anything wrong. <laughs> well, you <laughs> That's the end of it. I've not done anything wrong. I pissed myself and I fought the cops. Right. Hasn't she been humiliated enough? My goodness. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Matt Fields becoming a baby boot for his 13th month says happy Aaron Imholt Day, a.k.a. April's Fool Day. Oh, April's Fool. Ah, clever. And vino veritas. <laughs> See, I said that. Now I, I keep thinking of the the line from or the scene from Jurassic Park. Clever girl, and he just gets taken down. Oh boy, I uh, I want to watch this uh, trailer that you were talking about. Oh, that Saint Caesar is talking. Yeah, he's very obsessed with the sequel to Robot Jocks. It's called Robot Wars. It's a 1993 movie, and it's. Not good. How bad? Um, Robot Jocks, I'll say this. People have said that Robot Jocks is better than Pacific Rim. And I will say I watched Robot Jocks, and I will say Pacific Rim stole everything great about its movie from that movie. But, yeah, no, I, I don't know that it's good. The uh, the eight, like, I watched the first one, and it was fun, and I got to make fun of a bunch of shit to, uh, to 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 that movie, the the racist Texan was particularly enjoyable for me, but not. I don't know that I want to do the sequel. The sequel looks really really bad. Like the 
like the last of the movies that they did to explain why they were buying all the cocaine. Like I just I don't somebody's on something when they made that movie. All right. Before I ask you, before we do that trailer, uh, the singer Doja Cat says, stop comparing my hair to pubes. I just wanted you to look quick, and I wanted the audience to look quick and see if you thought her hair looked like pubes. Yeah. Because if she's going to say, don't, you know, hey, stop comparing my hair to pubes, and her hair doesn't look anything like pubes, then she's right. She has a right to be upset, and people should stop saying that. Well, with that hair color. But if you get hair that looks like pubes, you deserve to be made fun of. Right. You're a pube face. Yeah. All right, let's see. I don't think your hair looks like pubes. Mm. I think it looks like shitty living room carpeting. Yeah, I, I don't know that I'd say pubes necessarily, but uh, between the hair and the eyebrows, I'm just like, why are you bothering to post pictures of yourself? Is it me? That 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 is a hideous face. Like, to see that picture. I, I don't think she's a particularly attractive woman. Like, I, I mean... If I had an erection, it would forcibly like suck the cum out of anywhere I put it because it's like no, you can't, you can't, ex you can't do that to this. No, is this her? Is that wait? Is that woman the same as this woman? Back when she still had some eyebrows. All right, let's see. I'm seeing a pattern. I'm seeing a consistent pattern in my comment section of of people saying, "Is that?" Is my hair pubic hair? Is it carpet or is it sheep's wool? And it's not even questioned. Some people are being, being like, that, that's what it is. But like people comparing my hair to sheep and pubes and carpet and popcorn and shit like that. The carpet one makes sense. The carpet one totally makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it does look like, you know, you need to be vacuumed. Yeah, but wait a minute. So with the other picture we saw with the short hair, is that your real hair that you're wearing now? Did you grow that out? I'm confused as fuck. Because I want to say it doesn't make sense with the other picture we saw how this is your hair now, but that doesn't look like a weave. Like, we, we gotta... We gotta... Move forward. Let's... Let's move forward. Let's grow. Let's... Let's stop. Let's... Let's, um... Because I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your fucking... Are you on coke? I think she's on something. I think she's on coke. Uh, no offense, ma'am. I don't know if you understand how the internet works, but the one thing that does not work is telling them to stop doing something. I'm pretty sure your comments are not going to end if you go, guys, can we stop calling my hair pubes and saying right. it looks like carpet? Because all that's going to happen is people who didn't know the pubes thing was happening are now going to know the pubes thing. Yeah, happening. we're going to start comparing your hair to other things. And the people who... We're already calling it pubes. They're not going to feel bad. No, they're going to feel vindicated. Yeah. They'll keep calling it pubes. Exactly. I'm not your fucking parents. I'm not, I'm not, you know what I mean? I can't, uh, but, but, it, uh, I don't want to say too much. She's I just, I need, you guys got to get on that. Um, she's on something. This is the thing that I never understood with people that are like, I just go online and I talk to these people on the internet like they're all part of my life. Like, we're working together. I just, I really need this. I need that. I'm like, what are, why would these people give two shits about, about, again, you don't right. like people calling your hair pubes. You can ignore comments. You can literally not read them. Yeah. You don't need to see the whole your hair looks like pubes thing. I mean, the memes are hilarious, but you don't have to look at them. <laughs> right. I mean, if you want to have fun, you can. I mean, they got this great one where it looks like a floor, but then your face is in it, and it's kind of creepy. It's like a, it's like a invisible eye <laughs> picture where it's like if you if you relax both your corneas, you could see Doja Cat. But is that her muff or her head? I can't tell. Not comparing four C hair texture to like, ugh. Like real, like pubic hair? Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you know this or not. Hair and pubic hair, very, very similar. They're both hair. I just wanted to confirm that. I mean, according to certain people, half of it is location, location, location. But um, again, still hair. Yeah. Uh, she's on amphetamine, says Dub. Yeah, it's either a prescription deal or she's on some kind of stimulant. She did look kind of amped. Yeah. She was definitely geeked. 
Uh, Doja Cat, the poor man, the poor black man's Jenna Ortega, says Landers. I, I have a feeling like even black men are just like, no, I'll just take Jenna Ortega. Yeah, it's totally fine for me to just do Jenna Ortega. Battlebots? No, what was it called? It's called Robot Wars. It's this. Ooh, hold on a minute. We got something better. Mayor Tiffany Haynard appears at township meeting amid disturbing allegations. Okay. Oh, it's nine minutes and 20 seconds. We don't have time for it. All okay. Right. Was it Robot? Robot Wars. It's really bad. Robot Wars 2? Uh, well, uh, no, it shouldn't be two. It should just be Robot Wars. Yeah, this. So, Robot Wars is the sequel to Robot Jocks, and it's okay. a bad movie. In our distant 1993, on nation at war. Intruders at marker four seven four, sir. I it's want really you to bad. turn the intruders into stains. We'll discover its strongest ally. Our borders are not in dispute. The Eastern Alliance is on our side. Has become their deadliest the enemy. The enemy. This proves that the Centros are firing on us with weapons made by the Eastern Alliance. And now, two rival champions. Leave me that game, Captain Drake. Yeah. We'll do tea. Must battle for supremacy. Captain Wally has commandeered the robots. In the ultimate killing machines. So the Japanese made robots? Yeah, with that part's not surprising, but apparently, um, like I said, this is apparently the sequel to uh, the first movie. In the first movie, they um because the writers are really, really, uh, really smart. They 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 took the Cold War and they said, hey, what if it was two different like world entities, the Confederacy and whatever the fuck they called the other one, Eastern Alliance? Yeah, I don't know. And they and so uh, to end all war, they have this battle royale between you know members of each side. Anytime like a territory dispute is in, like okay. say we're fighting for Alaska today, so uh, the two guys will battle it out as opposed to an actual war. And then the second movie is, all right, so now we've moved beyond that. Now we're just doing war with the robots. It makes no sense. It's like... It's I like told you we meet again, again, Captain Drake. And I'd like to point out that the reason we watched the first movie was because there's a scene with the first movie where the one of the robots has a giant chainsaw penis that just comes out of it and chainsaws somebody. And... Uh, and so that was the whole reason. I was like, you got to watch this movie. And so it became a thing for a while. So I made fun of the movie. It became a running joke. I have no interest in watching this fucking movie. What are you waiting for? Ten cases fired. Robot Wars from the producers of Robot Jocks. Well, naturally. Yes. And the uh, the Japanese guy that plays the big bad villain was in the first movie. He was the uh, he was the technician building America's robot because apparently we need a Japanese guy to do it. The best part of the whole movie is when a Texan is sitting there like, "I never trust them slant yad Japs." Oh my god! Yeah, he literally has some seriously fucking crazy shit that he says. It's Not allowed to say that. That's like when Powers Booth in Red Dawn was like, uh, "You're like, who's on our side?" What do you say? Eight hundred. Was it 800 million screaming Chinamen? Yeah. Or no, 600 million screaming Chinamen. And he goes, I thought there were a billion screaming Chinamen. Not anymore. There were. Was it not anymore or is it there were? I thought it was not anymore, but... Red Dawn. You might be right. Si I, is it 600 million screaming... So they killed 400 million Chinese people? I like that expression. 600 million screaming Chinamen. What I love about this is they've just used a racially derogatory term, mm -hmm. and C. Thomas Howell is going to repeat the derogatory term. He's not going to say, I thought there were a billion Chinese people. That's He's insensitive, sir. How could you call him that? Well, last I heard, there were a billion screaming Chinese. There were. Oh, shit. What the fuck was he drinking, by the way? You gotta right. What are you drinking that lights a fire up quite like that? That's usually like an, an accelerant. Um, was he drinking one Bacardi 151? Jesus Christ. They have the good shit? 
He was his second vodka tonic. <laughs> um, Powers Booth was in so much shit, like just so many iconic roles, like that of like schlocky movies. Uh, Curly mm-hmm. Bill Brocious, uh, the air guy in uh, Red Dawn. He's um, Senator O'Rourke in uh, Sin City. Yeah, dude. I um, I always like get him confused with other actors, but yeah, dude's been in a lot of shit. He wa- I- he was. Oh, that's right. Old Powers died a few years back. Yeah, I'm sorry. We lost Powers Boof. Boof. We lost Powers Boof. We lost. Well, you see, baby, we lost Powers Boof a long time ago. Hey, Fran. Hey, Fran. Uh, Powers Booth was great in Deadwood. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was in. De- I got to watch Deadwood. You haven't seen Deadwood? Here we go. Timothy Oliphant's pretty much best show. Really? The whole reason. I like that there's Ian McShane. Ian McShane kicks all ass and is obviously kind of like, you know, the centerpiece of the sure. show. But um, but uh, Timothy Oliphant did a show called Justified, which I very much liked. And then I went and watched um, Deadwood after that. And I'm pretty sure Justified is just like, hey, if we took that character we liked him as and we wrote it today, Justified. Like, there we go. Timothy Oliphant, also great in Girl Next Door. I have not seen that one. Really? No. If fucking Paul Dano is in there just playing some horny teenager. Some horny teenage Of course, dork. that's why you're watching it, because Paul Dano's in Paul there. Paul Dano's in there going, run, run, the patty roll to get you. Run, uh, run, the pussy going to get you. Yeah, Powers Booth was all right. Guys, we're done. You okay? Everything going to be iry. Oh, no. I'll tell you one thing about that apple pie, Dundee. It's not rotten. No, it's good stuff. No, because I see the drink, the apple pie. I see one the other, in the other place. That is what I do. Oh, no. You're going to have to talk to me, Guan B, to, Guan B in tomorrow. Justified is slept on. This it thing. is. It is. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I don't want to piss three times during a show. And we got 40 seconds left. So I'm going to call it right here. And here's what you guys should do. Just Kidding LLC on YouTube, Rumble, and Twitch. Subscribe on all three. That's Johnny's show. It's on at 2 o'clock Central today. Go and watch it. Uh, Just Kidding LLC on YouTube, Twitch, and Rumble. Thank you guys for a great show. Uh, Red Fox Mad with four ninety nine says, "Let's go to two p.m." If you made that four hundred ninety nine dollars, I think about it. All right, boys and girls, I'm out of here. Johnny's out of here. Two o'clock. He's going to be back on. We'll be back on this channel at <coughs> seven o'clock Central Jesus, Time. Man, oh, I'm getting out of here. All right, uh, Johnny. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Take it easy, homeboys. <laughs>